I think I need to point out how incredibly sick the new Rise Above website is looking. Ekronox tickets are going on sale within 48 hours, comrades. Early bird tickets. Look at the links we've got down here. Straight to Bad Slave. Boom. Straight to Truth Be Told. Boom. Straight to Sheep Farm. Boom, this is how we're connecting things. This is Rise Above in Action. Oma Beats. Get to the new website now because Ekranox tickets are about to drop. Do the best you can for you and your family. What do the rest of the people mean to you? They don't mean anything to you. They're just serfs. They're just people. You know, what's the end goal? The end goal is to get everybody chipped. To control the whole society. 
they, they want a one world government controlled by them. Everybody has an RFID chip implanted in them. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. One, two, one, two, we are live. You're in tune to Rise Above Live. And if you're not tuned in to Rise Above Live, your chances of being an NPC just increase by at least 33%. Rise above, generate, generate, rise above, stick with fear, rise above, abstract. Yes, welcome back, everybody. It's Friday night. Andy PG, how the hell are you doing, bro? What's going on, peasants? What's going on, crypto peasants? Welcome back. Crypto shekling peasants. <laughs> We've got a, realm. We have got a special guest out behind us who we're going to chat to a little bit later. Big shout out to Joe Ward. Say hello, Joe. Hi, guys. How's it going tonight? Not too bad at all. You are sat over there. Nice to have you in the studio, Joe. In, in the raw chair, looking rather funky in that. What is that? That's a Frisian cow patterned hoodie, I believe, isn't it? Oh, Thank so you. We're getting lots much. of emails in already for uh, purchases. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. In case anyone didn't know, tickets for Ekron Ox are on sale right now. Early bird tickets, guys. Early bird Early tickets. tickets. Special price. Now, obviously, big up Ryan Sanders, UK's number one conscious rapper in the house. Big shout out to Ryan. Big shout out to Sheep Farm. Clara Warren. Everyone might notice that I'm uh, rather decked out quite nicely this week. That's that's right, the new range. Let me get rid of these so you can see the, the, the gorgeousness here. Okay. Rapparel, the Rapparel track suits, the Rapparel t shirts. Loving the green as well. Yeah. And, and look, can I just demonstrate? Lance modelling the. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, look, look at that. Stunning. Listen, these are all live on the website now. And if you want to buy the, the set and you want a £5 discount, you've got to email me because I've got a code for you if you want to buy the set. Yeah, so anyway, we'll talk about a little bit more about merch in a moment. There's a lot going on in the world of Rise Above. We've got many, many announcements. We've got stuff undercover, top secret stuff we're working on. Multiple cross-disciplinary explosions going on right now. It's actually a bit of a head fuck. Yeah, listen, listen. um, You know, uh, I'm actually only probably only going to take one zero in tonight. I'm buzzing so much already. Right, let us get the screen up so we can see what we're talking about. Like I said, we've got a lot to get through here. Um, the entire screen, we will share this one. So last week, right, I, I must firstly say, we had a very important show, I think, last week. I actually with, with watched the... it, uh, re-watched it, the whole thing, over and over, um, uh, with Tom, because that was a lot of info for me to fucking grasp. Be- bearing in mind, I don't know anything about crypto, it was a lot. And I'm just going to say, if anyone has had trouble getting hold of Tom in the last week, he, we apologise. He's been very busy with our web shop, with the event. Yeah, he hasn't got back to a few people and stuff. He, if he will anyone get is looking for tailored guidance, we're, put, we're going to be putting together some very nicely priced raw packages for you guys very soon. So please don't hassle Tom at the moment because we are going full steam ahead with the event. We're going to put something in place for you guys, which I'll be announcing very soon. Which will be a lot easier for everyone to work around and deal with. Yeah, and it's actually going to be tailored to yeah. the Rise Above family. Right, I need to say also, last week we sent some positive healing vibes to Jess Chaplin's mum, Claire. That's by, right. By all, um, defying all what the doctor said, Claire's still hanging in there, but we need to send her some more positive vibes. She's still in intensive care. So everyone that knows about what we did with Mark Bayerski for, um, for Yoji, please send some positive healing vibes over to Claire, which is Jess Chaplin's mum, because she's very sick in hospital. Thank you very much. Right, now... Um, next week I am going to Thailand to Northern Thailand with the Empress but I'm taking you guys with me we're going to be doing lots of documentaries travel vlogs um, showing you the ancient history of the Siam Kingdom I happen to be particularly versed in this part of the world and I'm very pleased to be going back there now that the Soviet Union restrictions have been dropped there you go and they have been dropped that's right yeah so um, but to stay up to date with that you have to subscribe to the second channel which is simply called Rise Above the link is in the description and if it's going to be anything like the Mexico uh, uh, journey like you don't want to miss it guys <laughs> yeah, get yeah. onto the other channel I think in Mexico I pumped out 10 videos 12 videos maybe so you've got to st- you've got to subscribe to the channel to the magical mushroom shaman in a woman's dress hey if you think that I found magic in Mexico which what happens until 
General Farang goes back. General Farang. Mate, this is where I'm t- mate, I'm going to make a whole video about where, where the general thing actually started. It wasn't in the Soviet Union. It wasn't fighting the Soviet Union. That, that name was forged in Southeast Asia, and I'll tell you all about that another time. But anyway, if you think I can make magic happen in Mexico and find it, I guarantee I'll be finding 333% more magic At least in Thailand. Absolutely, absolutely. No word of a lie. But remember, subscribe to the other channel to get this content. Now... You might think, oh no, there's no rice above next Friday. Wrong. Black Market is broadcasting. Now, one of the Black Market videos I've uploaded has already got a strike on the Black Market channel. Of course right? it has. That's what it's for. So yeah, that's what it's for. Next week. <laughs> which, tw- which video was that? It was the final stream of 2020. It was, a hot, it was an already b- banned, deleted, contraband video. Right. It got us a strike for medical misinformation, hate speech. So you know it's good, guys, general, if it gets a strike. Uh, anti schwabery But... We've got the first part of that stream, which is about 50 minutes. That's going up on Friday. And there's also one called the Soviet Union Meme Show. So you have to, again, subscribe to the Black Market Cinema channel to get this. Because there is Rise Above on the next two Fridays. But you've got to subscribe to the other channel, guys. If you, if you haven't, then you're simply missing out. Uh, the link is in the description once again. Right. Now, when I get back from Thailand, we are going straight back in. Allegedly Dave. Allegedly Dave. Everyone wants us to talk to this guy. And here he is overlooking uh, a clown world apocalypse scene, which I designed. Raising his drink to it. Raising a drink. What's he drinking? Schwab juice. He's drinking his piss. Oh, yes, yes. It's is. a glass of his own piss. Oh, no. Nice. <coughs> Dave is, is uh, one of these advocates for um, drinking your own urine. He's also um, a flat earth specialist. He's probably one of the most, one of the most plausible and make sense people that speaks about oh, we're gonna, get, the we're gonna get so much shit that, for that term <laughs> hey I, I, I always said i have them on one day because we're not flat earthers around here we which realm question yeah yeah really, you know um but hey everyone wants me to speak to allegedly dave we've made it happen that's on the 17th of february okay oh what it, oh but we're selling more t- how many t- t- tickets have we sold, sold? Like, i think that's like 15 now right okay but these as are usual li- guys i'll be monitoring the emails if you buy some merch or buy a ticket for uh Raw Equinox, then um, I'll give you a shout out. Uh, shout out to mate, Becky, mate, mate, one of our members. We, we haven't announced a single thing that's happening at the event, and no one that's played, no one's appearing there, and people are already bought. Yeah, but the last one was so sick, everyone mate, doesn't give a fuck what's going on. Everyone they just knows, be there. Mate, everyone knows we've got the Magi touch. Not the Midas touch where it turns to gold. It, it turns to magic. When Speaking when of magic, touches. happy birthday, Madge. It's Magic's birthday oh, today. Massive happy birthday shout out going on. Rise magic. above team. Rise above team. <laughs> Generate, generate, rise above, fear, rise above, abstract... Equinox unplugs. Uh, the link's on the screen, courtesy of Sam Carney. Thank you, sir. Raw Treat presents. We're going to talk about it in full detail in just a moment. Okay, but um, we've got allegedly Dave. Big shout to Sam Carney for sorting this one out. 166 people tuned in, guys. Share the stream, social media, all of it. Yeah, send, that's send it. it to your nan. Tonight we're talking about a particularly inflammatory subject, um, so make sure you share this to all social media. Get the normies involved. Let's really break some NPCs paradigms later. As on. we've got Joe in the studio tonight, and we're doing it on uh, SRA and all things child related. I'm, I'm wearing my. Uh, if you see me with John Podesta, call the cops T-shirt. Yeah, show over, show. Over. Get him a peasant cam. There he is. Lovely. Good work. Obviously, we're not insinuating that John Podesta's done anything wrong. We don't know if that's true or not. You know. <laughs> we don't want to get any, any allegations. You have to right. look into it for yourself, guys. Anyway, stop distracting me, Andy PG, sorry, because sorry. what I'm trying to do is tell people what is coming in the world of Rise Above, and there's a lot planned. Are you ready for what's coming? Um, well, right, the week after, allegedly, Dave, we're probably going to have customer services. The week after that is what it's all about. On the 3rd of March, that's 3-3, 2023, the General's coming to the studio. And he's going to be making a presentation called Ra Gender 2033 and the Great Ra Set. Wow. And I can tell you, the General's been working very hard on this presentation. It's actually a 10-year plan for the future of Rise Above. We're not fucking about here. This is going to be very groundbreaking. Um, bit, a lot of effort's gone into this um, a very big plan for, uh, for the future of Ra going forward 10 years into the future. Jay Z said, "Allegedly, Dave is a racist." Oh, right. Here we go. Well, if that's the case, we can we can address that when he's on the show. Um, no problem. Thank you, Jay Z, for adding that one there. Um, yeah. So on the third of March, twenty 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 three, Rajender twenty thirty three. <laughs> uh, Donna Harper there. she's commenting on my t-shirt saying the fuck Andy full pedo t-. yeah my t-shirt says if you see me with John Podesta call the cops yeah? T- don't take a Polaroid if you see me with John yeah. <laughs> okay then the week after that on the 10th of the 3rd we've got it locked in it is in the bag it's in the bank 
Inspector Veg is going to be live in the studio giving us the full vegetable inspector insp- experience. That's going to be a lot of info. Mate, that's going to be a lot of info. It's going to be a lot of MC, and I'm going to be going back to back with the Vegmeister. There's going to be high energy There's with Inspector be, Veg. Yeah, it's always high energy with Inspector Veg. I personally can't wait. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very excited about this one. That's on the 10th of the 3rd. Okay, so that's what's coming up in Rise Above. Don't forget, subscribe to Black Market Cinema to get your next two Friday nights sorted out with seriously contraband anti covid material. It's already got a strike, one of them. It didn't even get watched by anyone. Al Gore just said, nope. Don't forget to get on the other channel, Rise Above, to get your edited material. And also, this is where all of the Thailand material is going to be. The link and the descri- is in the description for both of these channels. If you're not subscribed, you're missing out. Um, so, a word from our sponsors, which is the Roots Brands. There we go. Andy PG, would you like to ter- ceremoniously tell them why we take uh, zero in every week? So, this is basically an organic, fully uh, plant-based berry, nuts, that kind of thing. It's for mental well-being. We always take some on the, in the studio on a Friday night. There's, there's one there. Look. Oh, thanks. I have one earlier. Would you on. like to try one of these, Jay? Let's go. These for are it. our, um, these are our sponsors. Give me two, this, mate. Is, this, is, this is what's called a nutraceutical. So what it does is it promotes the proper serotonin and dopamine production in your brain that you would get if you were eating the ideal ba- balanced diet from all of those berries and nuts, which we basically don't eat. It's like an inve- inspector veg capsule. Yeah, basically, yeah. So yeah, these cost about one pound thirty each. Have a couple of these in the morning. I guarantee they last a lot longer than a double espresso. You don't feel sweaty, and you really are on point. There's no come down. Mm. Hey, I've been doing this show for like three hours today, getting all this sorted out. So I still feel fresh. We recommend Zero In from Roots Brands Products. If you use the code Rise Above forward slash Rise Above, we get a fifteen percent kickback, comrades, and that really helps us out. It means that we get this product for free. Thank you very much to everyone that's purchasing, and everyone that's repurchasing. More orders coming in for tickets. Oh, why we sell them shout more tickets? Out, shout out to a, a Williams. Lovely, jubbly. Stop doxing people. Right. Okay. <laughs> apart from, apart from purchasing a ticket for our up and coming event, which is going to be absolutely spectacular. The other way you support our stream, which will always be free, is to purchase your Rise Above merchandise. Also at the website, www.riseabove.tv, we have a whole range of clothing from my personal hand-designed merchandise, hand-drawn. We've also got the new luxury Rapparel range, which I'm Yeah, these right feel now. really nice, these tracksuit tops. It's called the heavyweight hoodie for a yeah, reason, decent. right? It, well, as soon as you put it on, it's heavy. This, yeah. is a, this is a quality garment. These are five pound more than the regular hoodies for a reason. They are a totally different quality. They are very, not very nice indeed. Not that our regular hoodies aren't good quality too. Um, so we've got ladies, gentlemen, children, hybrids, chimeras, all to everything in between. We're catering for you here. Stickers, hoodies. Um, yeah, riseabove.tv. Right. Here we go, on to the AI art section no, of the No, evening. no, 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 the AI art section. Al Gore's art gallery comes after Joe, because it's just it's probably even more twisted than his presentation. To be oh, honest. it's a nice follow-on then. Yeah. Now, as I've let you know, we're in the year of the yin water rabbit, the dark water, the black liquid metal rabbit year that starts on the 22nd of January. The graphene rabbit. The, the black goo <laughs> graphene rabbit, right? So Rise Above has already taken charge, and, and our Al Gore art department has already taken charge of this theme. And here we are, comrades. I present to you, Rajri presents to you, the Ekronox Unplugged. Our event on this bank holiday Easter weekend, and it is for the whole weekend. This is over twice. Gosh. As- yes, that's right, Andy PG. It's over twice as long as our last event, arriving on the Thursday, leaving on the Monday. And there's going to be significantly more people there that we're allowed. Yes. And, well. and I would like to add that there's going to be significantly more going on at this event. We are going all out. We're going deeper into the woods with a fully immersive boutique unplugged acoustic experience. Conscious artists, um, pop-up, pop-up performances. The Woodland School is going to be offering a full menu of woodland activities, survival training, and forest learning activities for ages five and up. Even if you attended the Woodland School last time, there will be an extra course to take you to the next level. Awesome. We're doing this. We're well, mate, that was so popular with, with families and their kids last time. It was really, really good. Right now, tickets are available for £99 for the whole event. That's four nights of camping. I'll let you know, it costs like £35 a night just to camp at this event, this, yep. this site, right? So that's cheaper than the camping on its own. The tickets after this are going up. This is far too cheap for what we're offering. For four days, guys. 
So adults, adults is anyone over 12 years old. The reason we say this now is because anyone over 12 years old accesses everything at this event. We found out last time that the Rise Above Kids and the Rise Above Family are very mature and, and kids from age yeah. 12 up can access the entertainment right up until 11 o'clock at night. There was no retardation. At, at no, no, one, no, one, no one was acting inappropriately. No one was out of hand. No one had to be spoken to. No children were running around annoying other people. Everyone was just loving it and well behaved. So that means that everyone... 12 years old and over can access everything at this event and it's 99 pounds for now for now that's the early bird price guys there get over only, to the website there, there were 99 of these tickets i think there's about 75 of them left now and they're only available for seven days after that i think the price is going to be 133 pounds of course what else do you want to just mention it's on the website um it says about 16 year olds but it's not as 12 We've had that change now. Right, sweet. I'd also like to know there is no limit for vans at this event. If you drive a van, you can come. Van passes will be extra. Um, if you have a dog, dogs are not allowed at this event at all on the campsite. That means you, Terra Slim. However, on site, we have dog facilities at an extra charge. Ah, right. Okay. So if you have no one to take your dog, your dog can come to the event and stay in an adjacent field and be looked after in a pen when you'll be able to walk your dog every day, but we cannot have dogs in the woodland this time. It's an yeah, absolute yeah. no-no for safety reasons. We can have more children there this time. There are going to be many more activities, tree climbing, axe throwing, um, loads of... Uh, Survival more. training. There's going to be food vendors. All of, it's, it's all there, guys, honestly. Yeah, so here's the other thing, right? If you... Um, want to attend this event, get these early bird tickets while you can. There's probably about 70 left. Well, you save yourself 33 quid. It's, this event is acoustic. It's not going to be have a big loud stage. We're going to have pop up intimate woodland experiences, but it's not all about singers. Who's just walked in the studio? It's Homer Beats. Homer Beats got it right in the middle. Oh, caught, I've been caught. I've been caught. <laughs> big shout out to Homer Beats. Um, we're also inviting rappers along. Okay. What is this image? <laughs> I'm going to tell you how we, how we made these images later on. Um, rappers will be coming to this event and having special pop up performances with acoustic jams. Okay. So, you know, if you like if you like to listen to your MCs, you're going to be catered for as well. But this is going to be an acoustic event, Ekronox Unplugged. So if you are an artist, a musician or a performer, you want to be emailing us, riseaboveartists at gmail.com. We want to hear from you, whether you are a professional, whether you're up and coming, whether you're even actually a novice. We've probably got a stage for you. We are going to provide a showcase and a platform for all levels. Um, right. Whether you're um, a, a comedian, a performer, a dancer, we want to hear from you. Speakers, teachers, guides, ratri at gmail.com. Volunteers, dot ratri at gmail.com. If you want to come and help out with, with the event, we want to hear from you. Volunteers, dot ratri at gmail.com. Let me just get up the, um, the correct emails here. Oh, yeah, I'll just turn Omer Beats on. You want to turn your mic right up, mate? I'll turn the right up. How's that for sound? There you go. Hello, Omer Beats. There's that hey sexual guys, voice, good? ladies. The sexual chocolate man is in the house. Hello, Omer. Sexual chocolate, indeed. There we go. I've been working hard, mate, as usual. You know how it goes. Oh, mate, you're actually here pretty early. Hey, it's only look at the crucible right, know, with the know, blood red lights. Yeah, man. Jesus. I, I like it now with our, with our colour scheme. I'm going to fade it better. pink soon, though, mate, for the Equinox, you know. Magenta. Yeah, well, that is the colour of the Equinox. So we're not, we're not just looking for the vocalists and those sort of uh, front men performers. We're, we want some unique. Some unique we want artisans. artists. Yes. We want everything. Fiddle players. And this is what I was saying. Fiddle Oma. players. We don't just want professionals <laughs> we want, we want as well. We are also going to provide a stage or a, a, a platform also for up and coming people, right? Okay. Kind of like oh, a mate, BBC introducing I, I stage. I prefer, if you've got talent, give us a call. Yeah. Well, I don't care what of your status, because that doesn't really make sense. We don't care how many you, followers or how many you likes you've got. If you with yourself or with others, then give us a shout. Send us some sort of like... like so we can hear what you do. Rise above artists at gmail.com is how you send us your yeah. demos. Um, okay, everyone's gonna be everyone's gonna be considered. Okay, we haven't officially booked anybody yet. Think of it as the uh, the rise. What, what's that thing with uh, what's his Simon Cowell guy? What's his name? Bro? Simon Cowell. Yeah, what, what's his, what, can I be Simon Cowell in this one? What's, yeah? what's his? What's his? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what, um, what's the show he does? X Factor. The great clown world's got talent. Yeah. Yeah, clown world's got talent. Right. <laughs> we we want any any style of performer. Yeah. If you're a juggler, Ju a yeah, jugglers, comedians, dancers, whatever. fire breathers. Oh uh, well, not too much fire breathing in the, in the middle of the forest. Okay, um, speakers, teachers, guides, volunteers, vendors, artisans, and merchants. 
mobile kitchens, Virgins. food vendors, and caterers. We want to hear from you. Come into our mystical forest wonderland. Listen, get involved. We want to hear from you. Raw Treat is the 6th. Raw Treat presents Raw Equinox is the 6th to the 10th of April. And tickets are available right now. Have we sold any more tickets yet? Yeah, mate, another four. Really? Yeah. Boom. Okay. Wow. Massive shouts. For sure. Uh, yeah, mate. There's well, loads, all of these. Oh, I mean, look at the screen. Oh, we sold 20 tickets already. This is all... Uh, <laughs> Ekronox e purchases. And I have to stress, right, once these tickets are gone, the full weekend is going to cost more than £99. Yeah, this is, this is, a, this is like a... This is this actually is, a double L special offer. Yeah, because what it was, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious that it's our event good. this time is twice as long. So we have to charge twice as much, right? And I'm, con I'm, I'm conscious that some people last time know what we're going to do. They don't need to see the lineup. They don't need to see who's playing. They trust us that we're, they're going to get their money's worth. So this is their chance. I'm buzzing and to I'm, get that I'm, locked I'm, in. Right. So think of it this way: I'm allow. I'm 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 quite comfortable with Lance now talking about it. That says that we have got shit on lock for him. In, yeah, no, literally, we have shit on lock. We now, if we if if we get these ninety nine tickets sold within a week, that money we've got there, that means we can take the event to the next level. When we've got that money banked, we, we can put, start we can putting put deposits down for some really nice surprises for you guys. So, yeah. You know they're going to be good. Listen, you always get your money's worth when Rise Above is involved. We've sold 15 tickets right from the start of the show. Jeez. That's in the last 26 minutes. Well, we sold five tickets before the show started. Yeah, so, yeah, tw <laughs> yeah 20 Fair tickets play. down. So we, we, we've got 75 tickets how, left how at 99. How did we sell five tickets before? Uh, shout out to Dave well, Saunders. <laughs> <laughs> the tickets were actually live from five o'clock. There was a, there was a slight a, issue. Did you do a little announcement? No, you? I did. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I found out when someone bought two tickets in the email. I was like, what? They're not supposed to be live <laughs> until nine o'clock. It's on. It's another on. another one coming. Shout, shout out to Eric, and mate. A massive He's bought another two. Oh, well, more, more have gone. Yeah, get them while you can. You can probably pimp these later for more. £333 each. No, 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 I'm, jo no I'm joking, of course. No, of course not. That would be illegal. Um, also, big shout out to Chloe at the Woodland School because she's going to be, like I said, she's going to be extending her menu. I've, sp I've spoken to Chloe earlier on. Oh, you spoke she, to Chloe at the Woodland School? She is more pumped than I've heard of Mate, her. Mate, she was jumping up and down. She was like, whoop, whoop. Uh, uh, very, very excited. So we're going to go and see her Sunday, yeah? Yes, we are. We are. At the end of the day, when the Rise Above crew rolls into Southover, everyone knows that everyone's table gets a little bit fatter. Everyone's going to eat off this yeah. event. It's, it's, it's great for the, the little local micro-economy. It's great for all the people that get to use the site and see the, the, the magic of that woodland. So, yeah, very, very good. Right, now, we've had lots of positivity starting off the show. How are we in? 27 minutes in. Perfect timing. So... Here on Rise Above, in case you're new to us, guys, we are essentially an entertainment show on Friday night on You Know Who Tube. We talk about all types of subjects. Many of them are occult and esoteric. Some of them are deep and dark. Tonight is one of those nights where we are going to cross the Rubicon um, and we are going to talk about something that normies will require a big trigger warning for. Yeah, man. Okay. Also, if you've got children listening in, yeah. just be hey, aware of that. We're conscious that, uh, that people of all ages listen to this show. Tonight, we if are... If you've seen the Pizzagate Chronicles episodes, just, you know, what's coming. Well, I'd like to put a like, parental advice about it. If you've got kids listening, mate, maybe it's... Yeah, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe, there. you know, we'll, we'll let all you guys exercise your own discretion on this, but we're going to be talking about SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse, and, the, and it's going to be involving children. And we've got Joe Ward here in the studio. We're very lucky to have him. And I'm going to, in just a moment, I'm going to get him to swap over with Andy PG once Andy's finished off doing his uh, admin stuff over here. Um, and we're going to have a chat with Joe. Um, so, yeah, please bear this in mind. We are going to try and use a bit of slang and code and Ralphabet where we can to avoid any um, Al Gore trigger warnings and that kind of stuff. But we are going to go in and we're going to be loose about it. So... Let's uh, let's see what time we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's time for the main event. <laughs> rise above, generate, generate. Rise above, speak with fear. This is Rise Above 91, riseabove.tv. It is Friday, it is uh, the 13th of the 1st, 23. Tonight in the studio, we have our special guest physically here, sat right next to me, Mr. Joe Ward, child abuse campaigner, outspoken anti covid protest leader, um, and uh, general legend, all in one. He's just making his way to his seat. Big shout out to everybody tuned in. Let's see who we've got here. Clara Warren, King Triple O Seven O Three. Let me just mute these other mics while everyone's faffing about. Um, Donna Harper, Lord Doobsworth, Gigi, Abby Lynn, Sam Carno. Big shout out to all our admins. Here are Joe's links if you want to check out his work. 
Okay. Have you got your headphones on, Joe? Right, give me two seconds, buddy. Yes, all right. Okay. Rise above. Let's get down to business. <laughs> Right, Joe, welcome to the show, mate. Uh, thank you so much, Lance, for having me. Um, I, 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 I usually have to say, you know, I, I, and apologise for the reason that I'm, I, I'm on shows, but I, one of the reasons that I'm, I'm so glad that you, you, you had me here tonight is I know that you and your audience are capable of taking in some of the information and hopefully as well, uh, we can put it in a way that relates to some of the things that you you guys are talking about as well. Because sure. I think what you guys are doing is absolutely great, and uh, I hope that well, people continue mate, to support you. The feelings, likewise, and I do respect that a lot. So thank you very much for saying it. Let's let's start at the beginning before we go d diving in at the deep end. You and I first met each other in 2020, and we've actually got quite a lot in common, right? Yeah. Well, it seems like it. So we're both musicians slash performer vocalist mainly right mm -hmm. you're, a, you're a singer i'm you're indeed a, yeah i'm a I'm a, I'm a rapper now apart from that what brought us together in 2020 was we met at, at protest in in bournemouth where we were both speaking out against the COVID union right yeah yeah i mean it was uh it, it was a crazy time for everybody i think um, I, I i was sort of at uh, like a lot of people uh, i think it came People said it came at the wrong time, didn't it? But I think that everything, you know, happens for a reason. And I think that that leads on to a lot of what we're going to talk about today. I do think that, you know, things, everything happens for a reason at the right time. And All you, part of the process, potentially. 100%, 100%. Now, not only did we meet at those protests um, and we're both sort of passing the mic to each other or, or the megaphone or whatever, um, we both sort of got a very similar level of backlash and criticism actually the same accusation yeah that we were what we were essentially doing was replacing our careers that had been taken away from us by the restrictions and replacing you know the microphone in in a club or, or a pub or, or a concert venue to the microphone or the megaphone in the street and we got accused of doing it for likes yeah. basically yeah yeah it, i mean it it happens i i, I think that the uh, I, I don't want to say the beauty, but I think one maybe one of the silver linings for me getting the level of success that I did at the young age that I did kind of uh, put me in a position where, uh, you, you know, you get very used to that sort of criticism aspect of things. And I, I've always said this all the way along that it affects me more to know that one person, you know, uh, maybe doesn't like or disagrees with something that I do then you know a thousand people or on Twitter and you know I'm I like to think that I'm I'm pretty true to my word in in the things that I do and the, the causes that that I, I've got behind and I've uh, seem to have this way of being able to I think uh, I don't know whether it's the natural artist in us but seem to have that way of naturally just rubbing people up from all sides oh, do you get that as well the wrong way <laughs> Uh, Mate, yeah. I got once accused of being really good at making people dislike me <laughs> and I was like hey that might be the case but that wasn't actually my aim yeah and, mate I, I've seen some of like um you know you you had it I'm gonna be fair you had it a lot worse than I did you actually had like your local press writing smear stories about you yeah Mate, I had the opposite when I got arrested in my my moment in Truro I was actually erased out of that story mm. and they showed someone else's picture yeah. And they didn't make Jesus. a thing of me. So I had, you know, which was maybe a blessing in disguise. But your your face is on the front of all the local newspapers, local singer turned conspiracy theorist. I'd, I don't think I'd, um, I, I don't think I've ever denied that I went through an incredibly self-destructive period because of some of the things that I, I maybe had previously been through. Um, but yeah right I, so i think it, it's only natural that when people see you down on your luck or in a situation where you're in trouble you'll you'll always get people who will take that as an opportunity to kick you uh while, whilst you're down but for, but like like i said for me it's it, it's never been about that it's just been a, about speaking 
uh, speaking the truth. And I like to think that three years down the line, you know, the people who have followed me for a while know that I've been incredibly consistent. But you can't make everybody happy. And, you know, like you said, um, the, for the right wingers, you know, they say I'm not right wing enough. And the left wingers say I'm not left wing enough. And I'm just trying to I'm just sat here saying I hate politics altogether. But well, yeah, you, that, I mean, that, I, I guess that's the trap that you fall in when you start to expose the, the nature of the bird in its whole or the whole rabbit and you you, you have the left-wing people calling you a, a right-winger and vice versa. Um, I mean, just, just to rewind a bit to what we were saying a minute ago, I think the biggest, the funniest thing about the people that were slinging that criticism at people like me and you, and there are many other people in our position, like Ramis, um, you know, again, on a much higher scale than you and me with a much higher level of um, yeah. of ridicule, you know, I would always come back to the argument and I can only talk because of my own personal experience, what happened to me when I spoke out and when I put my neck on the line, I'm just thinking, this is fucking ridiculous. Like if I wanted to make money or get likes or carry on raising my profile in the normosphere, this is the last thing I would do. Absolutely. This is the most difficult, most blood, guts and tears way to make a name for yourself. What to say the most unpopular thing ever against like, 80% of the fucking population. Oh yeah, that, that that's not a good business model. <laughs> that's that's it. I mean, like like you said, uh, I m my own cousin even sold a story to the local press on me. Oh my and goodness. That's uh, that that's kind of the level of what we were dealing with, you know, situations where maybe on a regular occasion you would have just messaged somebody and been like, "Hey, I disagree with that or that's upset me." All of a sudden turned into this big you know, thing against people like us who were just saying, really, we want to live our lives and get on with what we're doing. And just to go back, go back to a point as well, you know, like people who have followed me for a, for a while will know that I am, I am not in any way, shape or form a frustrated musician. I'm very, very happy to say that, you know, like I left that, that part of the industry behind a long time ago and and you know I'm, I'm i'm more than have probably one of the few uh, musicians to say you know like i'm not frustrated more than more than happy in where i am like i said i think you know every you, well, you get I where mean, you are for a reason i think any anyone that's been down the multiple rabbit holes that we have that is in the entertainment industry at whatever level may have probably already come to the conclusion that they don't want to be big in the entertainment industry because they know what that entails. I had it because, I mean, it's still entertainment, but away from music, I'd start, I was doing the combat sports and obviously all of the boxing shows with crowds was all finished. Now, all these people were throwing these accusations at me, um, but <laughs> they obviously hadn't done their research. And I was like, well, you haven't, look, I'm actually making, I, I was doing well out of it because people were like, well, you'll fly anywhere you don't because you think the restric restrictions are bullshit so i actually got some like really good work out of it <laughs> so the, these accusations were, were not only bullshit to start off like they hadn't even been paying attention to what was going on so anyway that's to do with the Soviet union you've been researching way before that yeah yeah i i mean um a, a, again by by hook or by crook for good or for bad um i guess i, I grew i grew up in the entertainment industry so you know the kind of thinking outside the box up until the year 2019 wasn't ever really considered, you know, strange from from where I came from. So, yeah, um, my my dad was all, always a, a a big fan of you know not trusting the government, not being able to trust the media, and I think that growing up within the industry as well, uh, you learn uh, the the meaning of playing the game and what it entails to be part of the club like like you said and i have again i've mentioned many times but people sort of you know think that being involved in the music industry or being involved in the high level entertainment industry tv film whatever it might be you know um that sometimes a lot of these things are intentional but there were times where we were sort of you know, just maybe bust in or, or card in to do adverts or something like that for TV. And it would turn out we, you know, we wouldn't really know what we were advertising or, you know, or anything like that until we turned up. It, we'd be put in front of a, a prompter. We'd read the script. And sometimes that... You're there the, to get paid so, so you can eat, uh, like that, everyone else. That's it. We're trying to make it within this industry that is literally like 
you know, shooting your gun up in the sky, trying to hit a target that, you know, is, is flying around somewhere there. But there's a reason that, again, that sort of ties into some of the things that I guess we're going to move on to talk about today. But um, yeah, there, there, there is a reason why these malleable personality types get to these positions of, uh, of power. And, you know, uh, I, I guess that it's that that's that in itself is difficult for people to understand but i've said um a again consistently all the way along this since the start of the covid 19 pandemic that i believe that this is about something more than just a you pandemic just said a swear word bruv sorry did i C word. C word. They call it the people's pandemic or something. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Come on. <laughs> we the, the scamdemic. Sorry. Gosh. <laughs> oh, God. Right, yeah, no V word, no C word. So Britney Spears, Arm Spear, Final Solution, something like that. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I, I won't make you put a tenner in the swear jar, Joe, but next time <laughs> I'll, take some, I'll take some crypto shit. No, I'm I want to go back to the comfortable chair. <laughs> And no, you can still get fined over there. Don't worry. No, we we've never actually connected. We we always joke about the ten pound rule, but we've never actually collected any revenue off them. Someone sat there once and they did it like four times in a row. I was like, honestly, I kept pressing the buttons. I was like, stop, please. <laughs> but um, yeah, no C or V word, please. Okay, no worries. Um, yeah, that this this kind of process that we've um. Uh, that, that, that we've been through is about so much more uh, than just uh, what it seems superficially and that a lot of the time when it comes back round to these issues we see that it, it so often lands on child abuse issues and issues it's similar often, to often that. been described as the the sticky glue that holds the web of the seat together I'm quoting King David. Mm. David likes that for anyone that doesn't know who King David is. But yeah, that's what King David said. The the sticky web that holds the glue of deceit together. So we've given we've given you guys a little bit of insight there into how me and Joe know each other and into Joe's background. Now we're gonna go into our subject tonight, which is, you know, child abuse and satanic ritual abuse. Now you describe yourself as a child abuse campaigner. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess that that's what the, it, it's kind of morphed into. You know, like I, I hate these terms, like oh, oh when he in came to prevalence or blah blah blah. Because I just, I, I just feel like when I'm I realise my, own... my activism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just feel like I'm writing my own or, like biography or something, and it's just it, it, it. Anybody who knows me just knows that that it, it's like so n not me. But but yeah, um, it, I, I, I guess that's what it, what it's turned into. Uh, somewhere between a, a, an advocate and somebody who is speaking out uh, somebody who un unfortunately this has happened to um and you know to I I in a way trying to make sure that this happens to as few people in the future as possible because um you know as i've said before it it, it is historic and stories like mine are historic but it's also happening right now to children all over the world so if we can, you know, it's why I'm so thankful to platforms like yours for being willing to speak out on issues like this and having me today, because I do understand that they're not easy subjects. It's but... not It's not everyone's average Friday night entertainment yeah. topic, but this yeah. isn't everybody's average Friday night entertainment show. That, that... And that's why I ha we've always mentioned this stuff, Joe, and we've always talked about it in a contextual way. But I've never had anyone come on the show to talk about this before. So I'm actually very glad it's you. Yeah, um, it, it's a difficult one. I mean, I, so often um, it, you'll know, like I've done a few of these interviews now and, it, it, you know, people often say, you know, is there anything that, you, you know, you don't want to talk about? But the reason that I've picked platforms like yours to kind of come and do these interviews is I don't want to be af afraid of what. I, I say within reason your, your big buttons are looking at me <laughs> as, as I'll turn that. this one up actually just in case we have any infringements but um but but yeah I'm, I'm hoping as I said today we can have uh, we, we can have a conversation about it and some of your listeners can have some stuff to take away and you know if it just plants some seeds 
I understand it's a difficult subject to talk about and we're going to get into a few of the different aspects of it, but hopefully we can uh, plant a few of those seeds. Yeah, and I think it's important because, you know, I was about to say I had the privilege, but it's certainly not a privilege to know about this stuff. It's not, it's not lucky. I'm not special to have um, had the knowledge of this for a very long time. Um, I guess when I got into my, my rabbit hole over 20 years ago, it started off with, you know, the political conspiracy stuff. Then the, I was obviously, many people have the, the aliens thing. We grew up with the aliens thing, right? Yeah. UFOs and aliens. So, you know, the, the whole ancient aliens and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and that stuff, you, 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 oh, okay. I learned about the, the dark side, the, real, the true dark side of what this was all about quite early on, way before... Uh, you know, any of the uh, Epstein stuff or the Pizzagate stuff came anywhere near the mainstream media or, in fact, the uh, conspiracy fear, let's say. it. How long have you been looking into this? Ah, uh, well, it, it, I, I guess I'd have to sort of go back to my childhood, really. Uh, as, as I've already explained, I grew up within the entertainment industry. My, my dad was a session musician and uh, then went on to record produce. So, you know, sp- seeing celebrities come in and out of the house that kind of thing wasn't really ever that much of a big deal but apart from that my life was pretty normal until uh, this ritual abuse happened at the age of 11 years old from a family friend um this person was connected to a satanic cult who were trading child pornography on the black market which oh, is whoa, just whoa, whoa. one kind of aspect of this kind of story um but yeah uh, from there i basically I, I was very lucky to sign a record deal as i mentioned at 14 years old and escape the abuse that i was suffering find a way kind of out of it but like a lot of victims of abuse this kind of ate away at me and i think for some people it might take a year for some people it might take 10 years for some people it might take longer but for me it was a very quick process and i got to 16 years old and couldn't really hold this secret in anymore so started to tell people got to the point where i told my parents um which as you can imagine which was uh, really dropping the bomb yeah not a great experience but it happened we decided to go to the police and go through the justice system, uh, which, uh, again, is just uh, it's it's a sort of conversation in itself gave them, you know, people, uh, dates, places, everything. But because of the way the justice system works here, if somebody is not going to be involved or somebody's testimony is not going to be involved in a court case, it can't be used. Uh, so the eventual verdict was not guilty um i wasn't allowed um uh, effectively my testimony was whittled down i wasn't allowed to mention a lot of the satanic elements and things like that that had happened within the story um uh, you know a lot of the children that i i'd named obviously for reasons that didn't want to face at the time what what had happened to them and you know so you did basically what you're saying is you didn't have anybody to corroborate your story that's true the one person who'd been abused alongside me um uh, yeah was allegedly i i have to only say allegedly because although we basically proved it in court um you know you, you can't really go around making accusations against people but this person went from uh basically living with a single mother to owning his own place in brighton and moving away and so i'm pretty sure safe in the knowledge that he was um he, he was paid off and that was looked the, after effectively the one person who who could have spoken up alongside me but uh, yeah there, there was a lot of resentment for a long time as you can imagine um which effectively ended my 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 record deal and my my time in in sort of mainstream music I, I felt for a long time like i hadn't been given an opportunity to tell this story and to be able to um you know tell even the people closest to me the full extent of of what had happened to me and this created as you as you can imagine a, a mental breakdown uh, at the age of 23 years old, tried to take my own life, was saved by a very close friend of mine who's gone on to become uh, l- like a, a guardian angel for me. And 
Uh, people who su suffer mental health will will know, you know, like every day is like, you know, either climbing a mountain or, or falling off a bridge. You know, you kind of have to decide, you know, sometimes what path you're going to take. And I, I decided to try and find some purpose, you know, from from my grief and began working with victims of, of all kinds, started in domestic violence homes, moved on to helping with social services and then moved into uh, nearly five years in sex trafficking, which was very difficult, as you can imagine. You're hearing some of the worst stories, people, you know, things happening at, at the worst times, you know, in, in people's lives. And I, you know, for, I guess, the first time what uh, did have a purpose, you know, interacting with the survivors and the victims, uh, you know, was giving me purpose. And then, as you mentioned, the COVID-19 pandemic hit us. And, uh, you know, I, I'd had my daughter by that point. Um, I've mentioned before that anybody who knows that you, you, you ha uh, anybody who has children knows this makes you crazy hypersensitive to things that maybe you didn't you know, care about before. Uh, so I, you know, the earliest opportunity took myself to Hyde Park with my mobile phone, started podcasting and basically saying I'd started an alternative history podcast um, a couple of uh, about six months before the pandemic started, coincidentally. So uh, that was just because of my boring love of alternative history. But I say boring, but I know that you, you, <laughs> there's, you love There's nothing well. boring about that. <laughs> Trust me. So yeah, went to, went to Hyde Park, basically started podcasting, started, um, shifting my focus really from what it was which was taking records from survivors and providing resources for survivors and victims and kind of moved that to survivors and victims of the pandemic and as you know we were interviewing nurses doctors anybody who would speak to us really because you know what the pandemic was like it was like this explosion of like there were a few people brave enough to speak out at, at you know in the really early days and people would chastise us online but then there would be people in our own box like oh i went to the, the hospital today and it just wasn't that busy so uh, 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 mate I, I cannot even say I mean, and first of all thank you very much for sharing what you just shared with us that takes a lot and like uh, thank you for sharing that with us on the show mate um but yeah that that experience of those people coming around and oh my god the, you know getting over oh, for, for, sorry for saying you're crazy but look at this but look at this and then they're filling your inbox with the stuff even that phenomenon which was huge for me and it went on a lot it was like yeah. a daily occurrence that to me now almost seems like a distant memory because yeah it's so long in the past um the my, my wife made me take the you know what type of people <laughs> we, we all knew, knew a few of them yeah <laughs> but i think what you just said is very interesting because i don't care how corny it sounds or any naysayers that think, you know, we, we might blow our own trumpets about this, but there were certain people that were trailblazers that were that wedge at the hard end, the first bit that fucking pushed through the seven foot wall of snow that broke it down and caused that gap for other people to get through. And those people that did that back then paid a price for it. Yeah. You know, we all paid a price for it. Um, whether it was financial, whether it was mental, whether it's spiritual, whether it was a breakdown of relationships, whether it's like, we all paid a price for that, but we're now in a situation, we're in a different situation now than we were then. Yeah. Who knows uh, where it's going to go. It's very um, up in the air at the moment, I think. But um, I mean, just from all that, you know, that kind of uncertainty and that time that, you know, people were sort of looking around for answers and what was happening. It was one of the few times in my life that uh, I could just see so clearly, you know, having been uh, a victim of abuse, seeing the tools of the abuser, the uh, the isolation, the fear, yeah. the, these kinds of things. It, it was just never really, it, you know, it was never in doubt for me. And I, I guess to a certain extent, yeah, maybe you could say, you know, our group were kind of one of maybe the few that were sort of talking about the connections between these the, these things that were happening and obviously child abuse but yeah you know like I said it, it wasn't ever for me about oh 
you know, I, I, I want to be a trailblazer. I want to be at the front of this. It was just a matter of um, in the early days, as you know, sometimes you turn up in the street and there'd be like 20 people there and it would be like, well, who has the confidence to have the megaphone Mate, and walk through the street? Well, I, I, I never I, planned I to be I'll someone that attended protests. I never, I, I never felt, until the Soviet Union happened, I never felt any injustice, any heavy injustice had been put towards me. I mean, yeah, I knew about all this stuff, but I mean, at that point, I knew what people's reaction when you spoke about satanic ritual abuse was, and I know that what would happen if you went to the street and started going on about it, you'd probably be sectioned. Yeah, oh, 100%. And, um, and you know, many people have been sectioned. Yeah. Many people got sectioned over speaking out about COVID. I've had emails mm -hmm. from people that have been in and out of their family trying to get them sectioned because of their views on what happened. But what you have struck on a quite an important point there on the link between the subject of the show tonight, which is which is ritual abuse, particularly you know of, of children, which is something you are an advocate uh, against, obviously. Now, there are parallels with the the modus operandi and the methods of the Soviet Union and the abuser and the narcissist, which is clear for anyone that's paying attention. Mm. But let me ask you this: Do you think it it's coincidental that people who were still st firmly stuck in the norm sphere? were all primed with the notions of child abuse, with things like the Epstein story dropping in... in could that, let me get this right. That was 2019. That was August 2019. Yeah. So we're literally talking a handful, a, a couple of months before Event 201. I remember in July, I said to a couple of people, including uh, Marcus Spitter, who was just starting to get into this stuff, who's been emceeing on the show... So I see this Epstein story. It's like, he'll be dead within a few weeks. I said, I've been learning about Epstein since 2014. This guy's a high level American Jimmy Savile. So what happened there was like, for all of us guys, we had like a primed event. And I feel like many people were being led up to something with all of these world happenings. Do you think, that's, do you not feel that like that was a, a, a was it a watershed event? The the Epstein thing that really put in the, into people's minds about institutionalized paedophilia, as it was mentioned. Then I think so, yes. But I also think that it goes a long way to the way that the network in in general kind of works around this, and that's the reason you know another reason why I wanted to be here today because a lot of people you know, do have a very distorted definition of, of what a paedophile is, of the kind of networks that they work in. And one of the things that I really want to be able to do with this satanic ritual abuse, you know, issue is to be able to separate what we know from the fact and then the, you know, and, and the other stuff. And I just, I, I think that there's never... There's never anything wrong with asking questions. And, and like I said, uh, if we can bring some answers to some of the things that, you know, people have and, and want to understand, then a hundred percent. But the, the, the Epstein thing, uh, yeah, yeah like, like, like you said, it's going to come, it's going to play into some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today, because on one hand, you know, these, you know th these terms like uh the ninth circle and blah 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 they're, they're they're kind of thrown around without a lot of people understanding what they actually you know what they mean and what they entail so yeah right. i mean i think a lot of it is understanding because something can be painted one way when as you know when in reality it, it means something com completely different for for, for distraction purposes so if we're going to take it back to first principles as we like to say on the show I'm going to drop it on you and I'm going to ask a, qu a question, which I hope, hopefully, I think in you answering for the, for the viewers who are not really au fait with this stuff, I think this is a good question. What is the difference between a traditional, as we, as we understand it, a, a paedophile or an abuser of children and somebody that takes part in satanic ritual abuse of children? So I think with that question, uh, probably the best way to kind of explain it was is to kind of break down exactly what you know what ritual abuse is and if we take the you know the, the very definition of ritual abuse which is a gathering or ceremony consisting of a series of events or actions for a religious or religious or faith-based purpose so okay that sounds like a jumble of words but 
Gosh. <laughs> if we really break that down into what it means. So we've got a gathering, you know, or, or, or ceremony. Uh, the first question a lot of people are going to ask is who attends? Well, well, the first question I'd ask is what the definition of gathering, how many people is that? Is that to me, that's like minimum three people, like more than two. But two people isn't a gathering, but three, yes. that's more than a couple. For, for me, when I think ceremony, I kind of think of a church ceremony. So, so I kind of think quite you know, a few people. somewhere between 20 and 30 people, sometimes as many as 50 in some you know, eyewitness reports. I, I tell you what, when the Soviet Union had me in court, the, the word gathering, this mm. came up. And they're defini- they couldn't give me a definition, but the barrister floated something like over five people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, minimum five people. So a gathering. So, you know, I, I guess the first, the, the questions that people would ask off of that would, would be, you know, kind of who would attend these gatherings? So we're talking high up members of the TV and media, the justice system, celebs and politicians. Uh, members of the cult family, black market kingpins and health and social services. And don't worry, I'm going to break these categories down a little bit as we work through them as well. Oh, okay. And, you know, who puts on these parties are the the elites, the very elites, the elites at the top. Um, when it comes to the events or actions, uh, because a lot of people will ask what a ritual is or you know what kind of a form of abuse it is it, it can kind of be broken down into five categories which is symbolism so uh, because not all you know as you know rituals are purely of a of a sexual or graphic nature some of them can be perpetrated on the general public for yeah. purposes of controlled distraction uh, obviously there's the sexual element of it as well uh there's the psychological and scientific aspects there's the adrenochrome and then the high levels there's the hunting parties as well shit we're really going in and uh, we we are and i'm gonna even gonna wait 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 can you actually just rewind and read read the the latter part of that list again so as i said when we break this down into uh into categories we can usually break it down into five sub subcategories of sra and they are symbolism yeah sexual abuse psychological and scientific abuse adrenochrome and hunting parties science scientific and psychological abuse Wow, okay. You see the, the notes that Joe's got here. He's got like multi layered, annotated, <laughs> coloured, highlighted notes. No one has come to the studio this well prepared before. I, I, Gosh. <laughs> do you know what it is, Lance? Um, uh, uh, people who know me and people who have listened to the podcast will know um, that they, uh, they, some of my friends actually call it the Joe Ward waffle. And it's, if I'm not on point, I will just you're waffle. Mate, you're not waffling. I made, you, I made you reload what you said because there was so much in there. I didn't actually manage to take it all in. There was, there's no yeah waffle going on please continue uh and at, as i said if you like we can break them down now or would you sort of like me to get to the end of the definition of the, the ritual abuse and then maybe come back and break some of that down yeah, a bit yeah. More? let's go that way okay um so yeah and then the final part of that is obviously the religious and faith-based purpose which is you know uh what what people always ask you know what what is the point of this you know what what are the people the true elite at the top trying to achieve and uh from my research and the victims that i've worked with and spoken to i've kind of broken that down into four categories which is resource control um preserving the bloodlines uh i I hate to say eternal life because it's one of those things that you say it and people just go oh but um you you know for reasons we're going to get on to these elites are almost uh, obsessed with the paranormal and with eternal life so let's call it long slash eternal life just for the purposes of (laughs) of people prolonging the the evil meat suit and and the final one which is all, all you know the the kind of most difficult one for a lot of people to grasp which is the allegiance to satan which we'll cover as well so yeah um what is ritual abuse well it's a gathering or you know or, or ceremony um attend you know like you said mostly per- perpetrated on children who attends um the elite and the people that uh, they are effectively the, their puppets as i like to call them the faith the faces of the elite the the not the, the the not true elites you know what events and actions are taken well that depends on the event but as i said symbolism sec, uh, sexual abuse psychological and scientific adrenochrome and uh, the worst cases hunting parties and what's the religious or faith-based purpose well 
as you know, resource control, um, preserving the bloodlines, a uh, long and eternal life and the allegiance to, to Satan. So uh, it's not, uh, you know, as I said, it's it's a lot for people to get their, their heads could, around. Could I, could I postulate maybe you've got it under another name? Have you got something about energy harvesting on there? Yes. Well, a lot of that falls under the adrenochrome and the reason that they have the the hunting parties. And again, we can break some. I'm, I'm more than happy. I don't, to, and tell to, me, <laughs> tell, it, tell me off if I if I make no. you jump ahead or something like that. Because these lot always do it to me. I have these like, detailed presentations, and they go, "What about this?" And I was like. <laughs> bastard that's like three slides ahead no no <laughs> honestly again um as i said the notes are purely so if you ask me something i don't go off yeah. on a wild tangent. and also, and also <laughs> side note for anyone that's watching that doesn't know what we're about here we're talking about something very deep and very dark and as we go deeper into this we are going to get more graphic please don't be disparaged by the fact that we're going to laugh in it and crack jokes and i'm going to press buttons over here this is how we do it on this show we use comedy satire to lubricate these topics. No one wants to listen to this stuff and get super serious about it for two or three hours. We're really going to go there tonight. So please don't be... You're like me. You, Absolutely. you can crack jokes about this and you have been a victim of this stuff. Yeah. We, we, can, we have to keep... We have to keep it light. We cannot let this stuff be weaponized against us. A hundred percent. I mean, yeah, for, for a long time. And that's an, a, another massive aspect of, of ritual abuse and faith-based abuses in general that people don't talk about is this kind of psychological aspect of it where, you know, and it falls again under the, the psychological and scientific aspect where for, for people like myself for a long time, you put yourself in that bubble of, I, I don't think anyone's going to believe me, you know, and it wasn't until... Uh, luckily, um, you know, meeting Jeanette and her group at the SRA survivors and kind of really being able to understand what satanic ritual abuse was. And it's a learning process. I mean, as I said, I've got a, a, a background in, uh, you know, child abuse matters, but nothing and nothing really prepares you for, for some of this stuff. And I completely understand if it if it's a hole too deep for people and, to and, dive and into. I would also add, it's not just understanding what happens and how it happens and how widespread and how organised it is. The next stage is to understand why, yeah. which we're also we're going to be talking about tonight. And like I say, this is the real bottom of the dark rabbit hole. It doesn't go any deeper than this stuff, um, in my opinion. There, there is 100%. no, yeah, there is nothing further. So please, because I, I, I do understand, as, as I said, it is a lot of information for people to take in. So if you feel like you, you want to stop me, or if I'm no, explaining anything, no, no, not anything at all. I'm, I, I, you know, it's fine. It's just that I, I am conscious that we have uh, hardcore listeners. We have um, people that might be new, and uh, for any subject like this, I always do little just interjections. So don't mind me. Don't get distracted. Keep going deeper. I, I'm just giving rabbit warnings. <laughs> can I can I just say that I'm I'm very pleased having come here and seen your beautiful studio because as I mentioned to you, your uh, your audience is a lot uh, sort of y younger and hipper than than my my usual audience. So uh, yeah, it, I came in here and I saw the DJ decks and I half expected you know you to kind of set up a rap battle with one of those people who calls me a c word on the internet maybe it's that <laughs> maybe it's that fat guy that's always writing sauce underneath all my posts oh, with that, a question what, what is that mark does that? <laughs> sauce yes. Um, yeah, they get worse by the day. What, does he want to um, eat you? Does he want to put sauce on you? <laughs> what a weirdo. But yeah, no, honestly, it's a beautiful place you guys have got here. But yeah, um, so at, as maybe starting with with the you know the psychological and scientific. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that for starters. Aspects of it because you know it's difficult for a lot of people to understand. And uh, you know, as I said, I'm going to touch on a lot of these subjects. If you feel there's something you know you want me to explain better, by by all means, ask. Sure, um, I, I'm. A, I'm an absolute open book but obviously the psychological and scientific you know aspect of it is using mind control programs effectively such as things you know your listeners can research uh, mk ultra and the montag project uh to effectively uh inflict mental stability for the purpose of torture or coercive persuasion uh, I was for people who don't know what MK Ultra and the Montag Project are. They were, I'm, which I'm guessing, pretty much from 
from just actually being here half an if hour. If you're in new the... to this, just watch, uh, what's it called? Um, Stranger Things. Yeah, I am. Um, I just being in the Rise Above studio like half an hour beforehand, <laughs> I was like, yeah, these guys are on my level. But effectively, government um, programs, I uh, was uh, very, very lucky to have been one of the people to have spoken and interviewed with some, some of the survivors of the Montauk Project. Um, and for people who don't know about it, because obviously MK Ultra is a lot more well publicized and the sort of mind control um, e e exercises effectively that they did not only over the military in the 60s and 70s, but also over the public I in general. That they're still uh, doing to people right now. <laughs> that a lot of people believe that they're still doing uh, yes. right now. But the Montag Project is one that isn't, you know, so well publicized and to the public in general uh we were told that this was organ harvesting effectively you know if you got ill with lung cancer or you needed a new kidney or something like that uh, we would be uh, effectively making these within animals so we could crossbreed the dna so you could get what you needed is that how they made the montauk monster it is indeed some people will have heard of the montauk monster and this is some the the this kind of feeds in so if anyone doesn't know montauk point is like this peninsula on like upstate new york yes. which is a little bit rocky quite out of the way and there's like a military base there when did this happen in the early 80s uh, late 70s and 70s. 80s yeah it, basically stranger things is literally based on exactly based on the montauk project 11 11 out of she was a, a Ben K Ultra subject. Mm. Yeah, it literally yeah. is that. So the the long story short of it really is effectively we were told that a lot of these experiments were done on animals. Well, I, as I said, uh, interviewed one of the survivors of the Montag project, a guy called Robert, who introduced me to other survivors, and this was something we covered on our, our podcast at great length, but uh, what the public were never told was a lot of these experiments were actually done on children. Um, Is that what's that Robert guy's surname? Uh, I would have to go back has and check wrote, through has my he records. Written a book? No, no. I've, re hasn't. I've read the book of the guy, the, the one mm. of the kids that was a Montauk kid. I'm trying yeah. to remember his name. I think his name was Robert as well. Yeah, I think this guy's been featured in documentaries previously, but um, yeah, he sort of um, we. What well, I was told throughout the documentary, only first name sort of terms, because it's a lot like other programs when we sort of did um, we did interviews to do with. Um, uh, we, we did interviews to do with other gov government experiments, let, let's say as well. And a, a lot of the time, you know, it, it, it depends on, on survivor by survivor, whether they kind of, you know, they, they want to mention their, their names or not. But, sure. but in fe effectively, I got to, um, I, I got to in interview the survivors of that project who effectively did tell me, you know, that this, these experiments were being done on them so that there, there is a great psychological and scientific you know aspect to this as i said you know part of it is that kind of almost disbelief of people and that kind of understanding of will anybody believe me and from my own experience you know it, through the court case if if you can even get to tell your 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 story in its entirety it doesn't bode well for you now for anyone that might be thinking like what is the link between satanic ritual abuse of children and something like mk ultra although we're not and, that, and correct me if i'm wrong here joe although we're not necessarily saying that those experiments involved satanically ritually sexually abusing children what mk ultra does through um repeated trauma-based uh, mind control is 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 uh give a shock to the system a conscious shock much like satanic yeah. ritual abuse does to break down the subject to create um the, the subject B from subject A. It literally a. rewires the brain. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and that's why, and this is a very, very important point, which we need to get very clear. That's why there is a huge link between the satanic organised ritual abuse of children and government projects involving mind control and 100%. especially military product projects. 100%. There is a huge... I mean, that's what, that's what MK stands for. Because it was originally German, I think MK Ultra came out of Germany, yes. and that it stands for mind control. Gosh, yeah, yeah, because it was taken from you, we all know who started to learn about that's mind control. I was going to say I don't know how many <laughs> official names I'm allowed to yeah, yeah. I'm allowed to name, but yeah, very um a, a, a very uh, well known operation within the 1950s yeah. where obviously 
certain members of the third. So this is right where the, the this is where the dark so. occult and and the seance or the science actually meet. Which is crazy as well in itself when you think of, you know, Heil Hitler, Heil Satan. Careful with the H word there. Sorry, yeah. sorry. The moustache man from Austria. <laughs> I, told, I, I told you uh, I'm, I'm upsetting everybody. But yeah. Um, it, it, Just don't upset Al Gore. He's the only person we've got to keep on side. He's oh like, no, the audience would be fine. Yeah, they, <laughs> no, 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 we don't really worry about these peasants listening in. The only person we're worried about is Al Gore. He's going to hate what I have to say it. about the weather. But <laughs> no, but no um, so yeah, the, the psychological and scientific aspect of it, again, it, it, all of these kind of little, you know, the, these pockets of it, you know, are, it, it, we could go down, you know, name after name, but just to give people a kind of idea, as I said, I did break it down into the five, you know, the five kind of subjects of what happens during ritual abuse. And, and you know, as you mentioned it, probably the, the most well-known one next that's used in satanic ritual abuse is the, the sexual abuse. You know, I mean, it's well-known to people, obviously, but the main purpose of it within the the satanic ritual abuse kind of network a lot of the times is you know to kind of install these puppets within positions of power that they know have a sexual interest in children yes but let me let me just jump in because this is where i've been thinking about this point today do you in your opinion think it also works that because the the network of satanic ritual abuse involves both blood and sex magic and blood sex magic that it gets these high-level occultists who may not be paedophiles mm. actually into the act of paedophilia by default. Because this is... Well, listen, we're not sticking up for paedophiles or dark no. occultists saying this here. Let's get this straight. What we're doing is actually... you know, We've got the whole rabbit on the table right now and the scalpel's in everyone's hand and it's fully dissected. We're drawing a line between what we say is a traditional paedophile, someone that has a disgusting... Perver sexual perversion towards children and someone who is involved in satanic ritual abuse which involves sexual acts with children right uh, yeah effectively. yes now I, I, everyone if anyone's not clear about what i said rewind it and listen mm. again because i'm very careful about what i just said um so these sexual acts with children that these people in satanic networks are involved in are actually a religious act yeah and i think that it it kind of um just to take it back a, a, a little bit um uh, just to, to what you said there because you made a really good point about the silence you know the aspect of, of that and it doesn't only take offenders to abuse children part of this network as well is having people in positions like you say who are you know maybe have other vices or other blackmailable qualities that yeah. are willing to turn their back on this because you know the biggest tool of, of, of any of, of any abuse is silence especially satanic ritual abuse and also i'm going to drop the bomb through my and Omer Beats's research into this which has been highly extensive from our knowledge the people who are most involved in this actually start as children mm. so we're not just talking about people that are exposed sorry to Lars, I was just going to butt you in there again it's like many other things it's a transgenerational thing all these bloodlines that are into it it covered their parents did it their grandparents did it and so on it me, me and Omar had had eyes on that Hampstead case as as it was happening before yeah. it got covered up and a couple of other ones because we were very vigilant at that particular time a hundred, and, yeah. and some stuff that we noticed was that from the accounts of the kids they were actually saying that they would been brought up in the families that were doing it and from their, their earliest memories as like being ha forced to hold some sort of sacrificial bl blade and actually do things to other children. So it's like, well, you want to talk about what these people are paedophiles? No, 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 they, no. This is much darker. Yeah. This is actually much worse. Hey, I don't want to say what, I don't know what's worse. It's very hard to quantify th this kind yeah. of level of hideousness, right? Mm -hmm. But we're, we're not, we're, this is not just people being paedophiles and being sexually mm. attracted to children. 100%. Um, it, yeah. And at, <laughs> But, but like you said, I mean, it, there's there's a deeper and I, I, even as we talked about at the beginning, kind of faith based uh, element to this. I mean, the next kind of way uh, or, or thing that's probably prevalent and I don't really want to spend too much time on it because we've already spoken a bit about the uh, 
the naughty words that get me told off by the buttons but is the symbolism aspect about it as we already touched on not every ritual is you know sexual or psychological or scientific based it can be based on the general public as well uh, you know advertising marketing media that that affects the way that, the, that affects the viewer on a subconscious level like you said I mean we're going to get on to a little bit as well when we come on to the, the Satan aspect of it um, am I allowed to say that one yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I hope so because I've already said like not swear at all that he's the <laughs> He's the Lord of this world, isn't he? <laughs> but, uh, but but yeah, um, it, obviously, as I said, so so um, yeah, yeah, the and, and the last two really, which are the most controversial, are obviously the adre- adrenochrome, which um, is it, pe- isn't that all just Q nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish and, it was. And and <laughs> and, and I'm and I'm a right winger who hates black people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a white supremacist, apparently. Well, we're all Freemasons, aren't we? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, no, I'm a, I'm a Mossad Freemason white supremacist. Oh, you're Mossad as well, yeah, yeah, right? Of course, it's the curly hair. Funny story, but li- little um, li- little tangent. I promise you, it'll only be no, a little. No, we one, love but... tangents. It's rise above. Uh, well, when when you were saying earlier about people calling you out online, the, one of the best ones I had on was some dude. He was just absolutely relentless on Twitter, and he uh, he managed to get my car registration i don't know whether he'd done it from a a facebook live and he was like see this guy's car isn't registered in his name and it it was my mum basically who the car was registered to and i was like so yeah the 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 only really like piece of information that you've uncovered here is that i'm a 30 year old man who shares a car with his mum but that (laughs) shame on you (laughs) shame on me but that's what i'm facing but um yeah back back to the serious stuff for people who don't know what uh, you know what adrenochrome is it's a chemical compound that it's produced by the oxidation of adrenaline within the body and when it's harvested at its peak it can be used as a youth serum via the blood um so for people who will say that this you know may just be q nonsense as <laughs> as you said or stuff like that you know i i would point out to some of the the, the more historical stuff which again i i wanted to wanted to just kind of because i know i'm going the long way around to explaining but i did just want to kind of explain you know to people in you know a simple way what satanic ritual abuse is but um yeah that effectively um for people who want to know a bit more about adrenochrome like you know we we only have to look as far as the beauty industry right now and what's going on in places like la and the fact that you know under 16s are being offered like cinema tickets and stuff like that you know to go and give blood this is something that started you know in the corners of the internet but when we look historically and especially throughout religious texts you know um blood sacrifice is something that's always been prevalent and i think that to assume that at you know, the year 1900, the Royals just stopped, (laughs) you know, this kind of activity or the elites. I don't want to pick on any one particular no, group right. <laughs> <laughs> um stop just stop this i think is is absolutely crazy and then there's the hunting games uh a- aspect of it which to mark certain dates effectively the elite bloodline families and this is the people who are you know right at the top of the pyramid uh they meet together a group of children are stripped naked beaten and tortured and then effectively told to flee for freedom uh, isn't isn't this doesn't this kind of stuff normally take take place in like you know some desolate manor house out in the far of the countryside and you know there's there's often police sort of blocking roads or making sure that the place is secure so nothing's actually no one's going to find out what's going on in these oh high le- high level places you know a, a lot of this goes back um you know traditionally throughout history to actually transylvanian bloodlines and the you know in, in the 1500s effectively there was a um a, everything okay lads <laughs> yeah um uh, the, the, it, it effectively yeah it, it, it goes back a long way but within the royal you know um hunting parties the effective goal of that is preserving these bloodlines so that's why you know only really the the tip of the pyramid effectively are the people who are involved within who take part in it yeah within the hunting games um uh, you know the children f- who make it through 
uh, from the general public. And again, I, I understand I'm using certain terms right now, but I will go on to explain what they mean. But the children that effectively make it to these rituals from the general public at the hunting parties uh, are then very often murdered at the end of it and their blood is used for the midnight ritual, which again is something that goes back um, to the first hunting parties, which we'll, we'll talk about some of the history for, but behind that in, in a bit. Um, and the children from the cult families are effectively caged and made to watch this yeah for uh, sure for uh, for the effectively as you said the the, the traumatizing and grooming pur purposes uh so those are kind of the five main ways uh that uh, you know uh, satanic ritual abuse is kind of committed um you know and in terms of the purpose of them uh, again me and lance have already touched on some of these subjects so but feel free i've been listening in, in the green room yeah, yeah <laughs> but please door. feel free to, to to stop me if there's anything you want to go a bit further into or if there's any information you you can add as well because yeah for we're, sure yeah, we're yeah. all learning and growing yeah. in, the, in this process yeah, no, absolutely mate um but but as i said a resource control Control. It, 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 it's very simple, you know, the, the deliberate process of hoarding assets that create reliance from the general public and it influence the decision makers or the so-called puppets that are, are in control. You know, if unfortunately now, as Lance, Lance mentioned at the beginning of this, we live in a world where if you control resource, you do control a certain amount of, you know, what the population does uh, and when they do it. And it's just a, a fact of life. I don't think that that's particularly what, even... What is, what is more of a, a marker that you are in control of the resources that you literally use humans, like, first of all, like cattle by default, then... Yeah for religious sacrament you use children for religious sacrament that's how high you are that's how highly you regard yourself above these goyim cattle and stuff like that right now and then oh we'll use them for sport as well we can hunt them 100 percent. this is this is this is about this is uh, apart from any of the occult stuff apart from any of the religious aspects this is about dominance mm. it's about asserting absolute dominance a hundred percent and some of the blackmail and, and influence aspects of it again like i said we've we, we've already touched on like the honey honey pot aspects and yeah. stuff but it's so important it, to it how works, it works in so many together. ways to hold this network together yeah and, and it's, a, it's a terrible thing to say this is so useful for them in so yeah. many different ways it's so it's so fundamental yeah and, and this is what people cannot get their head around, Joe. Which kind of feeds nicely into the next point as well, because, you know, it's one of their greatest strategies in order to preserve these ancient bloodlines. You know, um, historically, uh, I, I guess, you know, it depends on, on who you ask. And uh, a lady that I'll come back to a bit later on, a lady named Tracy Twyman. Um, and the reason I want to come back to her later is she is um, a lot of her information ties in with the paranormal stuff, which uh, I'm sure that you want to get into, Lance. But um, 100%. But, but yeah, effectively, um, the belief that the elite are the superior race and that they have been chosen to dominate society to the detriment of the lower classes it's my belief uh through the uh through the things that i i saw in my ritual abuse that these satanic uh cults effectively want there to be two levels and that is elite and the rest of us exactly like you said i couldn't have, <laughs> i couldn't have actually made the point any better yeah, myself the, the proto peasant like homunculus class we, we're not we're not fully humans we're actually animals. and we can see that the, the divide in in elite well i use the term loosely elite and the peasantry i mean it's Elites. just getting greater and greater yeah. isn't it? it's just getting there's more and more people going into poverty since 2020 we look at the level of understanding of, of the general peasantry it's literally like if, if you're you know you're fully you're fully on board with what's going on the level of your understanding and your and, and and your ignorance are literally totally diametrically opposed. They're, they're just your 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 ignorance is, is skyrocketing and your understanding is plummeting. And not only that, you're also basically inviting this this SRA, this MK Ultra, this scientific psychological attack on us now into your own personal biosphere. 
a hundred percent. This is uh, this, it, is, it, this is really the, the the deep dark black liquid metal rabbit. Right you are, you said to me, Lance. You know, like um uh, uh, earlier about you know the, the the definitions of of some of these things, but that's the difficult thing. It it stretches so far and and so wide, even into the things that we we see and ingest, and even you know some of the the, the woke society stuff, which again. Don't worry, we're, 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 we're going to move on to. But, we're, tearing, um, we're tearing it all apart the, tonight, Joe, tell me. We are indeed. Um, the one that I sort of said to you, I kind of, I go oh, a little bit at the, the long and uh, or eternal life, however you want the, you know, as in, you know, the goal, uh, what, another one of the goals or the purposes. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that the elites, they have this kind of like obsession with pro- prolonging life. And we, you know, w- we've seen this uh, throughout history with Royal and Elite blood lines you know going to great lengths to extend you know lives including crossbreeding well i mean look what was actually going on on jeffrey epstein's island with yes this, you know what i mean it, what was put out in the media to the peasantry like there was much more dark shit going on on that island than people know about this is it and i think that um you know people uh ha- you know he had his own will he had his own lab for mm. developing as like a a, a um an elite Homunculus production Homun- factory. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Some strange new person, or if you want to call it a person. Yeah, and I, th- I think that people, um, uh, you know, as well have to understand that throughout history, a lot of these bloodlines have been interbred, you know, and it's something that we'll move on to from a more paranormal aspect a bit later. Um, but, you know, the the fact that they've been interbred brings its own health problems. And we've seen, um, you know, uh, in different cases of royalty, British royalty, especially them take great lengths to, you know, try and to hide cure that, yeah. these. And, um, That's uh, the only uh, reason Diana and the Spencer bloodline was even brought into the mix in my opinion yeah it's because it was getting too lizard <laughs> too <laughs> lizard <laughs> uh, hey for anyone that's going to jump down my throat i might be speaking metaphorically there it's getting too aquatic <laughs> they had to bring in some of the some of the area i think well i i am um, I, I won't be speaking metaphorically in a little while so don't worry I've, I, I, I i will definitely touch on that subject but the last one and probably the hardest one um as we talked about earlier for people to understand is this kind of allegiance to satan and where it comes from and you know sometimes i say to people it's very much a case of you know your belief versus their belief and kind of what do you think that you believe and the surroundings that you're in and what your society is like versus what their society is like but you know it, it, even in satanic texts you know these are th- these are sort of their own texts you know that if people i mentioned earlier to you often uh, are asked in the same way that you know god or jesus or whatever spiritual you know, person that you follow um, tells, you know, people to speak in their name. This is exactly the same with Satan. And this is why we see, you know, a lot of this imagery leak throughout the th- the things that we do ingest within the TV, with w- within the media, especially, and within the things that the celebrities I- endorse, uh, especially. And a- as I said, you know, th- a lot of these things go back to these blood packs and the fact that these people do believe that by harvesting this energy they have accumulated a lot of the power and the wealth and that you know a lot they put a lot of that down to you know their allegiance to satan and this and again it uh i understand that it's difficult for a lot of people to wrap their heads around but as i said you know um it, uh, it doesn't move. matter if <laughs> we believe it or not they believe it and yeah. they're acting on their the, belief yeah. this and, is what and, I it doesn't say it, and it doesn't and also i would add it doesn't even matter if us as learned researched light occultists even agree with their definition of what satan is yeah because it certainly ain't the bible definition <laughs> and, right, it, it, right whether you think that this is psychological satanism whether joe's wrong no they don't really worship satan it's all about just out for yourself whether you think that or not that is still a technically satanism because that is ideological satan yeah. shaitan is the opposer and with and, and there is no contest without the adversary it, 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 are, are you going to work against the adversary or are you going to work for the adversary? This is essentially what we're There's no about other choice. Yeah. When we talk about Satanism. Oh, 100%. And I y- think we just need, before we go any further, I think we just need to be careful. Like, we don't tarnish everyone with the same brush. Yeah. We've got some of these people doing this 
kind of dark shit, which aren't don't necessarily do it for a religious basis. Like a lot about the hunting, the human hunting and stuff. They they that's their fucking downtime. That's yeah, like yeah, that's just that's just yeah. like light yeah. game. That's a little that's a little time off for them. That's yeah, sport. yeah. Fuck going clay pigeon shooting. These guys go you know human hunting for for their like fun you know weekend. The same end. way that a, the same way that a hunter of of our of our ilk would sh- would hunt a rabbit. Yeah. yeah, and, and then you, obviously you've got the religious as- aspect to it, and then you've got the the elite, the, you know, the really high up ones, which probably do a bit of everything. This is multi layered shit, and yeah. you know, ag- again, um, for anybody who's listening, who, who who's just tuning in and just listening and thinking this is absolutely insane stuff, like I am going to move on as uh, as I said to some history stuff to sort of back up a, lo- a lot of this afterwards. But it's still um, really an excellent presentation you know, so far, uh, Joe. You, you, you sort yeah, of, this is great, man. It's really good. Um, you know, people. Um, ag- again, one thing that we've touched on a little bit today so i'll just move through it quite quickly is the puppetry aspect of it me and lance you know talked about it a little bit earlier about you know how people end up in these positions of power um you know the people from the general public usually end up in this kind of in these positions of power by what i call personality grooming effectively and yes you know it's the looking as i said for those kind of um, malleable personality types the people that do make it to those top levels from the from the general public have already been through rigorous tests where you know throughout their time in success to see it whether or probably not monitors for decades joe yeah a hundred percent and you know um that my, my old man used to say um, you can literally chuck a pound coin out of the window and you can hit a talented person. There are a million talented people in the world, but there are a reason that only certain people get to positions of of power. So, you know, that's what I like to kind of describe as personality grooming. That's how members of the general public end up in these. What type cults of personality and- do you think they're looking for? Um, as I said to you earlier, I think the number one for a position in something like the TV, media, celebrity, uh, you know, high up within the justice system is, a, it, it, you know, is what are these people's vices? Is it drink? Is it drugs? Is it women? Is it children? And I think from a, but I think from a satanic aspect and talking about it from what we, you know, we're doing, they're mainly looking for it for control purposes because this is all about how, you know, it, it it affects and is seen one thing you haven't mentioned and pardon me if you have what about the psychopath element because we we, we mm. learn about this um i don't know if it's three percent or five percent of the population which had psychopathic tendencies which may, for anyone who don't know the de- di- de- uh, dictionary definition no empathy they will do anything for themselves so i've i've heard that you know the police in america they're they're they're, they're programming sort of they're, they're profiling for as they were you know, screening their officers changed uh, a couple of decades ago, and, they, and it actually turned out they were basically looking for people with no empathy, people that were psychopaths. An ex girlfriend of mine from years back, she. Um, and again, she was a psychopath. No, no, no. Her, her <laughs> uh, one of her family members was in the um, like MI5, and she applied for a job, just like a, a, a not you know, to be like a spy or anything like that, just a job with the MI5, and she failed the um, the form like the tests you have to fill out because she she didn't have the correct qualities they were looking for jesus and that was obviously she was a very nice but like caring person yeah. as well and like they they wouldn't have wanted someone like you say you've got no empathy they um i mean i've done a little bit of research into psychopathy and stuff and you get you can get primary psychopaths which are you know fucking born that like no empathy that's it that's who they are doesn't matter doesn't mean they're gonna be chasing you down the road with a chainsaw trying to chop your head off it's, yeah. it's, it's just a no empathy thing like we just discussed but you have got secondary psychopaths which are, are made that way so i mean you think if you get abused as a child, especially with something like SRA, then you're going to be broken down over years and years and years and you're going to lo- start to lose your empathy. That's what I would like, sort of name a secondary psychopath as. Yeah. Or someone who's been in the military and has been exposed to so much death and shit like that, then it just, it cha- again, it starts to rewire your brain in a, in a traumatic way and y- you could easily lose the empathy for... Yeah, yeah, I mean, your fellow man, a hundred percent. Detective Constable John, John uh, former Detective Constable John Wedger, actually spoke about this when he when he came on my podcast, and you know, that said about that that kind of um, that 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 kind of element of of, of it, the way that it, it kind of um, you know, paedophiles, and very similarly to people who have that narcissistic you know aspect of their personality they get yep. very used to living a double 
a, a double life, you know. So yeah, it yeah, then yeah. becomes very easy if me and you we're both living a double life to have allegiance to each other. And this is one thing I've said all the way across the child abuse pyramid. It doesn't matter whether it's down from you know from child abuse all the way. Um, not that I'm negating child abuse in any way, but all the way up to satanic ritual abuse. You know, there's that 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 kind of element of, yeah, for sure. of, of it that, that there is no um that there's no honor amongst thieves effectively no, you know not. pedophiles will defend pedophiles whether they be black whether they be white whether they be elite whether they be you know members of the cult family um but yeah the final part um part of what i was what i was go- i'm gonna say actually about the puppetry parts of it and people who end up in these positions of power the ones that end up you know, through these cult families that are groomed for these positions end up there through effectively traumatic brainwashing. Yeah. Um, you know, as I said to you, witnessing a lot of these rituals, um, you know, mental and physical challenges. Um, many victims have said to me, you know, that um, who grew up in these generational and cult families, you know, that they were put through exercises such as drowning, you know, and then being brought back, you know, effectively tested scientifically to see what the limits of, yeah. a, you know, a human body can be put through. And like you say, and there's no shortage of test subjects. Uh, yeah, and like you say, a part of this is for pleasure. Yes, um, and you know can be used at some of these rituals for pleasure um, purposes and for harvesting the energy. But you know, a big part of it is, as I said, the fact that this elite they do have this obsession with you know the the, the paranormal, effectively, and stuff like that. And so when you, you know, when you kind of get stuff like that you know it, it, it it's natural that people are going to want to kind of um uh, you know uh, understand stuff like that but i mean uh, uh, if if you don't mind i mean we could we can jump straight you know in 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 there if you want yeah let's do it i wanted to sort of uh, people might have listened to the last sort of half hour 45 minutes and just thought like okay yeah some of that i can relate to some of that's a bit crazy but what i want to do if it's okay with you now is basically um just give some historical information basically just to back up what i was saying about you know a satanical in you know satanic ritual abuse um uh, you know, and and starting off, I, I I think a good place to start would be with the satanic panic, or you know, the the satanic moral panic, or what you know, through the seventies and eighties, uh, you know, um, which effectively was, uh, you know, this. Uh, to explain it best, the elites kind of used the organized sex revolution because, uh, as we were talking about before this show starts, there's very few events within um, history that aren't, you know, pre-orchestrated by the elite. And we're going to come back on to that. But, you know, the sexual revolution of the 60s very much was one of those orchestrated events where, you know, the elite effectively used it to run wild. And this caused over 12,000 cases worldwide um, of satanic ritual abuse to be reported to law enforcement. Um, You know, the... The elites and their puppets in the mainstream media explain this away by ba- with basically like dodgy psychologists and something, a, a phrase they coined, which was false memory syndrome. The, the satanic which, panic, right? The satanic panic. Now this ha- that happened in the early 80s. Did indeed, yes. So it took sort of 20 years for it to sort of get, because th- th- let's get this, to, for anyone that doesn't know, they were kids in multiple states all over America that were basically reporting quite detailed accounts from nurseries of this satanic ritual abuse that involved supernatural or paranormal aspects. Of course, yeah. Not only very detailed accounts of the religious aspect that involved sexual violence, uh, blood magic and sex magic, some of these accounts even talked about the summoning of entities. Yeah, and it, it's uh, again, you know, um, it, it's it's one of those things where when we talk about, you know, the, the the paranormal agenda or the reptilian agenda or you know what whatever, however you want to describe it, it's one of those things where probably one of the most asked questions I get working within satanic ritual abuse is, you know, do you believe in reptilians? And the answer is so much more complicated than you know do you believe in one thing or do you believe in uh, you know whether something is real i because 
I'm a big believer, first and foremost, that perception is everything. But I'm yes. also, secondly, a massive believer, and I think it's where I've been able to sort of help within this satanic ritual abuse movement. It's sort of, as I said to you, I want to separate what we know, from, you know, the facts from the fiction, effectively. Yeah. So if it's okay with you, I'd just like to go out. through like a couple of things. Like sure. I've actually written out. up. Uh, I'm here. really glad you brought up the R-bomb. Yes, uh, it's it's one that people very often feel awkward talking about. Yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. we should feel awkward talking about anything. Like I said, no, to mate, you, we got the whole rabbit out on the table here, mate. Well, Thirty-three about exactly of those rabbits on that table. Mate. What what has this worldwide event done to us? Where we feel like I I, I often say, and Lance is probably fucking sick of hearing me say it, but I've I, I, I've said it many times. You know, like up until the year two thousand and nineteen, if I'd have said to you, you can't trust the government or you can't trust the media, that wasn't like a life changing you know conversation you know now it's like <laughs> now it splits families up and stops people coming around for dinner it's like when did you know, everyone what? start trusting the government and what the people said on tv <laughs> wasn't that the oldest saying when everyone was a kid don't believe everything you hear on tv oh well don't believe everything you hear on tv uh, yeah well i i, I think um the, the, our parents generation and our grandparents generation have done a massive u-turn on on from on the, one, one thing they have stuck to is that everything they I, warned us about yeah one thing they have stuck to is the um the the do as i as i say not as i do thing oh because. yes yes absolutely. but um yeah the the the, the r bomb effectively so I, I i like to sort of go on uh, you know on, on on a more sort of uh, well as as fact based sort of thing as you a uh, system as you can with this kind of thing and um which is crazy because next to um reptilian and paranormal agenda i've actually written the cover-up agenda because that's how i kind of re usually refer to it to people who are within our group but um that I, I mentioned earlier a lady called tracy twyman who had done a lot of work into bloodlines and one of the things that this lady tracy twyman had exposed was that um, i kept mentioning the 1500 earlier and it's important because it's a really important time uh, hi historically because a lot of the ancient bloodlines due to war and stuff that was going on around the world in general had died out religion wasn't necessarily being used anymore as a tool of spirituality it was being used as a tool of fear and yeah. control uh, which we see you this know this is the time when the black nobility started moving in uh, and, and basically started m murdering what we have called like our our native yes. um um noble bloodlines and so with a, a man called nicholas devere who anybody who's um ever sort of studied the bloodlines will probably have heard of nicholas devere and i'll, I'll I'll mention why um, a, a bit later, but between the two of them, uh, they effectively had managed to research and get to the point where they'd worked out that a lot of this changed when the Azteca religions in South America were discovered during the 1500s because they were incredibly in touch spiritually with the um with what we kind of understand now as uh the the pine pineal gland and yep. stuff things like that and the serpent energy uh the fifth dimension things that you know we would po probably consider now um you know more classic mainstream spiritualism in terms of future telling and things like that and um you know the the effectively the only bloodline left at the time which was this dragon bloodline um uh, you know uh, they eff effectively they seek to monopolize this spirituality and this led into a lot of what we saw worldwide with the americas being conquered and all, all the way up until 1776 which was the official formation of the illuminati as we know it as this bloodline began to adam weiss happened in, in, in the bavarian illuminati and you know yeah. that term is very widely used now but you're actually talking about a particular group in yes. time in it, that, that called themselves the Bavarian Illuminati. So within this period, effectively, as I mentioned, linking it back to what to satanic ritual abuse, uh, not just from a historical aspect, but this bloodline under Countess Elizabeth Bathory, who's a quite well-known historic figure because of her bloodlust oh, and the shit. fact You've she just, used to you just made something happen in my brain. Sacrifice people, and again, I've written a piece on that recently at our Facebook page. I'll drop all, all the links below if you want to read a bit more about her. So what you're saying is. The European Aryan bearded conqueror bloodlines that very famously in the 1500s 
rediscovered the South Americas. And the story is that when they went to those, those places and the red-skinned people that had the serpent knowledge from long time, which involved blood sacrifice, sorry, when those bearded conquerors in boats came back, those red-skinned people thought they were gods because that's what Quetzalcoatl looked like. Just for the purposes of, you know, the fact that I'm using this as historical information, I just want to say that it doesn't really matter what I believe. I'm just saying that this was the information that Tracy Twyman, this lady I was yeah, talking well, about, is, was uncovering. This and is the perfectly author, in line Devere. with what I've... And, and, and even what I found out when I went to Mexico and I spoke to uh, this Mayan tour guide la, um, last year. This is perfectly in line. And it even goes in with reset theory that there was some sort of 1400 cataclysm and the white bearded conqueror boat people went around rediscovering shit because they got resetted. And wow, they found the redskin people that had the serpent knowledge. And then they found out about blood sacrifices. This makes a lot of sense. And if you believe Tracy Twyman and Nicholas Devere, uh, yeah, uh, effectively the, the purpose of this was to mon monopolize this kind of the, the, this spirituality um and you know it, again going back to what you what you said about the reasoning um they believed it was because these bloodline families were dying out and there was only this one bloodline family you know left but i digress anyway i wanted to kind of keep this more factual based you know on what sure. we know and what we kind of can tell so you know tracy twyme and nicholas devere working together to expose this you know, of effective dragon bloodline, um, you know, that, that's monopolized spirituality of, of effectively, um, you know, uh, Tracy before her death, uh, by, by suicide, which I'll, I'll come on to in a little bit, but, um, Tracy before her death and Nicholas Devere, both, um, uh, we're beginning to link this back to satanic ritual abuse, to the ultimate purpose of all of this being satanic ritual abuse. And this uh, I, I have on really good uh, on really good um, knowledge, and then you know uh, from from you know first hand accounts of people who interviewed Tracy while she was alive. So this you know the satanic ritual abuse was the stuff that she was working on before she died. Um, you know the reason that. You know, a lot of this information is suppressed because Tracy died of suicide and anybody, you know, um, that, that, that kind of talks about this, including um, uh, us who made a documentary, is basically th or even questions Tracy's death in any way is met with legal action from her husband. Uh, we know of at least four different people who were threatened. One who was actually on our documentary. So she didn't officially commit suicide, is what you're saying? Um, wh what I'm saying is anybody that says that she didn't commit suicide, um, yeah, her what, husband... What was reported then? Uh, what was suicide was her official cause of death. Although... Um, a, a, as I said, from accounts from her friends, from her family, this was a lady who was trying harder to stay alive than she was to to die. But uh, yeah, um, <laughs> it's it, it's a very, you know it, it's a difficult situation. But um, you know, um, Nicholas Devere, uh, uh, when making our reptilian documentary, um, None So Blind, which again features the story of Tracy Twyman, and you guys can catch that documentary at our Facebook page. Um, I wanted to get some information into Nicholas Devere, obviously because the Tracy Twyman lead ran cold, obviously with her husband threatening to sue me. Um, so I went to Nicholas Devere uh, effectively to try and research, um, you know, if there were any of his surviving relatives and found out from his daughter that you know although he died under mysterious circumstances that if i used any of his works or information um in my documentary that she would effectively pursue legal action against me so again met with another roadblock so um you know whether we talk about the you know the paranormal aspect of this of spirituality and whether you believe in reptilians from that aspect you know as you can see when you start looking into this subject there are already a certain amount of suspicious deaths um jenny gosbell or suzanne reed is another lady wrote a book called the body snatchers uh she also featured yeah in i remember that book my yeah it's a great book um i the publisher of the book ellis chapman uh i actually spoke with him and interviewed him at length and he actually said to me that j basically everything that was reported you know to uh, have said was true that was exactly how 
you know, Jenny or Suzanne. Uh, she used the name Suzanne to publish the book, but her name was actually Jenny Gosbell. She used her mother's maiden name to publish the book because okay. at that point she was scared of the people that were coming after her. But yeah, and he he actually said to me, you know, it was no no surprise really. She was a lifeguard and she died in in shallow water, Lance. I mean, you know, I, I'm not here. That's the probably one. more of an insult than anything. I'm not the one here starting conspiracies, but when they're going to make them so fucking dumb, it's like you know what 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 are we really supposed to do? Um, you know, false flag events. You know, I don't really think I need to cover that too much because we've already said a lot about it. But how they're used in relation to satanic ritual abuse. You know, these pre-planned events. You know, in my mind, whether it be um, you know JFK, nine eleven, banking crisis. Um, you know, uh, COVID nineteen eighty four. Uh, yes, uh, some of the things that I'm not allowed to mention, you know, um, in my opinion, they're, they're, they're effectively tests, you know, for the general public to test what level at, of cognitive so dissonance. It's, like, it's basically like broadcast SRA. So what Joe's trying to basically communicate to you guys is that when you think about satanic ritual abuse, it doesn't mean meat suit to meat suit. It doesn't even mean in front of some dark underground church. We're talking about the kind of things that we talk about at this show all the time, the psychological operations, the whole clown sphere, the whole construct, the simulacrum, whatever you want to call it, AIX, the demiurge, this... The this, control um, distraction. Yeah, the, the, the clown matrix, this this um, this whole um, collective egregoric sphere that most people that, that, you know, that don't watch this show are, are caught inside is essentially a construct of the architects of global SRA. Of course. I mean, what did I say to you at the start of this, Lance? I mean, the thing that the elites fear most is people like me and you who may have different opinions on certain subjects, but just sitting down in a room like this on a platform like this and being able to speak openly about what we think of that at its base is the very definition of why they want to shut down free speech, because it makes it so much easier for them to implement these things that they want to do and create this yeah. elite and slave society. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, whether people want to hear that or not, part of their desi desires is this satanic ritual abuse. And that's why this is a very important conversation, because normally when this subject is on the table, what you've got is um, something that's very hardcore, some information that's very unpalatable. Someone's personal account of something that's so harrowing that watching it yourself and taking it in... Is actually... Just on, on what you just said there, about watching it yourself, we've got a great comment from Wayne Avenet saying 9 11 trauma. Well, that was fucking broadcast all across the world, wouldn't it? Of course. So, literally, everyone, like Lance was saying, just to watch it, everyone was watching that on the news. How yeah. often do you hear, um, it, you know, in these sort of mainstream 9 11 documentaries about the 9 11 effect of how afterwards everyone pulled together in patriotism? You know, everyone was so together, it created this almost us versus them, you know, atmosphere. P PRS in action, problem, you know, reaction, solution. Uh, uh, of course. But 100%. going back to what I was just saying, it's like, um, you know, normally. If someone wants to learn about this stuff, you have to take a first-hand account, which when you inhale it yourself or ingest that impression, you're actually becoming another victim of SRA by learning about this first-hand account. When I first taught the, the, the missus about, about Pizzagate and I showed her the really hardcore Islamic stuff um, from the, the, the Black Banners brothers that really showed the dark shit uh, before it all got taken down, she was in bits for two weeks. It, it, so... What, by us guys having the conversation on a platform like this that's pretty that's like an entertainment show and we're breaking this down this rabbit into literally bite-sized chunks and chewing it so smoothly the, there is no indigestion we're not causing anyone indigestion that's inhaling this bit of rabbit because that's we're it. actually getting down to why this is happening how it's happening formaically without needing to um you know, make people a secondary uh, a victim of it. 100%. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm really glad you said that, Lance. No, I think um, it's important, though, yeah. because that's why we're having this conversation, Joe. And, that, and yeah. I, I'm back to my point. That's why this conversation is very important. Um, <laughs> I, what, what I'm going to do with this, uh, with this kind of last part on, on the kind of like historical info is because it is quite a controversial subject is I'm, I'm just going to back kind of bang through it. And if there's something that maybe I mentioned that, um, you know, is a kind of off subject for the censors, you just, well, Andy, um, have your finger on the buttons. Yeah. You just yeah, give mate. me a buzz. Um, because 
Uh, uh, gosh means good. Some anything else apart from gosh means no. The, Don't say that. <laughs> the the last part of the the kind of historical info that I want to talk about that kind of backs up, you know, the satanic the satanic ritual abuse. You know, the is it happening? How is it happening? Kind of aspect of it is what I call transversion. Um, and the reason that I, I kind of call it that is um, a very good friend of mine, Simone Marshall. She has a saying, and it's that confusion is the language of the devil, effectively. But I kind of go one, uh, like one step further than that. And it's kind of like, you know, confusion is the language of the devil, but inversion is how he communicates um, and, you know, like what I mean by that is like when we look at like, you know, regular what regular people within um, who would class themselves as LGBTQ plus or within minorities, um, when we consider what they actually want versus the very small vocal minority um you know that fly the <laughs> rainbow flag on behalf of everyone else that's just supposed to accept it you know listen I, i'm very glad you brought this up yeah i know for a fact we have people watching right now who would be lumped into that group we have people yeah. of all different sexual persuasions i know we have transitioning trans people that watch this show that i chat to on facebook right of course. and they totally reject um many things that happens under that rainbow flag and that and that um alphabet of uh you know word salad of letters or whatever um but nevertheless yeah. they're all lumped under it A another psyop um yeah well, well the L like, the lgbt just, mafia was it the uh, alphabet, uh, mafia. Alphabet, alphabet alphabet mafia, mafia. who was it the coin that we had on the I show i can't remember <laughs> someone did yeah, they called the alphabet mafia slight side story lance but i told you like um about how i just have this habit of everybody getting angry at me for the things that i do but um one of the kind of uh, during 2012 2013 i was living in the republic of ireland and one of the kind of hot button subjects there at the time was kind of the legalization of gay marriage and i received quite a lot of flack and um you know uh, that i was kind of called like you know uh, this right-wing bigot and all, all of this kind of stuff but anyway um no, we've uh, had it all mate don't uh, worry you know, um for for basically saying you know for whatever marriage is you know the very definition of marriage if you want to take it by it's you know it's um, just meaning effectively it is a patriarchal it is a religious you know ceremony effectively yeah, it, it, of, the church it, actually pretty much came up with it to, to, uh, coming together of two people and all i said was you know if you know this community of people want to create you know this uh you know this identity for themselves why would they seek acceptance from Mate, a, a Joe, I, I you know exactly an organization that you know it is literally set up not to accept them i mean we can argue the rights the wrongs of religion you know but when it fundamentally comes down to it the only question i asked and got in big trouble at the time for asking was you know why would you want to be accepted by something by an organization that doesn't accept you press the and gosh button <laughs> bang bang come out of the oh, oh, no, wrong sound blue. The blue. Oh no! Put it back. That was the blue. No, no. Gosh, means good, mate. This gosh. is this is this is a great comment. I said exactly the same thing. Listen, at that point, gay people were already able to be legally married. Yeah. But they were fighting for the right to be married in an institution which didn't believe that they should be doing what they're doing. Oh, and Lance, they have the most beautiful weddings. They really oh, they're, they're do. Gay weddings. They are, are, have the are, most are, beautiful like, weddings. Like, a lot better than the straight weddings. Yeah, they go all out. <laughs> they really are. Listen, I've, know, I've, I've, I, I've seen I the way rest, gay, gay guys do, do some things superbly well. <laughs> they know how to party. Um, hey, listen... Um, but I think um, it's a very good point, and you know, you're <laughs> to call you a right wing bigger. What a fucking joke! <laughs> I, I know, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, this very much goes back to what we were saying earlier. In that, everybody always has to within this transversion, everybody has to have a team. Everybody has to be on team left or team right, team gay or team straight. Yeah, team sort of black. divide again. It's just another division or, tactic. Or, or team white. And I'm very glad that you actually brought out, you know, the way you know that this old ancient you know magic works because um something for people who are interested in alternative history to research is glamour magic and glamour magic is one of the main reasons that the elites were so keen to take over the african tribes because glamour magic is effectively you know the 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 ultimate inversion you know like it's the psychological inversion of being able to put something in front of somebody 
constantly to make them want it. And this is not, you know, something that's a conspiracy. This is just something that... I've not heard of this before. Please carry on. You're enlightened. No, yeah, this is new to me. Subliminal and, you know, the the closest thing that I could sort of relate it to that maybe listeners have heard of is like subliminal messaging. Explain how they took it from African tribes. Well, uh, as I said, it was, um, you know, it, it was taken. One of the main reasons that of, oh, you know, there's there's many reasons that the elite don't like talking about Africa, you know, um, e- ecological reasons, you know. But, um, you know, uh, one of the main reasons, again, was this kind of um, uh, this spiritual aspect you know the when you look at the con- the continents that we we hear the less the least about you know your africa's your south americas and in in some cases your australia is as well they are the lands that were literally pillaged of spirituality and glamour magic is one of the tools used by the elite alongside subliminal messaging in in my opinion um you know when we look uh, over the last 10 years for instance at the way that you know this trans movement went from a movement of just wanting to be accepted in your own skin to something that now is a hot button topic that's talked about, you know, uh, in conversations, uh, you know, uh, across the world, uh, you know, and, and yeah, I I mean, for me, um, I, I think there's there's no doubt that a lot of these agendas are being pushed into purely because they push us into different camps and create divisions. And I think that they realized that um, capitalizing on a lot of teenage angst and the um, uh, it's weird because in my story with SRA, um, uh, you know, being abused, I actually said that teenagers have this amazing way of being able to feel like everything is their fault. And that's why it's so important that you communicate, you know, with your teenagers. But when you look at this trans issue, it was almost perfect the way that it was advertised that everybody can have their own identity. Everybody has the right to feel what they have to feel. And by the way, Lance, I um you know uh, j- just while we're there because you know um you know people will ask I have absolutely no right um I have absolutely no problem with anybody being anything that they want to be Me neither. representing what they want to represent Mate, I'm about total but, freedom of what do what, literally do whatever you want as long as just you don't, do no harm don't impose it on anyone else but just like the last three years, when it came down to it, the issue that I have with it is when it starts to inflict on me. As the father of a daughter, for instance, I'm absolutely terrified at the prospect. As a man who loves a bit of bread and circus, I love sports for, for right or, or for wrong, you know, um, I, I do. Um, and, you know, as, as the father of a daughter who sits and watches, you know, football with me, the idea that one day she might be interested in boxing or, or rugby and she might be getting knocked around by somebody who, who uh, you know has double the level of testosterone running through their body whether that person chooses to identify uh, as a b or c matters not to me uh but when it starts to <laughs> yeah. encroach on my life obviously so I, I, I live in that's when real physical to... 3d reality that doesn't i don't care what you think uh, uh, that that is it. not the case sorry um no, I, I think that that's maybe where, um, you know, I, I do differ to a lot of people, um, you know, it, it, within what, whether you'd call it the freedom movement or people who think like like we do in that, um, you know, I'm not. I, I, I quite enjoy having people who have different opinions to me. I've, I'm a big believer that if we all believed in the same thing, you know, life would be boring. And it's part of the reason why I wanted to come on a show like this, because I knew that you'd ask me, you know, the, the, the Man, challenging no, questions. I'm not, I'm not, I, I won't hold back. I didn't, I yeah. didn't hold back anyway. I, I asked John Looney to his face if he was a Freemason. You uh, know, I, I ha- that, no, I, we had archaics on, on his tiptoes when he was here. You know, we don't we don't muck around. Um, we like to get the whole rabbit out, and I think so far this has actually been a tour de force um, for anyone that wasn't really sure about why the the pedo thing keeps coming up. Uh, what is the link to Satanism? Uh, what what is this what is this um, attack on us all about? And Joe, please keep going because I know you're not you're not you're just getting warmed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> literally I everything on the table here, rise above, guys. Uh, I am. <laughs> 
I, I promise you I am nearly there. But um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take questions shortly. <laughs> in, in, the, in, in the words I'm sure of we've former, got loads of people wanting to ask questions. In, in, the, in, the, in the words of uh, a former Freemason uh, president of the United States who <laughs> <laughs> lots of people worship. <laughs> former Freemason president. That's, you haven't really narrowed it down there, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's a few, <laughs> mate. It's all of them. <laughs> Do you know what? Actually, um, that 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 brings me on greatly to my to um to, to my next point actually because um the 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 satanic reigns list of abusers uh during the satanic panic obviously as i mentioned earlier one of the things that was uh that that was blamed for this rise in satanic ritual abuse allegations was dodgy psychologists and okay that was i'm paraphrasing the false memory there. syndrome right? the false memory syndrome so this is um that, that i i'm basically paraphrasing there um well, but you'd, have, you'd only a dodgy psychologist would actually put forward the idea that a whole class of children would come up with these detailed hor horrific stories that matched another whole class of children somewhere else in the country. What, did all these kids sit down and, and work this out together? It's really crazy, isn't it, how me and you know thousands of other survivors around the world who have never met each other all have scary, similar stories. But don't worry, I've got some statistics for you as well, Lance, because I know that you have a statistic no, as absolutely. well. So we will get on to that. But um, yeah, after the satanic panic, you know, by 1994, a therapist uh, called Dr. Joan Coleman, basically had had enough of the, this the, these kind of slanderous comments and she commissioned the UK government um, for a report which was called the, the Reigns List of Satanic Ritual Abusers. Um, this uh, was effectively a list of people within society who had been accused of satanic ritual abuse. Someone emailed this to me two days ago, this list. Was yes. It, it wasn't you, was it? Uh, no, it wasn't That's me. That's how coincidental. Yes, but it's something... How synchromistic. <laughs> I've, I've mentioned it before, but it's one of the few things, because it was commissioned through the proper channels, it's one of the few unmovable blocks of SRA that people go... OK, I'll hear you out on what you have to say about the reigns list, because, you know, it, it is there, you know, whether people like it or not. But this was commissioned, as I said, in 1994 by Dr. Joan Coleman and her sister, who had counseled thousands and thousands of, of victims of so-called mind control, um, paranormal experiences, satanic ritual abuse. And this list effectively included five, five consecutive prime ministers of the UK who had political advisors that were tied to paedophilia. Um, it exposed, Only five. <laughs> yeah, the, it exposed um, a very famous case, a uh, paedophile case of Bishop Peter Ball, who was best friends with one then Prince Charles, now King Charles. And, King Sausage Fingers, uh, we refer to him on this show. And the reason that Peter Ball is so important, I mean, there, there are... There are many num um, names on this list and um, there's been n um, names added to this list since. But the reason that I bring up Peter Ball, um, not only because he was connected to Prince Charles, but also because Prince Charles refused to give evidence during this commission, uh, absolutely refused to and was given the right to immunity because he was royalty. Uh, so, you know, uh, effectively, again, I'm not starting conspiracies, but, it's, it's all up, you know, m make of that what you will. Uh, another name that people might be familiar with is Jacob Rees-Mogg's father as well, was also named on the on, oh, on the range interesting, list. Interesting. Uh, Keith Vaz. The reason that Keith Vaz is important, former Labour politician, is because he was exposed on his way out for liking of cocaine and rent boys, underage rent boys. But he made some very interesting comments to the commission, which went along the lines of people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. So, so he was saying even the people that were accusing him were involved as well. He was basically <laughs> saying that this goes throughout the levels and and that's a MP of one what, of what a thing to say when parties. you're getting accused of, of satanic ritual abuse. Yeah. Well, he knew he was guilty <laughs> by this point, and yeah, on his way out, he effectively said uh, to all the people who were basically not standing alongside him and the people who had sold him out that yeah, people in glass houses basically should wait for their comeuppance. But uh, yeah, so Keith Vaz is one to look, in, look into, and uh, I wrote this one down as well. Former Prime Minister Ted Heath, um, people. Oh, it's a massive one. I've looked into this dude extensively. Uh, this isn't even a conspiracy. People know that Ted Heath was a uh, was a massive paedophile, but the reason that I wrote down Ted Heath specifically for Rise Above was, um, uh, Lance, can you guess for me 
uh, on the Reigns list of satanic ritual abusers, how many accusers Ted Heath had by the time he died. Can I take a wild flying <laughs> random <laughs> guess? Have a guess. You'll <laughs> never get he it. He had 33 accusers. Fuck me. He's Boom. got it. Press the gosh button, Andy PG. <laughs> gosh. So, yeah, I wrote that down for you because even though, um, you know, apart from him being a prime minister um, and there being all, all these kind of prime ministers and their advisors and people throughout the politi- oh, political yeah, scale, um, as if I needed proof that they were, you know, the, I'm just basically giving that some That just gives it the clown context. world seal of approval that uh, he had. Uh, so Cyril Smith had 33 accusers. A hundred percent. Yeah, the uh, I wanted to move on to talk a little bit... Um, um, just to touch on the ninth circle as well, because it's a term that's often thrown around by yeah. people, but a lot of people don't actually know what it means. And um, again, satanic ritual abuse is a learning process. This is something that's been in the darkness for hundreds of years and people, um, you know, victims are just starting to expose. And even myself within this, all the work that we've done in interviewing, you know, uh, over a thousand survivors, it's still only such a small piece of this. You know, in my own story, I talked about, you know, how uh, you know being with these survivors and interviewing them um you know it kind of gave me the confidence um you know and it helped put together my own jigsaw of what had happened to me because it, you know not growing up in a religious household trying to understand all this inversion of blood drinking and upside down crosses as you can imagine was was absolutely crazy and we'll get on to a little bit with that the devil worship. I can imagine. <laughs> but yeah the ninth circle is a term that, that that effectively is thrown around um but what they are is a highly organized trafficking ring that effectively these guys they operate between the levels of what we know as the puppets the faces of the elite and then the true elite at the top so these yep. are trafficking the children for you know the that's main like, purposes of the then, rituals then you get like i mean i've looked into this before like how the actual hierarchy works you get people like just for, for an example gizlane maxwell she wouldn't be the one who's putting up in a van no. abducting children she's no, just no. A, a procurer she would probably get a you know an order from whoever and then you know, they've got people which they contact and then they've got people which would actually do the dirty deed of actually well, acquiring well, me, me these children. We looked into this quite a while ago. Uh, I don't even say about it anyway, but we, we looked into like all different forms of abuse on, on all levels. And most of the people who are the... I, I, I want to call them... like They're like the enablers, because they're, but they're, they're, they don't even know they're enablers. Yeah. You know, but they have got the, the Charlotte's Web throughout the whole of the industry. They're like a middleman. But, but but the thing is, they've got people in charge of child protection agencies. They've got people in charge of child charities. And that's it. That's you know. uh, I mean, exactly. Basically, hitting you you hit the nail on the head. You know, people. The the main question, you know, is how do that true top elite, those people at the top, who how do they control? You know, all of this, and it's through basically what we've just talked about: controlled distraction and the influential secret secret societies. You know, it, it really isn't that difficult. But the the ninth circle aspect of it, moving these children at, you know, the, the highest level of this you know um you know famous examples of this are people like jimmy savile jeffrey epstein who we've already talked about r kelly and most recently thankfully that's coming out some of the information of course not all the information it's strip jab but madonna as uh, as well you know i mean we do you, do you think joe people like um uh, madonna and r kelly they've just been thrown to the thrown to the wolves i think that or do you, i mean what i personally i'll just tell you what i think i think that they're they've got caught because they were going they were doing it too openly or stupid and, and then they've got um kind of rejected by the and just thrown to the wolves in the media i, I think, think there's a, a mi- passage uh, yeah 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 or is it or is it a humiliation ritual for i think it's probably part of the grand it's, it's part yeah. of the great works is revelation of the method uh, maybe it may be a priest or a priestess well, at, at the end know, of their natural cycle or useful cycle will just get re- regurgitated we all know they have to like you know hiding in plain sight and, and admission you know, they have to do that. They can't do things without us knowing about it. Yeah, hey, it's part of it, isn't it? Yeah. I think it, I think it ties into all of those aspects. Yeah, I mean, sure. when we... Uh, I mean, I've spoken before about how, um, you know, people talk very much about, uh, you know, crisis actors and stuff like that. But actually having been involved in the industry, I don't know whether Lance will back this up or not. Maybe not. But, um, you know, there's a lot. (laughs) 33. He he knew. He knew. Best crisis actor in the game. He's already read my notes. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, to a certain extent, there are always people who can be paid to do things, you know, and I've said this before as well, but, you know, the things that the mainstream media and the, the general public care about tend to be those blow up stories. If someone says three months down the line, oh, yeah, someone's told me to pay, you know, paid me to say that. The most, most of the general public don't really care because the story is already out there. And it doesn't they matter. Once it's out there in the peasant can, can sphere. I say something? Well, that's the thing. In, well, that's one of the things in life that bothers me the most and it saddens me the most mm. is the devil's paperwork is more attractive than humanity 100 percent. and i think the other aspect of that to answer your question is um uh, i would have to ask you um to look me in the eye uh all three of you and tell me whether We're you not Masons. <laughs> no but tell <laughs> to tell me honestly whether you believe that jeffrey epstein and and Ghislaine maxwell are currently sat in a prison cell somewhere or if you think the more likely kind of explanation to this is that they were kind of just characters in this game and if they really were doing you know I, I the think... top level doing what they were doing we probably wouldn't know about them but uh, no no I, to... no me me personally i think that to to think that yeah. Okay. Do, did someone like? Okay. Let me let me separate Master Ginny. Someone like Epstein. I personally think that you're absolutely right. That is a that is a, a created, um, a evil villain island living paedophile master character that's been concocted as part of the the great work as part of the the dark Luciferian stage play. Yeah. yeah. Normalization yeah. of it. Yeah, as well. yeah. The normalization. Like I was saying to you earlier on, Joe. Exactly what I said to you earlier on. Is it any coincidence that um, so it's 2012 Master Ginny dies, right? And then we've got okay. So who who was supposedly the most generous philanthropist, aka full on rapist in the UK, the biggest charity guy, millions over the years. Guess what? He's the most prolific paedophile we've ever had. Shock horror to loads of peasants. No 100%. shock horror to anyone that was paying attention. I knew Jimmy Savile was a paedophile a long time before he died, and I openly said it, and people noticed, right? Yeah. So that we had that. Then in 2019, we had the Epstein thing. I guarantee, I, I, I'm absolutely on board with what you're saying. In a nutshell, mate. Yeah. Yes, I right, think so I think that they, I think that Epstein. I, I personally think that the Master Ginny was actually a high level oh, mate, practitioner Ma yeah. of, of Ma the Master dark Ginny arts. Master Ginny was quite clearly like what was it third or fourth down from mate, the He was the, the, his I, 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 who else could just stroll into Buckingham Palace un Ma uninvited? Bro, Master Ginny's title was so long and illustrious, I can't even memorise it. And I've tried like thirty three uh, times. He's a grand fucking. Um, he's a grand wizard, Ken but, he's a, but his role was within the uh, night of the the illustrious uh, equestrian order of Saint Gregory the Great. Dude was born yeah. on Halloween. Can I just CG. can I just point out, Lance, as well, why why um, why you're on that subject? Like it does all link back to what we were talking about earlier about the controlled aspect and the events and the cognitive dissonance of Sorry. of the public. Because if they can distort what the idea of a paedophile is and make people believe that this is somebody who just watches child pornography in their basement, when uh, after we're done with this section, I'll present to you the statistics that will show you beyond a shadow of a doubt that this just is not the case most of these working networks you know and that's just on, on a child and, abuse and they're, they're like, they look normal in the face of the public this Th these are not way. so you're saying these are not lone wolf perverts well let's use Jimmy Savile as, as an example oh, he is because a um, you, he, I, you know, I think Jimmy Savile's a I, unique example that, that's the unfortunate oh, thing he's a pretty good the prime example the <laughs> yeah. thing, so uh, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Savile right Jimmy Savile he, he when he was younger sort of like 20s and in his 20s and 30s he used to be in a group of there was about six or eight of them and he he was actually a, a fairly middle range not i'm not I, I personally think he was the fucking grand wizard for the uh for the royal family but that's a, a whole other story <laughs> but there's the i mean for in in people like survivors that have talked about um when they were raped or abused by Jimmy Savile and the rest of this gang. There's a guy called um, Sidney Cook, which was way worse than Jimmy Savile. He was yeah, way Sydney worse. Cook is dark. Yeah. So like a lot of people yeah. don't know that. So Grandmaster, you think what? So for people to be that horrific, you think what they went through when they were kids. Yeah. What, what was their master like? Yeah. You mentioned um, and their you, family growing up. You mentioned the 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 mockery of the general public actually, Lance yeah. earlier. But um, yeah, one one of the uh, <laughs> it's it's sad but funny at the same time. Interviewing one of the survivors of Jimmy Savile, um, she she said to me, you know, the ultimate mockery of all of this is how people couldn't look 
look at that man and tell that he was a nonce, you know? Okay. It was just Yeah, I mean, so just look, look at the tracks yeah, no, 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 no. the sunglasses. The, 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 the <laughs> ultimate mockery is that, like, he literally got away with it. Yeah, and, and that was, yeah. like, his saying, like, I, oh, it was good while it lasted. Fucking like, hell, mate, he had cues of girls like George Best did. Well, uh, can you press some of the Jimmy Savile quotes that we yeah, talked about? Yeah, yeah. There? Like, <laughs> They're not know, like, even the subliminal. I mean, we talked no, about no, he subliminal openly bragged messaging. about what he was yeah. doing. Master uh, Ginny. After we get a Master Ginny in the face, I'd like to pull it back onto Ghislaine Maxwell and, and Jeffrey Epstein. Okay, no problem. 100%. I would like to, um, if, if it's okay with you, and I, and I can do that while, while he's pulling up the Jimmy Savile it, stuff. This is your show. <laughs> if, if let me tell a... you. Unbelievable. <laughs> there is another one about the girls' school. Oh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So, Jesus. Um, but yeah, but, but tying it back to the satanic ritual abuse and, you know, the how can we prove that, you know, Jimmy Savile, for instance, and this Ninth Circle are involved as, as a network and not just as lone wolves or being thrown under the bus. For me, um, the, the ultimate evidence, again, comes down to what we can factually prove. And um, Jimmy Savile, uh, it was long speculated after his death and the investigation that he was connected because he was... Uh, although a lot of his friends weren't made, you know, a lot of his, um, you know, friends that weren't obviously high up royalty and stuff when he was doing public events, none of his personal friends were a, a lot of them known to the general public. But one that sort of was, uh, was a man called Mark Trotter. And Mark Trotter uh, was also outed as uh, as a giant paedophile. This has all been proven, so we can, these aren't allegations anymore. But for years, a lot of the Jimmy Savile victims have tried to basically say that uh, Mark Trotter and other high up members of society some of which that you guys have already mentioned here today had effectively a, a pedophile ring where they were you know taking children out of these care homes abusing them uh, you know children from these cult families as well and you know when the mark trotter report was finally released um, you know, or was finally concluded. It was never actually released to the general public. Oh, what a they surprise. Conce they concealed a lot of it, which I know a lot of your listeners will find absolutely, uh, you know, hard to believe. But uh, what we do know from the Freedom of Information was that there were over 500 cases of HIV positive children that were linked to Mark Trotter. Um, only 47 of these children were found. Many of them had already come forward as Jimmy Savile victims as well and victims of this cult. So, uh, you know, um, uh, whether you believe so that... So you're saying Master was... Jimmy might have, HIV, might have had HIV as well? Well, when, as, as I said, only 47, only 47 of these people that were HIV children that were abused by this cult, you know that the were found were actually found leaving 450 people according to this inquiry um, who were abused as children by either jimmy savile mark trotter or a combination of elite paedophiles walking around with hiv that may not even know that they they have it uh this was brought up by an activist called angie new uh, Angie does great work talking about social services, which I, I promise, guys, I really don't have that much more. But I will. I, I will just want to talk, no, move no, on to no, talking no, about no, in a little no, bit. I'm, Joe, I want to see you are doing. No worries to us. Um, but yeah, Angie is a fantastic campaigner, and I, again, an interview. Uh, I, I've interviewed Angie and had her on my show. She does great work in people whose children have been unfairly taken by social services. But she actually, um, you know, uh, finally after writing and d d doing, you know, going through all the proper channels. Uh, you know, effectively managed to get an order in place where it could be discussed in court for Jimmy Savile's body to be exhumed for wow. an HIV wow. test Whoa. for this, yeah, you know, connection nice, to be yeah. made between him and Mark Trotter. Because by this point, we already knew that Mark Trotter, you know, had connections with MPs and celebrities. And, you know, this could have effectively proven a satanic cult within the yeah. UK. Yeah, through that. What that's, what I, that's the thought I was thinking about, about Jimmy Savile having it. What, was hap what happened three days after the, this order was signed? Jimmy Savile's family, the, the remaining family that he did have, exhumed his body and cremated it. Fuck. Getting rid of any evidence. Oh, right. Well, and, but the official story was because um, where he was buried in Leeds, he was buried at 45 degrees, right? So we could yeah. look over the city. Somebody mentioned that in the chat earlier. Probably buried at 33 degrees, if we know Jimmy Savile. We've got um, a great comment here from Clara Warren. Uh, she says 10,000 children went missing from care in 2019. 
10,000. I'm glad you brought it up, right? Worldwide, more children go missing from care than any other place. Well, there you go. This is the most, most unsafe place for kids to be. It's, I mean, it's 100%. It's about the caregivers, man. They're the ones and, put into place. And and they don't even know what they're doing. Kind of that's the last real aspect that I wanted to talk to you guys about the kind of satanic ritual abuse thing was, you know, we have the kind of elites at the top that we've talked about, that very small <coughs> triangle of whether they be bloodline elites or links to those very high up elites yeah um you know below that we've got the faces of the elite or the puppets as we were calling them earlier you know the celebs and politicians the tv and media the justice system many of who get there through positions of of puppetry as we talked about um you know they're groomed for those positions and the ones from the general public who do make it there make it there through their malleable person um you know personalities um but really at the base of it people will say okay uh, the, the the question left really to answer is, you know, how do children get into satanic ritual abuse from the general public? Uh, you know, and, well, and I reckon I reckon very few do. If yeah. I'm honest, I think most of them come through like what you guys are talking about earlier, the about family network, through the family network, and others through the care network. Well, th <clears throat> this can be this can be split, you know, pretty sort of evenly three ways in the children that end up either being used for the puppetry purposes yeah. and the grooming or the rituals and the ritual abuse. Uh, one, as we've already talked about, which is the cult families and people connected to the cult families. If you're connected to a cult family or you're bought in, you're usually done through some form of religious sect or ideology. And, and then it's we, normal to the children, so it's no different. Like those, like, like you're speaking about the kids in, in the, uh, Hampstead. the Hampstead thing. A hundred percent. Even when yeah, they... Yeah, 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 but they were brought up with it. Uh, well, not only that, and also there was... I watched an interview years ago with a lady who was, who'd gone through it. She was about 28-ish. She was like, yeah, well, I don't see really what, what the fuss is about. Yeah, because for them it's as normal as going no, to church yeah, on and, a Sunday. And the thing is, admitting that it's bad means your whole life is fucking wrong. You know, yeah. you know earlier, though, how I was saying to you about fucking distorting the idea of what a paedophile is and how they use it as controlled distraction. You know, it, it, it it's very it, it, it's very similar. You know, they're... Sorry, guys. No, so carry on. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very similar there uh, as well, like like you said. But um, we've got the, as I said, uh, we've got the cult families and the people that do make it there through for those purposes. Um, we've also got social services, which was an area that I wanted to touch on. Yes, let's do that, mate. Uh, that's very um, important. If that's okay. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, which is another uh, way how children get into SRA. Uh, Incentive-based schemes. Um, again, I'm going to run through some statistics to finish off, but we know that roughly each child that gets taken away from a council is, you know, worth about £30,000 to that Every council. Matters, eh? So again, the incentive is not to keep children with families or you know to keep children you know or to help out you know you lower see, income you can see globally family is not on the agenda of course um there's a fantastic case um worker former foster worker of 27 years if people want to check more into this subject uh called alison hocking who's doing great work in showing us how uh children end up in sra through the social system and as i said i'm going to touch on uh, the social services again at the end with the statistics uh but the third way uh, so we've got the cult families and social services but the third and final way which is obviously how i ended up in this situation uh, is through what I call black market corruption or ignorance and this can be through the child porn network this can be through sex trafficking or prostitution and this can be through uh, the child sl slave and bride market as well which you know has a, has a massive part of it the human trafficking element you know organ harvesting as well uh, yeah. people, those are like the financial think, aspects of this that actually support the, it they're also the normalisation things like what you talk about through the porn thing yeah. I don't know if you've seen the, the interview with, with um, the, the girl. Joe Rogan interviews a woman, and she's like, she, I can't think what she does now, but she, she used to do a lot of stuff. I think she might be even like a tennis player. I can't remember now, but she's addicted to porn. Yeah. Right? And she was getting more and more into more aggressive and hardcore stuff. And, and it comes to a point where, where else do I go? 
that's it you know and it's very um uh, you know uh, if people say to me all the time how do these satanic cults run you know surely it would take funding surely it would take a network well unfortunately this black market corruption and people's ignorance to it that is a lot of how the lower levels of these cult families they run you know we hear i've heard so many stories from the generational kids about how their families would sling drugs or or alcohol or or these kind of things no one Um, no one wants to talk about how profitable for instance the snuff movie industry is that's it and that was one of the elements that featured with within my story was obviously this traumatizing factor of saying you know what way are you going to go you know are you going to be a victim all your life or are you going to be part of this look at this this one not the front of of nme the front of i should maybe not name some of these like massive global corporations that have the images of superstars who are influencing children using demonic symbols like the the eye and the, the the Baphomet images with the horns, you know, they are used almost on a daily basis from things like The Simpsons right through to Britney, you know, Britney Spears on on stage and yep. even Michael Jackson, unfortunately, you know. That's it. Psychological <coughs> inversion. Um, people will continue if they're told, you know, constantly that it's okay. You know, but it's, it's the, en- the, the, the energy village. that's doing is it's giving them the energy and the attention. That's it. Which the, is what I, I, I want to talk about that later on after you. Speak. Of course, but it's also the village raises raises the child mentality as well. People believing, oh, that person's doing it, so it, it, it's okay. And you know, people don't realise that you know the elites, the elites. If we just look at the last few years alone and this worldwide incident that's been, uh, you know. The, happened and the amount that the elite spent on psychologists just to control us and you know whether we like it or not i spoke about what the what you know living in a woke society earlier the the goods and the bads we could argue that all day long but we're living through the worst mental health crisis you oh, know right. in, NL- in history nlp has got a lot to answer for when uh, used incorrectly that's, that's it man and it, it's just it's it's a crazy uh it, it's it's an absolute crazy set set of circumstances but yeah that i hope uh, I know it's taken us. Sorry, guys. I know it's taken hey, us. Don't nearly. apologize. It's, it's, it's taken us two and a half mate, hours. Mate, mate, no, 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 two I, hours. You I, came on at half past. Two hours, mate. Two you, hours. Wait, you've covered so much. I've got to say, hours, right? That's, in my opinion, you're doing a summary for us, right? End of the day, Thank this you. is this is a potentially two to three episode conversation but what i hope is that that gives people a kind of understanding of how it works at the very top levels with the elites you know uh, controlling things through controlled distraction and influential societies you know th- controlling their puppets which are the celebs the politicians uh the tv the media and the justice system um you know how do the children get into the rituals you know uh, as we said um you know as some children get put in there for puppetry purposes and you know as i said where they where they come from you know cult families See, social services and the black also market a small corruption amount of children compared to that amount of children who are unknowingly part of those rituals you look at things like the olympics opening ceremony yeah you look at something like madonna's opening dance to her like concert who uh, involved thousands uh, of I, children globally i mean i'm going to move on to some statistics now which is great that you so you talked about that because i mean you know one of the things that i i that, that actually shocked me was you know the fact that every single day one billion images of child pornography are uploaded to the internet whether that be the dark web or you know websites linked like it i was like you know i knew that there was going to be a lot and having worked in sex trafficking and seeing those numbers it shocked me but to actually know that it's you know the production line is that is you know is on that scale i i think yeah you'd have every right to be of the belief that you know like <laughs> that it's connected so basically that is that's perfect time for me to talk about that jeffrey epstein and thing you know Ghislaine maxwell was was known where she was all the time. You're telling me that they didn't know where Jeffrey Epstein was all the time. They knew what they were doing. So the people who weren't intercepting them from the get-go are as guilty. Right? Yeah, of so course. That, that means that these, this puppet show we're watching wants to encourage the knowledge to normalise this. So the more energy we give to it, That's the, more, it. the more they get out of it. Even, even if we're talking bad about them, this is why we have to be very careful about how much energy and time we put into that. Yeah, that. What, what you just said is very important, right? Because something like the Epstein thing works on multi-levels. It works to total normies to basically break them and say, look at this that's been going on. Yeah, And then to people like us, it works on us on another level. 
because we're having conversations like this and saying, really well, look, uh-huh. like, look, at, look at the level of mockery which look is at, involved. If you do know that. the score and then they're showing you like this, it's yeah. like, what, this guy was supposed to be able to get I away with big, this? The biggest example, Lance, is Madeleine McCann. Yes. Oh, yes. And I, again, yeah, I would like me. to talk like, about... Yeah. Straight down to the Podesta Brothers, that wow. one. <laughs> do you know what, right? Those, the man even wore his T-shirt. That, that is the craziest thing ever, right? We, me and Lance have been, went to a couple of... Um, Dick the Corridor's uh, Richard talk. D. Hall for Richard anyone D. Hall, doesn't know right. Dick the Corridor right so we went to one of his little seminars <laughs> and, and uh, that man's a G no like, he, he he's, is he broke that down so well and, and he had uh, I think he was an FBI CIA voice and behaviour analyst oh wait a minute what's oh, the name God. of the guy he, that, that was so he, crazy my Peter, dad Peter, that. Th- Peter Thatchell yeah. is yeah. the name know, of the guy he, he didn't he, even know the history of the, that case so well and at the end of the at the end of it he goes yeah, I, if I was like uh, Madeline, if I was the, if I was the investigator, I'd be talking to them about the sexual abuse that like Madeline McCann's mum had gone through and Madeline McCann. Oh yes, this was one of the things that I was going to mention. I don't I don't want to get too hung up on the Madeline McCann thing because no, again, that, it's something that I could. That would be a whole episode I can, just about uh, that. Yeah, I, I can waffle on, but for me, the most compelling piece of evidence was the Gaspar family, the doctors who had holidayed with um, members of the Plaza. Uh, was it Plaza Nine, whatever it was? Um, but Player de Luz, they, was it, yeah, was it Plaza Nine? Was it originally nine, and then they changed it for to seven or whatever? But anyway, um, yeah, the the, 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 the Plaza um, Nine, yeah, who had originally holidayed with members of them before, and this these were well, you know, respected doctors in the community, people within um, their professions, and they were absolutely convinced <laughs> after a holiday that Kate and Jerry were both. You know, sexually abusing like their to children. Throw one thing in there was going to get me shot down. Well, I'm just, McCann never existed. She was just an AI image. Oh god! Again, we could cover we could cover this that, all yeah, night. Guys, I'm just going to uh, like that's what that's um, that's what human vibration said, isn't it? Yeah. Guys, going back yeah, to no, our that's what um, brought up because like, I really played on my head, and then since the, since we've been looking at the yeah, um, a digital yeah. psyop. Oh I my wanted, days! I wanted to say though, going back to um, what you were saying about Jeffrey Epstein and tying it together to answer your question, I'm completely sorry because I know I was no, waffling, but no, on a much good. smaller scale, to give you an idea of people's kind of mentality, we we occasionally work on cases with the police obviously because of the amount of records that we accumulate from survivors some survivors whether we like it or not want to go through the system and we support them in doing that if that's what they want to do and we help them create records um recently there was a case where a lot of the public in portsmouth uh were trying to get this the police to care about a, got a man called trevor mccurdy who'd skipped bail after being co- uh, convicted of paedophilia offenses and they they were campaigning they were doing a really great job with um, I even went down to support them a couple of times with a megaphone and just give out some, you know, stats on the south coast of what oh, we're, we're wow. going on with paedophiles and, and trafficking within our area. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we, the, the community, we kind of created this campaign which was called "Have You Seen This Nonce?" and we'd write that on the posters. "Have You Seen This Nonce?" and then we'd have a picture of whoever they were, and we'd go and we'd put the pictures out. And you know, one of the things that we wrote um, to our, to get t- tie it back to what you were saying on the posters was that anybody found harboring you know these people you know that would you know you're as guilty we do you know this community Mm. didn't want people to enable this kind of activity because this will never be accepted and we got you know abuse people were saying oh they're not speaking for us and blah 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 and it's like it just goes to show you it doesn't matter you know what you're campaigning for if you're campaigning for for child for child abuse and saying look you know this has historically happened to me they'll pick on your car that's just you know that that's just the way that it is oh yes oh 100 percent. my dad says there's always one idiot who ruins every party but um um, if it's okay I, i would just like to kind of finish on some statistics as Absolutely. well again well, I've been waiting for your stats because when you said that in there, I was like fucking yes let's get in there and fucking make him tell you those things <laughs> just because I know that um, uh, obviously again I, I did say that I would try and make this as relatable as possible so Lance you know e- even if the first two hours are such just chop it off and just give them this bit and this should help them relate oh no I won't be chopping anything out don't worry <laughs> but no um, yeah so we uh, again uh, I, we created a information piece called understanding satanic ritual abuse which which the main aim of it 
was to uh, effectively help the main a mainstream audience understand what satanic ritual abuse was and how it played out and some of the statistics were absolutely you know kind of mind-blowing and I, I know as i said that you love statistics and this kind of stuff like me so i thought i'd bring in some of them along for you today just for you to kind of listen to sure. and if there's anything that kind of jumps out with you guys please um as i said um everything is a learning process and i would love some some feedback from 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 you guys as well but some of the stuff we uncovered was absolutely mind-blowing as i said you know um up here in the uk alone 11 percent of all sex crimes are now made up of ritual abuse or have a ritual aspect to them uh you know it, in 2012 you know, which obviously was 11 years ago now, police data shows that at least 25 active satanic cults were operating within the country that abused children and they had absolutely no resources to deal with them. This was a police commission finding in 2012. So that just goes to show you how broken the system is within this. You know, they can't... Gosh! You know, uh, they, they struggle themselves, firstly, to define what a paedophile is and secondly, to act you know, uh, uh, upon that when they do find these. Um, less than 20 countries worldwide have ever gained a conviction for a ritual offence. Um, you know, uh, r reports from global law enforcement cite a 1,600% a, a increase in SRA allegations since 2017. So that's in the last five years alone. Like a lot of people... Are, what, 1,000%? A 1,600%. So that, let's get this. That's right. That's a 16-fold increase. Is indeed. That, that could purely... Well, I'll go for a devil's advocate. That could purely... Devil's advocate, that could purely be because of the awareness is becoming of it that's true and one of the things i was going to say or is obviously for a lot of this stuff there will always be an answer and for that one of the things that you know is cited and it's my personal belief again one of the main reasons they are so keen to to smash us as conspiracy theories is because you know if one thing that a victim of ritual abuse says is true you know, if one aspect of my story, if I look you in the face and say to you that I'm, uh, you know, that I'm telling you the truth and you believe that, then you have to look at the next step and you have to look at the next step. And I generally think that there is that fear still within the, you know, within the elite that the general public do have, you know, freedom of will effectively. Well, you think this is such a horrific subject. Mm. This is such a horrific subject. And I, I think that, I mean, look what's happened in 2020 with the Soviet Union making themselves widely globally known and locking everyone down. Everyone did it. Just the peasants just followed along, didn't they, That's on, on mass. But I think this is such a horrific subject that if this was widely known, the people just wouldn't fucking stand for it. That's it. They just wouldn't because it involves children and horrific well, yeah, shit being a, like... If, if everyone in the world knew this was going on, these people would be fucking hunted down with pitchforks and like, you know. A hundred percent. You know, it, there would be a different type of hunting games. But um, yeah, I mean, even, uh, and this is, what I, this is what I'm saying. I do understand when people hear the word satanic ritual abuse, they instantly focus on the satanic elements, which I hope we've covered a bit of today. But just Definitely. bringing it down to a human level of what we can prove, you know. Do you know what? The, the Empress was talking about this when you, when you slowly spoke about it. You touched on this earlier on. And uh, I think she's right, you know. I mean, they they normalise the fact... That, okay, so when you say that... Um, when you talk about a sort of thing, you say satanic or something, you instantly see things like devil or that, that sort of stuff. You don't People really, in robes and shit yeah, around yeah. the fire. You consider yeah. it to be really what it is. And that's a really easy way for them to cover up what they're doing and normalise it slightly. That's exactly what I, you know, that's basically the first thing we talked about was, you know, just breaking down that definition to a way that people can understand it and, you know, separating from, you know, because there is plenty of room to manoeuvre within the things that we think and historical research. But I We're think, talking about a broad spectrum at the end of the day. I, I think if people like me and you, uh, you know, can sit down and have this conversation, then, you know, it makes it a lot more relatable to other people, you know, move, you know, going on to other things that we can improve you know 2017 canadian center for child protection uncovered an interconnected paedophile ring that were trading child pornography uh this had high level uh links 
uh, this had high level links to people in positions of power, uh, people high up members of uh, celebrities, politicians, that kind of thing. There were, in fact, there were over 300 interviews conducted, including uh, accusations, and no, you know, th there was no, no arrests ever made. My only concern with with, with that, with with the results that you're getting, for example, like not you, but mm. the, the, the movement in total, is that it does normalise it on a different level for them. This is the thing that we've talked about <clears throat> before, that by us de-occulting what's going on, we have to we have to realise that these master psychologists are obviously a few centuries ahead of us, even the people who are adepts. Everything that's going on now has been accounted for, and in a way, this is why we have a very big responsibility to do this correctly. Which is why I think the most important thing is the, the result, you know, the result. Which we're looking for is like, for example, um, the consequence, the punishment, well, the prison term. Well, yeah. what, we're, what we're looking for, first of all, first principles, is we're looking for a proper understanding. Yeah, absolutely. Because, they, because this, this, out of all of the subjects, this is the one that is most misunderstood. It's been the one that's been most inverted. It's the most horrific, right? But yet, by making it less horrific, is more horrific, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, like, I hope that, that, like I said earlier on, I, I think that's why what we're doing tonight is important. Yeah, absolutely. We are going into detail about the who, the what, the why, and the how, but we're not dwelling on the unnecessarily disturbing details of it. You know, we're talking about levels of energetics. We're talking about levels of exchange, um, about, you know, the, the mechanics, yeah. um, the modus operandi, the network, the infrastructure, exactly. um, how this works, airtime, the economy like, what, what of it. What airtime are you going to give it? you know, in life. What airtime are we allowing that to have in our life and other people's lives that we influence and affect and, and, <laughs> and influence and affect us now? And what uh, what type of airtime is it? We could have done a very different show about yeah. this. If we, <laughs> yeah, let's get this straight, Joe, you know. We, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, we, could uh, have done the same, we could have done the same show as all the research things that we've done, that all of us have done in the, in the past, like, God knows how many years, which is horrible, that, that, that information. Mate, this yeah, research yeah. changed me. Yeah, it literally yeah, changed. Sad, you know, sadly, we we and and obviously, you know, Joe has been a victim of this stuff. You know, and us three, we have we've done the dark night of the soul of this research, and 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 so has my other half, who's watching right now in the green room. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. When, for better or worse, I opened her eyes to this stuff, um, and it does change you. Um, and you know what we're trying to do tonight is to give people an understanding of it without you of having to do the rolling your elbows up work that me and, and the two Andes have done here, let alone I mean, Joe, Joe's gone what, what, what's happened it? to Joe, yeah. you know, you know, and, and you know, and, and luckily he can come here tonight and he can tell his story and share it with you. And we can, we can talk about it in a lighthearted yeah. manner. I'd, I'd like this to is also, very powerful. Like mate. You, uh, for the guy, sorry, I want to, I'd like to, for the guys who don't really know and haven't looked into this so much, Leave it a little while. Don't go when we finish our show to go straight on to the net and look yeah. into the stuff. Fuck me, you'll be up for days. Yeah, don't start <laughs> days. heavily rabbit hole in this. Don't, don't yeah. think we're setting you any homework after this. We're, we're, this is a tour de force tonight that's been very controlled with stabilizers on. Yeah, I mean, as well, though, as well, that there is that aspect of it. Like those of us who have been involved in the industry, you know, we know that things don't get there by chance unfortunately you know it's been a big part of what we've discussed today you know and I, I i don't mean to keep banging on about it but even at the the sort of lowest levels of this if you're looking around and thinking you know can i trust the people in charge or you know and and the answer's no then Fuck what, no. what is the harm of of looking into this i mean i, I i've said it before but you know, my experiences and the things that have happened to me, plus the work that I've done, leave me in absolutely no doubt that satanic paedophiles run this world. But at yeah. the same at the same time, you know, I never believe in cutting, you know, the man on the street off because I think the moment that we do that is the moment that we've already lost the battle yeah, because they've allowed us to become 100%. divided. So yeah, knowledge I, is power. I, I get just, this is what I, the, yeah, I get completely what you're saying because sometimes <clears throat> it is a situation of like, oh, if I don't care who who will kind of thing. But I have I've said this before, you know, uh, that I think fate puts you where you need to be. And Lance, probably, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, I'm, I, I don't want to speak for you, but, um, you know, I feel very much as though had I have gone down the traditional mainstream 
truth a route and i don't want to get too tied up in this conversation but uh, i probably could be sat here right now with a platform with you know thousands and thousands of views but i you know i have to stay true to what i am and i believe that fate puts you where you are and if i can as a victim of satanic ritual abuse speak out uh, about this and you know that is worth more than than any amount of followers and just being able to come on platforms like this, like you guys who are doing such a great job of asking these difficult questions in such a great way. Um, yeah, for me, that is a hundred percent worth it. So yeah, I do get what you're saying. It's difficult yeah, no. to understand why people care, but there is that aspect sometimes of if I don't, who, who no. will kind of thing, <laughs> you know, thing uh, what you just care, said man. is very real, Joe. And, and, that, and, that, and, and you're absolutely right. And a hundred percent, I'm, you know, if I wanted to, <laughs> make sure that I had a hundred thousand subscribers and that's what this, the reason we were doing this, then yeah, we would be presenting something real. What we're presenting here is nothing but. I mean, I, I'm just going to, I just want to try, I just want to try with the liquid metal rabbit. So it's, it's great what you're doing, Joe, going around and speaking on different platforms and stuff. I mean, the way I, the way I look at this is if you look at society, we all know society just wants to be like a cult and the vast majority of them just follow just do what they're told or whatever, and they, they just follow the masses. So for me, it's a percentage game. It's a simple number of maths. The more people that know about this, if there's, say, 75% of the population know about this, the other 25 followers will just fucking just adapt it anyway well, because that's what they do. They I'd just like follow the masses. Get, get, they'll get outbred at some point. Well, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> but I mean, like Joe going around speaking and other people speaking out about satanic ritual abuse the more people that are doing this and going on the more in, channels in, in the manner that he, Joe's doing it in that, that's, yeah. that was my point you see that, this is the correct way of addressing the situation 100% yeah yeah I mean I've, there's there's loads of people in America who I've looked into like survivors of this there's a um, on Mark Passio's website I think it's, it's I think it's podcast number 17 he's got a survivor of um satanic ritual abuse and he goes into depth about some of the stuff that he was exposed to when he was a child and it's fucking horrendous man yeah. Yeah. Um, his name's Jay Parker if you want to look up Jay Parker in, um, you could look at that as like a way of him dealing with what's happened to him but I think that's obviously very deeply personal yeah I mean he does his own podcast now and he's got his own website and stuff like that I mean but the, the more people like you Joe who are going around speaking yeah. on the more platforms the more this gets exposed because let's be honest this is never going to come out on BBC no, at fucking 9 o'clock news is it no, do you know, do you know what, how it does come out on BBC and um, things like TED Talks and um, you know they normalise it in a different way. Yeah, they'll be trying to justify yeah. it. Holy shit, man. Well, they, we've already seen that with the, what's the, they that's now what call a paedophile and M, is it a map? Map. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Minor, attractive yeah. Person. minor attractive person. Could, so they're this, already like kind of um, trying to swing it like it's a, a they, mental disorder they, they, or some they kind of shit. A, a well-to-do lady on a stage for a really well-known podcast I've just mentioned a second ago, giving you a fictitious scenario of this poor man who, who finds himself attracted he, to the yeah, I've, I've, I've seen he's not yeah, an yeah, abuser psychological inversion exactly yeah, what we exactly were talking what about earlier if you put something in the you know uh, t 15 years ago I mean even if you still talk to our parents generation about the trans issue many of them are incredibly uncomfortable talking about it because they don't understand it because this is something that effectively you know was put in front of people until it was made normal and, it, mm. and it, you know it's very similar um, you know if you believe the kind of the, the, the right leaning conspiracies, many will tell you that the eventual goal is to legalize paedophilia. Um, yeah, but they've already I, put it into uh, a normalization category, PD. This is it. I, I don't think that they, I, I think that they want to do, what, what they want to do is normalize it within society, but I think that they don't, you know, it, they don't have any issue with operating within, you know, silence as, as they do. Yeah. In fact, I think silence is a great tool, you know, uh, uh, for them, for this satanic ritual abuse. But yeah, I mean, um, the uh, go, going back to what you were saying earlier, like um, the, the, about like working with, you know, different victims and stuff like that is, you know, you kind of see, uh, a, 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 as I was saying to Lance, like the different aspects of this and relating it to like, say, for the last three years and the sort of worldwide incident that we've been having that shall not be named on this program. Um, uh, I mentioned earlier about like the tools of the abuser, about how it was, you know, very easy for, you know, somebody who'd suffered abuse like myself to see, you know, the, the silence, the fear, the isolation, but the pandemic, you know, we had, 
you know, victims writing to us before on the podcast because that was what, we, like I said, that was what we were specialising in. The pandemic extenuated that because all of a sudden I think that there were victims of a different kind and you talked about the mental health crisis um, earlier, but, and, you know, even people who, uh, you know, a big element of satanic ritual abuse is, as I said, this element of did this happen to me? You know, will anybody believe me if I tell the story? And this almost kind of um, memory memories coming back to you, which isn't again a a massive part. Uh, you know, isn't a, a massive contradiction with what we see with survivors who report anyway of sexual abuse. Many of them come back to report but even um with with the masks i mean um am i allowed to say that word yeah the, yeah, face, yeah, co- yeah. the yeah, face coverings um you know the, just the, the uh, so many survivors writing to me just say how offensive they found it and how uncomfortable it made me feel as a survivor knowing that somebody who had been through something like i had been through maybe in a pos- uh, in a position uh, where they would be forced into wearing one of these, uh, you know, and wouldn't like we have have the the kind of strength to be able to turn around and say no, and then put them in a position where mm. they may be triggered. That um, sure. w- you know, you know would keep about me that up. Aspects of the masks. Yeah. And it um it, so yeah I mean there was I, lots I actually of... I actually I actually did I'm not going to lie I did use that once to to shake someone up when I was feeling a little bit antag- antagonistic in the in the early days of the Soviet Union before I well, I I'd just stopped using the stupid exemption card this was right at the start and they said why are you exempt I said have you ever been bound and gagged in a in a in a breaking in a in a house robbery Jesus yeah where you've been left to piss and shit yourself for two days. Has, it, has that ever happened to you? Where someone's covered your face, and I got right up in the guy's face. Big, this big guy. Did you cover his face? No, I didn't cover <laughs> his face. But I said, "Has that ever happened to you, bruv?" And he's like, "No, no." I said, "Then you don't know what the fuck you're talking about." And he just yeah. walked off. Obviously, that hasn't happened to me. But what are you going to say but, to that if somebody? You know what I mean? If, uh, but but for, is, he, that, for all that's he knows, a really good example of how you can maybe trigger thought in their brains. Yeah, that was a conscious know? shock. I delivered a conscious shock directly into that guy's brain. Mm. I yeah, think. you know, I could have been a female that that could have literally happened to, or a male that could happen to anyone. That can happen to the biggest, strongest guy. Put someone bust into your house in the middle of the night with a balaclava on, ties you and your family up, beats the shit out of you, abuses you, steals everything you've got, and leaves you there tied up until someone finds you three or four days later. Imagine that, and then yeah. and then you're told you've got to wear a mask to stop killing everyone's granny. It's, it's mad. So many aspects of it were just so. Satanic. Yeah, it's satanic. And yeah. so that's why when... Um, you the largest know, example of global satanic ritual abuse ever. This is it. So when people say to me, you know, how do you know that these events, uh, what we talked about earlier, these false flag events or, or whatever you want to call them, are connected with obviously the satanic ritual abuse and i say it's a lot like when we meet another survivor you know you know as as a survivor of satanic ritual abuse when someone's telling the truth it's just this connection that we, we have you know and it's very similar you know once you've been a victim of abuse you know so many of us for a long time throughout our life who had been thinking to ourselves the world I don't see the world the same way as my brother, my sister, my mum, my dad, my nan, my granddad. All of a sudden, we're almost triggered into speaking out about this. And, you know, again, you know, you mentioned earlier about bravery, but I don't think that as, uh, you know, with our types of personalities and being the type of people that we were, that bravery really came into it. I just don't think there was an option. No, no, really. no, no. That's you what know, I always said. There was, was there was it. no other, there was no choice about this happening. It was like it was more of a case of I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I hadn't have done something along these lines. Yeah. And you know, luckily, it, my you know my vision with the help of my friends and my team um, was has has been realised, and now we've got a media platform where we can have these type of conversations and have people we, like Joe on. Yeah, exactly. Look, look, this is this is this is this is the lemonade we, stand. We, we tried. We we have tried. Like you know, for example, think about our methods in the past. Talking to mates. Yeah. Okay. Some mates go with it for a little while, and then other mates like they start to brand you with the crazy hat. And then you know, we tried it through releasing music, and it's flooded in a market of satanic satanic abusers anyway you know so it's not, not maybe not let, let's media. be real me and Omar Beats have been at this for many years 
Um, uh, you know, as well as Andy PG, has been researching for many years. Um, we've well, it was nine eleven, mate, I, it, that woke me up. We've been, we've been, you know, at after parties in smoking areas, in VIP rooms, backstage. At any opportunity where someone's lending us an ear when they want to have small talk, we've been going in about this stuff for years. People who are fucked on pills are the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, hundred percent. One that, billion. That synthetically I'll, extended I'll, I'll, um, a, a attention span can sometimes be uh, weaponized yeah. for good use. I, I want to uh, actually sort of switch the conversation a little bit. I want to ask Jay. So. You deal with this a lot every day. You're seeing a lot of people. You're taking a lot of information and energy in. And do you make sure? Do you sort of account? Okay, right. So I've spent. Okay, it's very sort of like Monday when I've spent like 50 hours this week looking at this particular subject. Do you have your own coping mechanisms to keep yourself in the right direction of positivity? Like a countermeasure. A countermeasure. Um, you know. I'll as I mentioned earlier, you know, part of this whole process for me was, you know, kind of having a breakdown and being at the lowest possible kind of point. So then I could build myself back up. And, you know, I'm not proud, um, you know, in any way of some of the things that I've done previously and the way that I've treated people. But I think that, um, you know, getting good counseling and advice and you know ha making sure that you have a decent network of people around you that support you because one of the reasons that you know once I'd put all the pieces together to understand what satanic ritual abuse was and what had happened to me as a child um you know and then obviously re reliving that you know the um uh, you know part of that process has been you know understanding that i am not necessarily my my trauma but my but that it's just something that that kind of happened to me so getting good counseling and, and advice and having a network and also i think um uh, understanding that a lot of victims fall into whether it be drink drugs i, I was depression. just gonna say that that yeah and they you know the people who fall who come into sra through the trafficking networks through the black market they may have already been exposed to that kind of stuff and that might have actually been a gateway to facilitate them into these networks 100 percent. Right? we've got such a throwaway society where we just look at these people on the street and we don't realize that everybody really is just you know a couple of decisions away from being that person you know it, it's so quick to judge an addict or to judge somebody who's going through you know bad mental health when in reality you know um as i said sometimes it's about asking the questions why and unfortunately a lot of the time uh, you have to look at yourself and as sure. i said i was a very self-destructive person and uh, you know I've spent uh, uh, you know I, I hope that I, I can you know redeem some of that action and some of the hurt that I was feeling and projected onto other people by as I said just doing what I'm doing and continuing well, to, to fair, expose man, the what, satanic what ritual abuse is, and it's honorable and you know no, it, it really thank is you, man. What, what, thank what, you what, what I was, I was, that's a really important point we've raised what I was um, sort of more alluding to as well is for your personal self and for anyone else who's who's going through any any level of sort of like negative feelings about themselves and sort of their own life, it's very important when you start to move forward away from that and you know that it isn't you, it's something that you just happen to have gone through. And that's a really... It's, it's, about, it's, about, it. it's actually you. an act of separation. Yeah. Mm. So the, you can separate next, yourself from the experience, mm. like you said. You can actually you know, talk about mm. that in the past tense. Yeah, but the um, next step, would that be to like fill your life with other things which have got nothing to do with that? Like, for example, tennis with a group of mates you've never really met, no, mm. don't know nothing about you, so then you can fully move away from that. And then you're still in an amazing position where you've got all this knowledge and experience to help guide others through this process. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to say, I, I've, I did touch on it earlier, you know, the uh, be, being able to work with the survivors really gave me a purpose to keep on going. But having my daughter really gave me a reason oh, to man, life changing it, having it, the kids, it, you, it resets you know, everything. A hundred percent. It gave me a reason to want to live. <laughs> and I think that those two things together, yeah, you sure. know, uh, being able to spend all, all of a sudden 
you know, uh, my mum actually, she she uh, she used to say during the uh, the worldwide event that she was glad that I I actually had a daughter because if I hadn't have had a daughter by then, I probably would have been one of these loonies gluing themselves to the M25 in protest or something. <laughs> and, you know, she's not wrong, like chaining myself to Buckingham Palace because I think having a child makes you want to come home at the end of the day. And I think that it resets your priorities in a way that only parents can understand. And I know there's people who probably dislike kids listening to this thinking. My mum just wanted me to get back to MC and vomit. <laughs> she's like, I just wish you could go back at the boxing shows or get back on the mic so you weren't doing all this nonsense. Yeah. Then she kept, yeah, then she came to Ra Treat and then she's like, oh, Wait a minute. This whole pe- all these people. This is like a community. Yeah. And then, oh, maybe maybe this isn't nonsense after all. You think as well. Like, how many emails and messages have we had from people to say that, like, thank you for what we've done? Because this research can be very isolating if you haven't got anyone around you, which a wants yeah, to listen, 100%. b is like believes it. You and know. That is exactly why Rattree exists. Yeah. I mean, h- half of my family think I'm fucking insane to this point for, for looking into this stuff and talking about it and to that point exactly you know like uh, like i said you know many people who do fall victim to satanic ritual abuse who aren't part of these cult families or groomed for other reasons you know don't make it through and i can't honestly sit here with my hand on my heart and tell you that if it wasn't for my family and like the the network around me that i i would have survived this mm. you know it it takes a lot from you and eats away a lot of you as as a survivor but that's um you know that that's why another reason why i'm so thankful to platforms like this for having this conversation because you know you guys could have you know easily like like you said just said no this wasn't something that you 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 know you you wanted to cover so to have me here i i I do really appreciate that the hardest thing for things like sra and stuff which is like I don't think niche. I don't really know how to describe. Not that common in, like the you know, it's up until recently. It's not that common. He spoke about not that common. We've known about, you know. It's even harder for someone to say that because I can't even compute what the thought processes would happen of how you would ex- start to explain that to someone. Yeah. You know, especially <laughs> the, with the depth of it <clears throat> Fuck, man. as well, and, and like the levels that it goes to. Like, yeah, listen, you, we can have researchers come and talk about this all day, but you know, Joe has personal experience yeah. of this. Well, he's come here to the studio, shared, not only shared his personal experience with us, he's also actually got a serious. I'm, I'm not being funny, mate. I've never seen anyone actually do a, 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 such a detailed presentation into all the different aspects and the structure yeah, of, 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 of SRA. <laughs> Show I mean, your graph for the camera. This is what yeah, well, I think we can, we can see. I'll just I put this, this camera view on here. Look, we can see all Joe's notes. These are very detailed notes down here. Yeah, Look at everything. Thank you. man's got like, like, a, like a protein graph. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really didn't. Did want you use I... a protractor and a set square to make those notes? Oh, are you... Uh, Am I allowed to say I used the edge of my cannabis box because I didn't have a ruler? <laughs> what else would you be using? <laughs> but now you can tell this guy and this man of an artist. So now, <laughs> the beautiful, move, beautiful contrasting like... coloured detail. Notes, I know it's man. a coloured it's, chart. It's, but can you see the prism he's got there? The thing is, <laughs> right? You know, people will people will will say on that. You know that you don't have anything to prove to anybody and you know this is a subject that people will either believe you or you won't but imagine you know going through that already struggling you know in an era where i think a lot of us remember what it was like you know if you were branded homosexual at school when uh, you know we went to school unfortunately i've I've, again i've said this before but mental health wasn't where it is now and i do wish that oh, i went know, to an was... all boys grammar school an accusation of homosexuality you'd get beaten up for like two weeks yeah i, I and, and I, no one came to save you there back. was no counselors there was no there was no support network there was no like, an, anti-triggering that room that was it yeah back that was against the walls building lads. shit back then that that was it you know like it was it was all about you know boys don't cry and uh, you know although mental health has a long way to go as we've already discussed you know i do kind of um you know, I, I I do wish that it had been. You know, we can criticise those times as much as we want when yeah. men were told to man up and don't cry. And listen, and I'm not one of those people. I'm a very, I'm a real advocate that it takes a real man to show their emotions. Mm. When I feel passionate about something, I'll cry in front of anyone. I don't give a fuck. Said. But there is something to be said for those times. There was less people who were 
in absolute bits claiming they have mental health issues. 100%. Yeah, sure. I don't care yes. what anybody says. I called this 10 or 15 years ago and I started, when everyone started to notice, when, maybe 10 years ago when, when we were all first online a lot and people said, kept, oh, mental health, mental health. And I was like, I wonder if this push for mental health issues has got anything to do with the pharmaceutical companies because they're, 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 you think how many people have been stuck on SSRIs and oh, shit like SSRIs, that? SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right? Those drugs like your Xanax and mm. your Valiums and all that, they they cause the, the thing that they're trying yeah. to fix. Well, they don't. So it's like you can you can thank the um, the DSM for that. And yeah. if you look into mate, the, we oh, were talking about this how long ago? Oh no, mate, I know that yeah. that was horrific when we were learning about that. Mate. Anyway, yeah. but, right. So you you got to look at facts for a reason right that's the reason why you do actually I, it's not saying you have to prove yourself people need to see the facts to it to be believable for them yeah right? and statistics even though the statistics can be fudged by certain members of the old uh covid union uh, oh, yeah. the statistics when, when presented and researched properly uh, fucking undeniable mate and then you, you know uh, and taking it back to your point and answering your question you know imagine that you know you obviously go through that as a child you're effectively told by the court system you know we we don't believe you or we yeah, can't include lying. your story lying, um you have all of this fear of who you are full, full of all, all um, of anxiety I'm, I'm angry, I can imagine. yeah you know, so taking it back to the mental health thing mm. you go to overlook into america with all those school shootings and you look at the chemical that pretty much 100% of the people have the undertaken. The common denominator. The common oh, denominator yes. is a pharmaceutical drug, which they were given because they were told they're mental. It's got alp alpaline at the end. Whatever whatever <laughs> it says at the start, it's got a, a piline at the end, like trazepine or something like one of those ones. It, it's always all of those um, high or, school shooters were without doubt on some kind of pain or many, a pan yeah. a pan or a dactyl a pan a pan like a pan a tactile pterodactyl pterodactyl can we just get on the same level people even if we can't all agree on stuff that we're just going to stop messing around with kids whether it be fiddling them or giving them medications or I mean, pumping them full of hormones really I mean recently, what yeah. is Asking this if they want to change their sex when they're five years what old what is this obsession like, well we know what the oh, obsession shit. is this, it's this, the pharmaceutical this industry right, so you talked about pineal gland earlier on yeah mm. right so do you know the actual purpose, apart from the release of into there, which is I'm now starting to look into whether that is a implemented common misconception. I don't want to upset the whole of the people listening. <laughs> I've, I'm on the, on the understanding at the moment that it is what gives you testosterone as a man and, it's, and it starts to, like it separates man and a woman basically into their... Into well, their the pineal gland. Yeah. Right, you, when you when you go through puberty, your pineal gland is then you, you know the it's all finally finishing, and you get this boost of testosterone through our food and the salts and things that's deposited. You know, whether you want to believe that or not, all this chemical shit we eat does have an effect on our blood system. The pineal gland is part of that blood system. Wow! So if you're so if you have a calcified pineal 50 gland, fifty years down the line from when they start to introduce you with this food, you've got a massive transgender agenda moving into a transhumanistic agenda. Well, we've all, we, we all basically agree that the trans, trans human trans agenda is one and the same thing, that the, the trans yeah, agenda is it, a precursor it, yeah. for the transhuman agenda. So it would make sense if you've been deliberately calcifying people's pineal glands so that when they reach to puberty, the one thing that denotes whether you're pumping out a flood dose of estrogen or testosterone is basically I, screwed. I think it's actually testosterone. I'm not sure if I'm not being a... You know, personally knows about that fully the, the basic <coughs> research I've done on that is it looks like it's more of a male thing to push you towards the testosterone which is why some girls have more testosterone than others you know it's, right <coughs> it's a crazy conversation but again you know it's moving again you, you, you know uh, at the top of this we said how is this connected but it even goes oh back, it's all connected it, it all goes back to this scientific and psychological abuse that's not only perpetrated on the children that that you know face this ritual abuse but also as i said on the public I, I, yeah. in general false information uh, which leads to like the sheep making it real a hundred percent i i mean um 
yeah, I, I, if you guys don't mind, do you mind if I just go through a few more like, facts? Yeah, you crack on, can, Yeah, crack on. we can crack them on, and you're right. I did draw my, uh, I did draw my diagrams, but to be honest with you... No, the cu- I love the fact you've done that, right? Because that's what I do when I'm trying to understand something a bit deeper. That's it. Yeah, so I know Lance does that, and I'm pretty sure Andy has done that when he was researching... That horrific shit that went on over in America as well. There's just nothing like holding yeah. pens and paper like in your hand and being able to. I find to it goes into your brain, but if you write yeah. down or draw whatever, it goes into you, you and absorb it. It helps it you understand things like timelines and the connectivity of it, and then you start to realize it's the massive fucking web. A hundred percent. But yeah, the. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the fact that over half of SRA victims. Uh, say that the abuse began before the age of four years old because a lot of people ask you know obviously uh, about how young this starts and we have actually had some cases uh, i.e Jeanette Archer who works closely with me in the SRA team who say that this was basically happening from as long as she can remember you know I mean the 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 brain the, the, the physical structure of the brain and how it's made up is is a very susceptible state up to the age of six that's why a lot of these death cults who who do the satanic ritual abuse, they do it to very young children before the age of six because it's then easier to whatever outcome they're trying the, to hope the, for, whether the, a mind control peasant uh, or a sex field. slave or whatever. A hundred percent. The auric field is right. still totally intact and by the age of four And as also, well. you're, if, you, if you look at the psychology of uh, the development of a child, you've already formed your baseline morals and opinions by that age. Yeah. 100%. Which are very difficult to shift. Yeah. Yeah. I might go for a little titter at 13, you know, calling people horrible names and fucking changing your haircuts and shit, but <laughs> deep down your morals and boundaries, they rise back up again. Continue, Joe. Give us some more uh, some more stats. What have you got? Yeah, I, I, I was um, I, I was basically going to just say, uh, just to confirm basically what you guys said, you know, you've, um, you've got, so uh, you you know you've got survivors out there um what what one that sort of springs to mind is um it, it, it is you know Kerry Robinson yeah. and um who speaks out under the name Robin Reborn and she you know was uh, w- was very outspoken in in you know the way that the scientific community uh, as a whole kind of covered up her abuse another case is jane taylor i don't want to get too hung up on scotland because scotland is like pedophile land in in, in itself but yeah another case uh, was <laughs> yeah uh please research you know uh jimmy savile and he, again if you want to see his network of friends just see how many of them had you know high that's, level that's, estates that up a, there in scotland Master Ginny's a massive rabbit hole yeah, oh, 100%. Um, yeah, uh, t- uh, 70% of all the victims report the uh, being abused by a family member and two-thirds say in a place that they know. So just to give you an idea of what the split of numbers are between the children that come from the cult families versus the rest of us that come from the general public, as I said, about 70% seem to come through the, the cult or generational s- systems. Uh, 98, which, which was a big, you know, in one way was kind of a surprise to me, but in other ways wasn't. Um, you know, 98% of report uh, you know reported sra victims felt they weren't believed when they reported to law enforcement 98 so 98 <laughs> there's a long way to go people same amount yeah. of safe and effective in in covid 1984 so when we talk about like you know sexual abuse in general we're talking uh, you know something in the realms of you know 24 to 27 percent of women who come forward you know say that they feel believed and it's something ridiculously small between i think three and seven percent of men who say they feel believed by law enforcement so you were right this is a an area really where we can all kind of um we can all do better i think as a society in general um you know 2021 saw an 11 percent increase in social services cases featuring ritual abuse uh, over 60% of victims uh, have at some point been in care homes. So again, this ties in with what you were saying about social services. You know, why is this being, uh, I made the point earlier, why is this being, you know, run on an incentive-based scheme rather than a policy where we're trying to get children back 
with their families and help these you know low income families and it's so it it it's no surprise really that 85 percent of of these children removed for ritual purposes were from lower class backgrounds yeah uh, i'm assuming that the 15 percent, a lot of that would have been made up from again these uh richer cult families who they were the, the, they were the abusers and, and 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 the abused at the same time and that's an, that's another quite this important thing to remember that that 15 yeah. percent, if we're right about this not only are they the, 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 the generational families that are carrying out this, they're the ones holding the ceremonies, holding the daggers, they are the ones who have also been abused since childhood. A hundred percent. When we them and they like yeah. it. That's the Again, it's the transgenerational <clears throat> fad that oh, these yes. fucking weirdos do. A hundred percent. I'd like to ask you a question because you took a thought a minute ago, right? When you're watching telly and you're watching these, the, like these interviews or you like you know, for example Nicki Minaj with her 20 million personalities or Britney Spears breaking down or Madonna doing things on stage or all these celebrities in the public eye when they start to show signs do you see any SRA signs in these people um I think that having spoken with victims of various projects including you know the cult families that were used for the mk ultra purposes you know people talk a lot about triggers and different things that you know that that set them off but it is you know it is my belief as i said and talked about earlier that you know there are only really two types of people who get famous and they are the people that have faced the rigorous tests from the general public and are so dumbed down that they're willing to you know effectively um, promote whatever diversive cause that they want to and then the people that are groomed for that position and as lance said uh um, uh, the, there's a doctor who works very closely. I can't remember her name right now, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you, Lance, and we, maybe we can post it on later. But she's doing work with a lot of paedophiles at the moment and uh, on sort of not how to cure paedophilia, but if there's a way that we can get paedophiles to kind of, you know, um, re- reduce the amount of... Uh, the, the amount of offending that, that that they kind of do. And there was a purpose to what I was saying, but I completely forgotten it because I, I couldn't remember her name. It's so completely... about celebrities and... Um... And, uh, and whether they're showing symptoms. oh yeah that was that was my point the point was is that she's basically um proved through uh, you know through her uh, through her testing and through her research that you know abuse takes up to three generations to remove itself so Whoa. if this kind of psychological inversion keeps happening you know i mean take for instance you know that this is a this is a conversation that me and lance touched on a little bit earlier but if the four of us all have children and we go to a party and there is something inappropriate at that party you know um it it does take a big personality to step out and go well i'm going to remove myself from my or my child from that situation you know unfortunately what we've learned over the last three years especially is that most people will just go, oh, well, if everybody else says it's okay, it's okay. So I mean, the cult, system, cult mentality. Yeah. It's That's probably it. fine if everyone else is doing it, and especially if, and if, if, the, if, the, if the learned elders on the peasant box tell us that it's okay to do it too. 100%. And I can't really, uh, you know, and, and I can't put myself in the shoes of those, you know, celebrities or those people who are groomed for those positions. But I, you know, having heard you know from victims and interviewed victims of you know the high levels who are involved in these hunting games and this adrenochrome yeah i mean it's not uh you know a part of this is the psychological trauma of it of making them watch what happens to see if they're ready and installed for this so i mean you know you will get uh, many purposes for that whether it be you know somebody who comes in for distraction purposes in 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 my mind that's the the greta thunbergs of of the world or whether you get somebody who is groomed for a position like tony blair or, or george bush who for world changing you know, events, Boris Johnson, Donald Trump. Um, am I allowed to say him? I know yeah, he, mate, yeah, he yeah. tends to flag up. As long as you don't talk up, about the, uh, the event yeah. involving him. As but, well. um, uh, but, but yeah, I, I, and I think that that is, is sort of their purpose. And I think it's a mixture. I think some of them, yeah, have it's gone. It's a clown show. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if it's on telly, they're actors and it can be edited. Well, that that's it. And and like I said, the, the rest of it is that 
you know, when you're involved in the industry, you just understand that there are a lot of idiots who you can just pay to say things and uh, and do useful things. idiots, yeah, useful well, idiots. Like to bring us back to what I was saying about literally do or say anything. The importance of doing what you're doing, and also the importance of doing what we're doing with regards to Equinox, because and, and the rotary stuff, it brings people together to help us move forward and find new ways of life and new ways of living together properly. Would you like to come to our event in uh, Easter weekend, Joe? I'd absolutely love that, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw and, and followed the, obviously the last event. I, I was actually working on the, on, on the weekend that you guys awesome. you were doing. But I, I have to say, obviously, I've got a lot of friends within the truth movement who attended and I, I, I heard nothing but absolute glowing reports. As I said, this this whole way along, you know, I, I explained to Lance before we started this, I'm not the technology guy in like any way, shape or form. But I go by, you know, feelings that I have about people. One thing I have to say is Lance has always been straight from me from the start and I've never anything but good things about your guys work so i would, would absolutely love that guys yeah Thank mate you we'll show you a ticket mate it's going to be an excellent event so what, one 100%. thing like what it's kind of this little conversation like it, I, was, I was speaking to one of our guys i work with recently right and uh, i made a flipping comment which i actually quite regret about education systems you know about you know most people i really don't agree with the education system yet i still put my kid through it right both of them and okay, the oldest one's now 25 and he's come through and he's shining. He's actually going through his own like, um, his, own, his own like education thing in university and he's seen that it's wank, you know, to the point where he's a little bit, do I even finish my master's? Because I don't want to be part of this shit anymore. But, you know, I, I know. but, and I sort of like said, well, it's a bit selfish to, to take a kid out of the situation in, you know, in the mindset I was in at the time because you're not, we should keep this system but fucking change it for the better. And then I didn't realise he, he pulled his kid out on a choice. Now that's a ballsy fucking move yeah. to home educate your kids. Yeah, because you can get have your child take away from you now. Well, not in that, you know, you're, you're the, the long-term potential negative effects it can have, you know, that it can't socialise properly. It's a complete step away. But that's well, why that's it's important. If you pull your kid out of school, you better make sure that... That you're you, part of a community which... Well, you're either part of a community or you're ready to fucking give up a lot of your time for homeschooling or you, you're lucky enough to find a private tutor that maybe does a small class with four or five other kids with like-minded parents, which I know some people are doing, I've spoke to. Um, I mean, that, that set me on a train of thought after having that conversation with them, right, thinking, I fucking don't like this, that, that they've... Uh, over the years, I, I still convince myself of the rhetoric that they want me to convince mm. myself of. And that's something which I think maybe in the future, as a community, we should all be looking at how we can address this situation. I, I remember 100%. on one of our cu earlier custom services shows, we had, um, oh, I can't remember where, I think she was from Australia, I can't remember her name. She was a, a woman who chatted to us and she was saying that she's setting up with... It was Helen of Phoenix. Was yeah. it Helen of Phoenix? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That she was setting up a, like a, if you take your kids out of school, there's like a, 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 yeah. a homeschooling school where it's, so you're not syndicate. alone. She had a syndicate, didn't she? Yeah, there was a few parents. people in the community where they were essentially making their own I school. I do believe in Sussex, the Hope Group, which is which is Matt and uh, Sadie Single, I do believe they're doing a lot of good work around education with kids and around homeschooling. Um, I know that they were in, they, they're they getting Inspector Veg involved um, with one of their up and coming events to be teaching kids about nutrition and stuff. So it is, you know, this is this is happening, and obviously all of this stuff is a, is a natural is a natural reaction. You got JD to, Gorilla to who's doing on. a lot with kids and and running youth clubs and stuff like that. Trying to yeah, JD Gorilla is going to be doing some stuff with the youth at our next event. Nice. I mean, Sweet. yeah, I've already I've already given him in some instructions to come up with some ideas about you know how he's grid off grid. Yeah, well, many people know I used to do. I was, I was a, I'm a qualified full time youth worker. I've, I've studied it. I've run. I've done some really big things in in the my local area over over the years, which I'm quite proud of. But I moved away from it because of the the line you've got to toe. I couldn't agree with any more. Right. Hundred percent. And uh, bringing it back to SRA. Those sort of like help groups like Hope and things like that is the same thing as what you're doing for SRA. It's needed. It's, oh, need just, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is needed so badly because I know it's not an option for a lot of people to take their children out of school. Um, you well, know, everyone's which, too busy uh, running around trying to earn the money to pay for their it. shit. It's, it's hard work. A job's worth society. That's yeah. what they rely on is people, you know, thinking how am I going to pay the next bill, you know. And it'll be harder and harder the more people that go into poverty yeah. with this fucking cost of living crisis bullshit. It's, is you know people are just going to be more and more driven into poverty so it's going to be less of an option to oh, be able to do that they can, then it, it leaves less 
you know time to uh, ask the question why and i think that's why it's so important like you said to be able to teach your children and the next generation in general and have people um you know like on platforms like this to be able to say that it's okay to ask the question why because if if you know if escaping that matrix isn't a an option for you then you know you 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 have to find another way to do that but just a quick note on the schooling system because i know it's a question that like obviously people get ask a lot is how it kind of infiltrates through you know the the, the satanic ritual element kind of um, infiltrates through schools and it's effectively through what we call the Kinsey effect and some of you have probably heard of Alfred Kinsey he um, was effectively a famous psychologist and scientist and he was a very high up member of the elite and masons uh, he was a, a member of the night circle as so well. he knows the tricks of the trade he knows the tricks of the trade but this guy effectively wrote the manual on what we now call sex education and transgenderism he was Oh, was, that guy. Yeah, it, I know. I've heard it, about this guy. He was one of the people behind the 60s uh, He's a leading sex cultural revolution. Marxist. Effectively. Now, yeah. what a lot of people don't know about Kinsey is a lot of his research was conducted on children. And this guy actually used numbers that he'd taken from sex offenders in jail to effectively perpetrate on the general public to make us believe that we are more effectively satanic minded and, you know, uh, and, and coercive than you know we were led to believe and this led on to a lot of uh, again we can talk about different rabbit holes of, of of that but for me um i i have absolutely nothing again against sexual education but i just feel like that there in this ever-growing society there there has to be room to allow children to, to be kids. children i have a massive issue with sex education it's delivered to like under puberty age children yeah i i i well, I right, well with like for example like Sending, I've got nothing against transgenderism, right? I want to make that clear right now. But sending in a, a person who is transgender into a school, into a school where there's under five year olds to talk about this, disgusting, and then, and then to to like encourage them to think of themselves as another thing. You're basically no, it's actually yeah. encouraging them to question their gender. Yeah, but why instead should of being, instead of being not like. <laughs> just being like someone but why should you be held in you know why should you be held in contempt for again asking the question why it's like you know uh, uh, i may enjoy going to see a drag queen live but i understand that the content of a drag queen has a certain purpose and a certain place if we you know are a group of parents and uh, you know for instance some of the videos that are coming out of california with drag queens in libraries introducing sex toys to children if we as parents stand up and say actually Actually, we don't think that that's okay. You know, why are we White instantly labelled? Yeah, yeah, then yeah. you get called and fucking put, racist. And or... put in a group. And it, it has to be left wing versus right wing. And I said at the very top of this, um, if one thing that I hope people could take out of this conversation is that they just take that you know, left wing and right wing we, we politics did, did thing and just rip it at, and up and put it in the this bin. Is the whole because the concept of rise above. It does. It, no stops, it stops conversations like this. Um, a, 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 an example, and I promise this will be the last one because I know I've taken up enough of your guys' time and I, and I really should be getting home at some point. But um, like w one, one of the examples more recently that I'm sure some of your listeners can relate to is like, you know, the Andrew Tate thing. I mean, everybody in this mother has a fucking opinion on Andrew Tate. Now, uh, long story, Short. doesn't matter which one as long as you've got a strong opinion the, you better be, be voicing it <laughs> this is it and the the long story short of this is right, in 2000 and, um all good yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> sorry, there was a loud noise sorry about that it, that's all right in um 2016 i i uh, was uh, i i'd got to effectively again talent shows on on television are not what they seem television is never what it seems what you seem on television i think most of your listeners can understand that even shows like x factor things like that you know there's stages beforehand before what you see on television um again that's a uh, it's it's a bit of a different conversation but i ended up working with the with the x factor in in various different countries behind the scenes throughout to, from 2012 to 2015 and i was offered an opportunity effectively to uh, to enter at the last 50 stage of big brother and andrew tate was one of the people that you know was was it interviewing for big brother alongside me now don't get me wrong um you know i have absolutely no problem with andrew tate personally i can't say that that, that he was rude or horrible but 
um, this very this wasn't just like a me or you going to audition. This was somebody who was, it, it, in my mind at the time, very fame hungry and would pretty much say whatever he needed to say and do whatever he needed to do to get on yeah, talent competitions. Real. Now this does not. Now I, I've had a lot of flack recently for saying this i do not in any way negate the fact that i believe society is being emasculated 100 percent, i do 100 percent. but i worry that because the male energy i'm going to call it that because i can't really think of a an appropriate term but because the male energy is so weak at the moment my worry is that we're going to go to extremes kind of like when germany went into poverty they chose the most extreme option well it's like yeah i if, think if there wasn't a lack of masculinity characters like andrew tate wouldn't this have the opportunity it. to rise to prominence to, to set some sort of like um accelerated perverse example of what an alpha male should be this is it and my only concern is that you know, I I feel like this whole self-professed misogynist and blah blah blah. It it it's just all a bit televised, as yeah, as you said. And for for me again, um, I can't speak personally that this guy was ever horrible to me, but I just worry that sometimes in order to find the answers to things, we go to extremes. And I would hate to see again this divide between men and women only grow bigger because let's be honest um i i think society treats men and women both fucking shockingly <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely like, in, in different know, ways which are tailored to either of them but just to go back what you said about andrew tate funny funny you should mention him i met andrew tate in person in 2020 mm. in the height of the Soviet union right. out in uh bucharest in romania when i was flown out to do these mma shows and at that point he was still getting paid a few thousand dollars to fight kickboxing. Mm. Um, he had his podcast. I knew who he was from his podcast. I was like, all right, Andrew Tate, I'm Lance from Rise Above. And there's a little video of me with him. But at that point, he was still someone that was fighting and getting punched in the face to earn money. Yeah. Um, and, and everyone was like, this guy's controlled opposition. His father's <laughs> FBI. It's like, whatever you th think about Andrew Tate is kind of irrelevant because whatever he thinks... I guarantee Andrew Tate probably believes in what he's doing. He's doing yeah. whatever he can to be as successful and rich as he can possibly be. And he probably knows exactly what to say. Yeah. So flame, and, and, and what he's doing is being allowed to happen because it's probably exactly what is needed to give some negative... He's doing what he's um, told. Yeah. yeah. Well, not, not even do, he may not even be doing what he's told. He could be doing what he wants to do, but that is just what's exactly what's needed for this point in time yeah. for the perfect negative example of this, you know, um, alpha male masculinity. What toxic masculinity. Yeah, toxic. You know, literally, he is the embodiment. <laughs> Think about this. Yeah, exactly. You've nailed it, Andy PG. Toxic masculinity has been his buzzword for so long. Sorry. And who have come along? The, the ultimate epitome of toxic masculinity, Andrew Tate. I it's don't like, think wow. anyone is... Guy's a good fighter. <laughs> <laughs> mate, mate, Andrew Tate's hard as fuck. Yeah. Can't, can't fuck about it, mate. I, and, and do you know what? This is the other thing as well. You know, like having been in, involved in entertainment for as long as I have, like I, I totally see the appeal of this guy. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's a good looking guy. He's successful. Um, I, I think society in general, as I say, when, um, when we are at a point where we're searching for answers, you know these leaders come into these positions and it's very easy to follow them but yeah l like i said i just uh, i would hate it just to become another battle of men versus women because i don't i i don't think that that is is the kind of division that that we need but yeah i mean one thing is for certain is that nobody is going to like us after this radio show well, because <laughs> we left wing right wing we've yeah, upset yeah, everybody you have to upset everyone equally mate <laughs> yeah there's no more idols that's one of the right? <laughs> no more heroes hashtag no, no more heroes, heroes. yeah no but honestly guys um i i know i've said it a few times uh tonight but um you know w one of the things like just just to summarize the sra stuff you know uh, that uh, I, when i first met jeanette and at the sra team and i started to understand what you know the, the things that had happened to me one of the things that she said to me you know is that silence is their greatest tool and the only way that we are going to beat that is by speaking about it so if you know if i have to come here and and you know spend spend the evening with you guys and and break it down part by part and draw diagrams to to make sure that i don't waffle then that that's what i'm gonna do and and i i just really appreciate you guys having me and as i no, said no, we, no, we, 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 
Joe. We massively appreciate the so effort. So I just say, guys, in the, guys in the chat, if you've got a question for Joe, just put a double hashtag and then we'll see if we can get a couple of questions from um, anyone who wants something. Yeah, because in a minute we are going to have some music from our own with Beats. But if you do have a question for Joe, um, double hashtag, now is the time. Um, and Sam Carno, please can you put the links for Joe's Facebook back up? So if anyone wants to follow his excellent work, um, what he's been doing in the past and what he's going to be doing going forward, please do follow these links. Uh, Sam, if you could put those up. Thank that'd you. That'd be excellent. Um, yeah, facebook.com slash speaking out to heal, which is obviously our main SRA hub. Uh, you can find lots of information there, historical and, you know, the work that we're doing now, conferences we're attending, speeches we're giving, events we're putting on. Uh, there is a a big event which I can't speak too much about yet until the, the the details are confirmed that's coming up but we're hoping to make it one of the biggest in UK history in SRA so uh, as soon as that is obviously put together of course you guys will all get an invite as well and of course um, awesome. it, it'll be open to the general public as well but yeah as I said lots of information there including my story which is in the name the Joe Ward story and you can find out because um, as I said I, I know that there's so many different sections of things I've talked about tonight but well, I've got I've got an excellent question, and I was going to ask this if nobody else did. Wilfred Wong, ah, was Wilfred Wong set up? So yeah, I mean, um, for the for, for those who don't know, effectively, um, one of these psychologists that you know was accused eventually of pushing this false memory syndrome was Wilfred Wong. Wilfred again had worked with thousands of victims of satanic ritual abuse and um, depending on who you believe was in the process of either saving or kidnapping a child that he believed to be um, you know uh, within the grasps of satanic ritual abuse now I uh, I believe personally knowing people who know Wilfred and knowing people who were involved that day that Wilfred had every intention to save that child and i think um again through a lot of this we've always said you know look at the things that you're not allowed to talk about and wilfred has been kept under such lock and key to the point where um you know uh, people there are only a few people who are actually allowed to contact him where he is uh he was sent to jail for over 30 years for the kidnap or attempted kidnap of of this child but yeah um for me wilfred uh wilfred was getting uh, in in my opinion uh, he was mixing in the circles of people that we uh myself Jeanette and groups like us are starting to get into and some of the deeper and darker aspects of the things that we've talked about today to do with preserving the bloodlines and the things that these people will do to make sure that satanic ritual abuse stays in the silence and i think that anybody that challenges that puts their freedom at at risk and you know um uh, again uh, um you know uh, i can only speak from uh, from personal opinion but i believe that wilfred wong was set up to keep a lid on some of the things that he was beginning to uncover to do with satanic ritual abuse. I totally agree. For anyone that doesn't know, he was one of the leading researchers. Like you say, he's a doctor, so he's a psychologist. He was yeah. re he was revealing the fault the the false allegations of false memory syndrome. He was working with survivors, and he's been arrested with a child, which he has allegedly abducted. So he's mm -hmm. basically getting accused. Yeah. of what he has what been he's exposing, exposing. Yeah. so so let's put this into perspective the inverters have inverted him that's, that's it. their normal trick though yeah absolutely I, by could default list, we could list the whole load Brian Harvey I, I believe he's his yeah. like, latest thing is the, the inversion of their inversion you know so yeah the, I the mean can you start saying things they don't like why you're, you're getting attacked you break what, what do you think of Matt Atwood and his work um <sighs> Sean Atwood, sorry, yeah, Sean Atwood. Sean, yeah. Um, so uh, I obviously only know Sean from from the work that I, I, I've watched and obviously he's had my friend Jeanette Archer on, on his podcast but before previously. Uh, I, I think that we when we talked about Andrew Tate earlier, it was probably a good example of somebody who may not, 
Um, and I think Sean Atwood may fall it under this bracket as well, slightly of people who may not necessarily be being controlled by the system, but they're being used for a purpose. And I do understand why, um, you know, that can be an attractive option for people who don't want to necessarily go into the deeper subjects and they only want to touch on thing you know a comfortable cul-de-sac yeah, yeah. It, rather than than plunge balls deep into it but um you know i've always thought i've always felt like a big part of this child abuse case is just breaking down down those barriers and talking about it so really i'm thankful to anybody who is speaking out about it um like lance said earlier sometimes you know you don't have to go and see the whole village you've just got to go down the road you know just yeah. to see um uh, just to see it to find out a bit of information and it doesn't i've always uh, like i said about being friends with people who have different opinions uh, you know f from with you i'm a big fan of you know having but you know being friends with people who kind of um you know seeing things from a different point of view and just because you don't agree with somebody or you don't like somebody like I don't you know necessarily think that Andrew Tate is the best person in the world it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that he can have right opinions so there's a lot of aspects to it but mostly just thankful that some people are taking the time to speak out on this yeah. issue because it all it, it all links in and every little helps yeah it certainly does Sorry, what is that? You're saying that's a Tesco's jingle. Every little helps. <laughs> Indeed. Are we, are we are we trying to insinuate that Tesco's is involved in in, in global satanic SRA? Oh, come on, by default they probably must be. They must be creating some money off it. Right, Joe. This has been um, informative, uh, mate. You've you've left my jaw on the floor a couple of times. I just want to say a massive, massive thank you um, for coming, sharing your story, and for doing everything you're doing, mate. That's pure rise above. Thank you guys so much for having me. As I said, um, uh, and thank you to your listeners for tuning in as well. I know some of the subjects we've co we've covered today have been, you know, controversial in nature. But uh, yeah, just don't ever stop asking the question no. why, because that's that's why we're here, isn't it? <laughs> isn't yes. it? So thank you guys. Um, big up to Rise Above as well for for, for having me and Massive. please awesome, please support it's great these to have guys. You here in the studio. Support projects like this because you know there's the if we don't. You know, who will? So please keep supporting, guys. It's dirty These work, guys. but someone's got to do it. Rise above. Rise above. Generate, generate. Rise above. Extinguish fear. Rise above. Are you happy with that? Am I happy with that? What are you talking about? Listen, let's get down to business. You, you said we were going to go balls deep. We're going deeper than you could possibly imagine. This is Rise Above, baby. One, two, one, two. How are you sounding? Of freedom. How's everyone feeling on your Friday night? Sounds of the surf. This is more than lyrics, practical magics or quantum physics. Fasting and bargains with evil spirits who acquiesce to appease my critics. Infinite essence can't be diminished when the fear inside your heart is extinguished. Spell cast in Okian English, ULL the unlimited linguist. Seven names on Sumerian kings list, Nephilim ethics of Aryan pixels. Yo, mothers and witches and shamans who mix plants in the kitchen. Tied to a stake against their wishes. Dash with the contents of kerosene pitches. Burnt to a crisp, no word from a witness. Yo, we dump them in ditches, huh? Suppressing the knowledge of source. Perplexed by a powerful force. Stretching the timeline to alter the course History's homage to archontic laws Yo, I'm here to revive What they hidden and I keep it alive Sun, moon and stars and planets collide Every time I vocalise Oma Yeah, how's everyone feeling? It is Friday night and Oma Beats is in session Let's start wheeling Oi Okay, we do it like this Yo, Baphomet images, hideous sex, insidious scrimmages, tear at your flesh. Advocates limit this criminal privilege, illest and wicked is killed with finesse. Nefarious passages written for them, inglorious savages, sinister men. Deep in the dungeon, time at your friend. Oh, my beats, tell them again. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna get dark and dangerous. Yo. No contest without the adversary. Demons and angels, it's cursory. It's all colorless, reimbursing me. Adult babies, please step back. Please step back. Yo, Omar. All right, we're going in like this. Okay, yo, there's no contest without the adversary. Demons and angels, it's cursory. It's all catalyst, reimbursing me. Adult babies, back 
to the nursery. We don't fear the denying force. I'm at the seat of the iron horse. Master Lee told me the higher force. Force, force. Hold on, but I draw for the force. Like a Jedi rebel Star Wars. Hold on, when I draw, draw. Oma, make them hit the floor. Hold on, when I draw for the force. Like a Jedi rebel Star Wars. Same matter falls while fools just lay down a boat in a ten pace draw. Bringing out flows in a lyrical war. War. Yo, Oma base. It's not quick draw, McGraw, bruv. Yo, massive shout to Joe Ward. Rise above, what's the recipe? Yo, it's Oma Beats Melody. Plus double L, you know me. One whole rabbit, chop it and skin it. Separate meat from the bones, don't bin it. Yo, don't bin it. Big shout to Pollyanna, eye for an eye, that hurt. Sam Carno, God's own spirit limited. Bless you too, brother. Or sister. Okay then. Yo. Rise above, speak a manifest. A cold patch, walk uniform, alphabet. Move to battlements, towers, and parapets. If you're adamant, this is the catalyst. No mantras, crystals, or amulets. Guard your heart from swamps, contaminants. No mystical practitioners. Get more cryptic than my constituents. 33 degrees of belligerent, skilled in aprons and arcane instruments. Yeah. Masters and student affiliates. I can't even see my Rabina, it's too dark right here. Oh shit. Whoa, Corona the crown, crown, Corona the crown, crown. Corona the crown of your highness, highness, highness. Corona the crown of the highness, all the molecule inside your sinus. This ain't Wuhan bronchitis, it's the answer to medical mafia pirates. Three billion came from Obama, Dr. Fauci through Big Pharma. Move it to Wuhan, ring the alarm. It's our virus, bruv, that's karma. Bill Gates made a prediction, event 201 is not a fiction. 66 million people die for corona affliction. Let me spit some vocal wisdom, there's nothing social about a social distance. Their mind got locked in a mental prison. I hope their sentence lessens. Ha. They program fear, I shout a torch to the program here. The view from my porch, bruv, the program's clear. 2030's eight more years, that's eight more years. They roll the agenda, they put your brain in a blender. Ha. Yo, double L's real bruv, I'm not a pretender. That's right, double L's real bruv, I'm not a pretender. It's their agenda, cause the UN, they wrote the agenda. They wanna put all your brains in a blender. Big up Andy PG. Somebody spark up the flame, pass me the light. Big up Cheech McDuck. Yo, stand it, bruv. There's no misunderstanding. The landed, bruv. And the seals expanded and blanded. Lyrically outstanding. Standard, standard, standard. Yo. Alright, it's loose. It's loose. I've had a few ciders. Let's get down to business. Okay. Alright. Blood drips congealed on the dirt. Forms red mud. Are you feeling the hurt when the carnage occurs? We let the demon speak and then hang on his words. Mesmerized by the evil inside. Hypnotizing all people alive. Energizing the feeble demise. Life in the dungeon's extremely deprived and it's dark in this dungeon. Around every corner, the evil's abundant. Hope is redundant. These treacherous beings spread the dysfunction. They feed on your soul. For their lunch and get pleaded with gold or prepare for consumption. Uh, the ravenous huntsman. Right arm holds your carcass triumphant. Right arm holds your carcass triumphant. Big up all the rise above family. Remember, Ekra Knox tickets are available. Oh yeah, shit, let's have got some bars for this. Yo, yo, yo. Manifest paradox on orthodox. Manifest paradox on orthodox. Man against forth to the Ekra Knox. Manifest paradox on orthodox. Choose your avatar, let shadow box. Andy PG, bruv. Yo, yo. I look forward to the harvest moon. I saw on an ancient loom. In a ritual room, pray for midnight and yesterday's noon. 
On the night of a harvest, I see a silhouette hunter holding a carcass. Any heart beats a target. Blood drips the ground like red carpet. On the night of a harvest, silhouette hunters hold up a carcass. On the night of a harvest, farmers, they set up a market. On the night of a harvest, yo, I pick up my plow and I tighten the harness. They ain't farming for parnas. Protect your loose from parasite bastards. What do you know about these bars? Yo, protect your loose from parasite bastards. All right, I've got some new shit. Let me drop this on you. To me as you come. Oh, my bees. Okay. Yo, listen, uh, the misplaced this drug aimed at the serpent, the discross litmus eating and searching, replace righteous capitalist merchants, masquerading as savior serpents, spectators remain observant, notice certain things are recurrent, original sin is the fruit from the tree of life, the whole story's inverted, plus the realm's an electric circuit, ancient mystery schools interpret, ancient pairing... Freemasons, yo, they try to usurp it. Certain truths, they can't be hidden. Prophecies can't be unwritten. The Ouroboros ain't everlasting when the snake bits out to tell that he's bitten. <sighs> oh, my bees. Rise above, extinguish fear when we generate love. Extinguish fear when we generate, generate, whoa. Generate love, a single candle. Lights up the darkness, that is what we all harness. Yo, oh, my beast, unleash the beast. Remember the Ekronox. Bank holiday Easter weekend and tickets are available right now, only £99 for a four nights of camping and four days of events and entertainment. Yo, the last Ronin after the rapture. Navigate valley and pasture, this guy's my arm with the ropes of a farmer I move like a ninja, the tongue of an actor Upping from the emperor's men, laying submerged in a temperate fen Temperatures raising the predators then when we sever the head of eleven men When the student outlives his master, seppuku slices the final answer Refusal invites dishonor, samurai code, fractured the Shaolin temple, 33rd chapter Decide these factors, release me or prolong my capture Shuru can strike, instant reactor, Ronin lone polymath, broken the code ever shoot through honors that Yo. Dark past broadcast like a telegraph. Speak a silent word like a telepath. Yo. Twin blades of the soul controller. The two pillars of the dome enclosure. Evil deep. Yo. The evil primal deed exposer. The code name's written on a wanted poster. Wing this, coach of the solar. The wing this, the coach of the solar. Serpent energy, forbidden beholder. No servant master legacy from a bloodline that's older. Double LMC. This is World War 33, this is World War 33, they crawl on hands and dirty knees. Whoa, they're climbing dirty trees, more than 32 degrees. I said, this is World War 33, they crawl on hands and dirty knees with more than 32 degrees. My name is Double LMC. And I'm a general. <laughs> Oi, listen. How's everybody feeling on a Friday if you're night? Gay, then be gay. Don't pretend that you're straight. Oh, Brian. You're a dirty politician who fucks kids every day. You're not an authority. I ain't got no respect for you, mate. Take a trip to Comet Peace or have a slice of the gate. They say it's fake news. That's Massive what shout to Brian Harvey. Is. Why they're tapping up your phone and they're taking the piss. Fucking up your marriage and not printing the truth. They say they're too fucking powerful. There's nothing you can do. All you're trying to do is take your time and just lie to me. Fake truth was gathered around and tried to derail the inquiry. CSA, Leveson, Hillsborough, what? Grenfell Tower, tenants out of the block. That was the plan from day one all along, mate. Trying to relax our minds like emerald nitrate. Politicians rally round and some of them have got age. It's held in place as the corrupted media manipulates. There's nothing you can do. You'll never stop them. No one can stop them. That's what they say to me. There's nothing you can say. You'll never stop them. No one can stop them. That's what they say to me. Who's seeing high? Check a old floor. I see a mason and my door. Three sixes, Moloch, Baphomet. Go fuck yourself. I've had enough of it. Who's seeing high? Check a old floor. I smell the blood of a Baphomet whore. Your fucking handshakes, your fucking pyramids. 
aprons, you fucking idiots. So what's so special about your fucking society? The fact you fuck kids, and together you hide it? Anxiety, pedophilia in its entirety. I can't believe that this is what I'm finding out now. Crawling out the fucking industry, a madman. Cause all the times you fucking said I was a bad man. I'm glad I saw the light. Words. To the rich, signs got a gift. Time for mutiny. Throw them motherfuckers off the ship. No mercy. They don't give a fuck about us. No mercy. So we don't give a fuck about them. No mercy. They don't give a fuck about us. No mercy. So we don't give a fuck about them. Ex bro, I swear it's like 2020 is a simulation. Levels of stress are heavy in the present situation. We're led by two negligent heads of administration, spreading prejudice and suppressing the liberation. The heads are getting wise to their threats and intimidation. Connecting globally, not accepting discrimination. Injustice only ends in revenge and reciprocation. Intent on change won't bend till we're getting some vindication. They're instigating hate and mispeddling information. With aims to separate and unsettle the integration. Stay flaming the fire by a clever insinuation. In a game of lie lie with terrible implications. Leaders more concerned with dispensing of immigration and police committing murders on residents in their nation. It's a crazy world and we're tense with a tribulation. Don't be silenced or accept their limitations. Cause the one percent got this world in the palm of their hand. From the states to UK, it's all a part of the plan. Cooing puppets to the rich. Science got a gift. Time for mutiny. Throw them motherfuckers off the ship. No mercy. They don't give a fuck about us. Street poets and soldiers, a few more mortars and bomb and beat corpses corroded. And you all part of the zombie freaks blowing on potus. Guess who trumps me? No one in this cruel world wanted. It's too ugly. I grew up where you lose your folks to juiced up police. Bishops hide a funeral rolls, a few one P. Percenters about to lose control with two fun blend. Locked in on our new young goals like new front teeth. Wall to wall, China to Mexico, the Pangea is here. Can't divide up the rebel soul. Stampede in agreement. We decided to let you know. You not gonna Keep us impoverished and keep blocking us when we vote. Sinister prime minister, detriment from the president. Ain't this shit for our city, behead the system that let him in. X is simply a legend who never leads you to begging them. Epicenter of weaponry, pledge allegiance to checking them. The 1% got this world in the palm of their hand. From the states to UK, it's all a part of the plan. Cooing puppets to the rich. Science got a gift, time for mutiny. Throw them motherfuckers off the ship, no mercy. They don't give a fuck about us. Them. And when I'm strolling too close to 
don't do replay. Ocean Wisdom. The crew whose goals all are... Some king, some lavish king, some fucking G. I wanna see all this pips, look, tryna get all this steez. Like I'm tryna get all this prof, the guap, the crop, I want the seeds. I'm tryna see flavors, bro. You got sound for me. I'm tryna live like some king, some lavish king, some fucking G. I'm tryna get all this pips, paper for me and my team. But I know it's not all about money. I put a few things higher than green. I got family, friends, bros. I got foes and I made them scream. I hear the echo, echo, as they go down the stream. Tryna get all this money, the guap, the pot, the pee. If I've never had a pot to piss in, now you can't piss in a pot like me. I'm tryna see all that bark, all that tree. Man, call this clock, that little knock, can't roll with G's. I got Mac Lau packs on deck, you can't chat like that's not lean. I got Team 10 telling me things, purple turtle selling me green. I hear bare waist man one chat, chat about me and my scene. Might G check them for respect, like, hey, what you mean, what you mean? Come free in all black like storm, now this black storm be parting seas. Check the T's and C's on D's, that's P's on P's for a G like me. Wait, why they fall in love? Ay, ay, ay. Advice, hey. brother want advice. Uh-huh. There's pressure on my iris, man, that's pressure on my eyes. There's pressure on my sinus, now there's pressure on my mind. See, I put pressure on my peers, that like they put pressure on them diamonds. Wait, lies, uh-huh. telling all these lies. Okay. Man got all these guns and knives, and man got all these wives. Okay. Man got all this clientele to buy and sell these nines. Okay. Kilos, these bars, uh-huh. cues, free fives. Uh-huh. Most guys spend ages just wasting their time. Wait. These times I'm time saving, chasing what's mine. Okay. Can't be celebrating to the wages, getting wide, uh-huh. they're getting wide off their wages, celebrating for the night. Okay. You're choosing to be at while I cruise into that drive, man, got two cents, I don't care about it. It's all nuisance when he ran. Back this shoot, them it don't ride. Gotta say free man, I'm inside. Gotta say these relevant rhymes that I spit teach and it's fine. Look him in the face, who you tryna be? I ain't tryna copy, man, I'm out here doing me. Talking about the barking, but they're oily with the teeth. Who me? Garden, garden, hey. Look him in the face, who you tryna be? I ain't tryna copy, man, I'm out here doing me. Talking about the barking, but they're oily with the teeth. Who me? Garden, garden.
I worship Luniverse, Solar Man, Seven Samurai transforming. Hands down, catch you at the crossroads, sinking into sunsets, lonely. Thinking till the morning how nothing in this world is complete. Without snakes in the high grass, sniffing all they can till they wipe out. I stay balanced like a tightrope walker, the white line stalker. Pipeline clogged like my arteries, trying to lose the hellhounds after me. Four police swamping my ground, trying to marshal me. Laughing at B.O.'s above, waiting for my soul while I'm sitting at the bar, drinking everything I'm old, singing drugs, money, life, death. Drown me in the night's depth, fighting in this tight net of context. Keep it moving like a bomb threat, tick this off the bucket list. It's no future when I walk through. Me and Wizzy on the deck, are they dizzy? Would they really want to bother trying to step, trying to tango? Behold the rap scaramango. I still buy my chips where I clock salamander. This is dark days. I was teething on the notion back in arcades. Down on Green Lane, staying blase. Half alive, never dead, but I'm half baked. My sitting up the bar face. Stromboli man, P. Jennings. Get slapped by the goalie hands. Man, I walk blaspheming through the holy lands. Just to start a couple momentary incidents. I'm like Mervyn Peak mixed up with Ian Fleming. It's nothing long, me and Wizzy's on the deck. Are they dizzy? Do they really want to step? It's nothing long, me and Wizzy's on the deck. Are they dizzy? Do they really want to step? Incidents, for instance, when I roll with my bros, it is so instant. Stepping if they draw the weapon, then fight them. 140 stepping on old school finesse and teach lessons. Who's better on the mic? Then, man brought the legends, they brought the pepper, and that brought my pepper into light. Then, I killed with the flow. Oh, what you know, the rest is all we and all life. Left, right, left. Keep on stepping if they draw the weapon, then fight them. 140 stepping on old school finesse and teach lessons. Who's better on the mic? Then, man brought the legends, they brought the pepper, and that brought. My pepper into light, then I kill with the flow. Oh, what you know, the rest is all here and all that. Uh, let me go, let me go. Go until I'm gone, I'm feeling vibrant on my own. Calling on my J's, how you know my name? How you know we value in the life, we got the same. You don't really want it, I'm seeing what you're spraying. I'm hearing what you're doing, I ain't feeling what you're saying. You ain't super saying why you can't make home a Why they getting angry while I'm smiling, kind of laughing? All your mama's bawling, crying in the garden. Doing moves around it, you don't even beg your pardon. I find out falling, all your mama's bawling. You ain't got no drive, that's why you're screeching and you're stalling. Woke up in the morning, why she looking at me? Yeah, we rolling stone, but we ain't shooting out Apaches. Still, she got the backy, rolling side eye too. Trying to find myself, I'm fully searching for survival. You look in my eyeball. See, I'm not a sinner. See, I'm just a product of being told I'm a winner. Now I eat a dinner with a smile up on my face. And you can tell by all the gravy I've been grinding on the stage. The way I sang it, bro, it, man, them, know it's natural. What I'm doing is actual if I quote it. I could brush your flow and fully know it's bare dopeness. I could see your journey, fully know it's bare progress. I could check your metal, fully know it's bare focus. But I roll up in your arm and bet it's broken. Huh? They're man and making funny on the roads And now they want to come and dip up in the ocean Different when I flow this I ain't switching on the coast And if I trip into your hole Just know I did it with cojones I did it with a passion I got women sat in, sat in, sat in, sat in. I got different kind of patterns when I run it Little man you sign in, certain man But sunny me ain't sat in running I will run him down the road I'll forest gump him huh. These fickle fasties want to fondle with the flow But really knowing they can't grope it like I done it Potent when I sang it You won't notice when I sign him I'm too focused for the jokers No one notice when they come in Swear the way I get it Sang it Packages get and violence is factual when I push it, it's actual when they yam it, car, I'm on it, rolling, yeah. sighing, uh, poet, yeah. catch me if you can, I ain't acting, I don't condone it, but I live it, yeah. know it, what? lift it, yeah. roll it, yeah. casual when I bar it's impractical when you spoke about your life, what? death, yeah. right, oh, left, okay. keep on stepping, if they draw the weapon, then fight, oh, them, it. 140 stepping on old school finesse and teach lessons, who's better on the mic, them, man brought the legends, they brought the pepper and that brought my pepper into light, them, yeah. I killed with the flow, Oh, what you know, the rest is all we and all life. Left, right, left. Keep on stepping if they draw the weapon and fight. Them, 140 stepping on old school finesse and teach lessons. Who's better on the mic? Them, man brought the legends. They brought the pepper and that brought my pepper into life. Them, I killed with the flow. Oh, what you know, the rest is all we and all die. Get the pop on the bar. This one 
it for them Mystery, Mr. Man Flipping the sitch again Whether you know it or not, brother, we run the track Sonny, I saw the spew, curry, curry, yeah Pulling around, pulling and proud Sitting astounded, brothers allowed under the power of the brown skin Hellbent, knocking over headstone, stone off Put the boss, you know we are for jet home Don't know what the fuck is going on Hell bent, knocking over head stone off Put the boss, you know we are for jet home Don't get it done, you the forms we be rolling in force Full of bull by the horns, we smoking a minotaur Oh wait, hold on, take a minute to pause We be busy with the switches, you be checking the scores You'll be keeping it bam diggity, bigger than bang Bad in the booth, see we on the moon You better give me that power song Kick, lick, you down like tongues Flip, flip, you let it roll on, no way, hold on Misfit, you kid so wrong Rap down, I've been seen from wrong Give me that power song Kick, lick, you down like tongues Flip, flip, you let it roll on Override and control emotions while I froze inside Then my focus and drive were polarized Back in 05 My goals and motives so precise Rose tinted lenses over both my eyes No surprise, I got old and wise Disappointment put a hope to pride Gripes unresolved, no desire to vocalize The woman find a rope to try and toe the line Although I've left the road behind Still the modus and the code applies Cold as ice Survive alone, no kind of social life On this roller coaster ride Got more lows than highs Cut my closest ties Trust stolen by compulsive lies Heading straight to nothing, no one localized I stay oblivious to the pain Cause I don't wanna see tomorrow Don't wanna see tomorrow Feels like I'm on a fast train to nowhere Chest full of heartache, I won't go there Attitude blase, bro, I don't care Heading straight for nowhere Nowhere, cast back, running into nothing, looks like heart attacks. Dark mass, suffocating, loving that my heart lacks. Numb from struggling, suffering from the harsh facts. Fuck all up so far, currently it's a car crash. Lamentless proportion. M25 pile up, 10 mile tell back, my blood covering the tarmac. I've come to a trundle when once I was in the fast track. Build a foundation but crumbled under my hard hat. Damn. I feel to slip my wrist, take my life now Then in the mist, a glimpse of distant ray of light It's like, I hear some fingers click I'm just waking by my missus side Hugging my kids, what an amazing sight Any trace of bitterness is taking flight Till in a rage and the indifference of vaporize Been a wrong and for long, living to make it right So whatever it takes, I'm willing to pay the price I was on a fast train to nowhere 
kind of change, so I don't go there. I'm on the way long as my daughter and my son's there, heading straight for somewhere, somewhere. So I stay, appreciate every day, cause I still want to see tomorrow. I've got to see tomorrow. Intentions, intentions like trample on their evil intentions, intentions like trample on their evil intentions, intentions like every time I look around, all I see is fear and lies, and the truth doesn't get a mention like. Three strikes, parasites can get put to the side. Came to the add value to our lives, but the lies will serve us, serve the source when I ride. Reaping through the fire, great high. I'm cool, I'm physical war, so I can't die. See the truth now, so I can't live. I live for God, not money, so I can't get bribed. And I won't subscribe. No television, so I don't pay sky. Spit flows to the ticks on your clothes, get old and dry, then we go inside. No nine, no minor when the third eye pops, then they both go blind and fall back from the token scheme to the intelligent design. It's our time. Trample on the evil intentions, intentions like. Trample on their evil intentions, intentions like Trample on their evil intentions, intentions like Every time I look around, all I see is fear and lies And the truth doesn't get a mention I like gatherings more than six Yeah, I'll take the risk Cause they're taking the piss when I eat out They want my name on the list Speak out cause I came to assist Not scared, still shake hands above the fist If we carry on following the government guidelines Trust me, this ain't gonna end in bliss They're at war with the government, so stop loving them Yeah, she mowed them, be bold Even when there ain't no vitamin D And it all gets peak and the streets get cold Stop like an ice cream cone Who knows when you might need to bust up a drone We ain't gonna say it back one and take all that crap Cause we're coming for the throne like Trample on their evil intentions Intentions like Trample on their evil intentions Intentions like Trample on their evil intentions Intentions like Every time I look around All I see is fear and lies And the truth doesn't get a mention like. I want to use cash, no card I won't wear the mask on trains and buses Supermarket ain't super I won't stand in a queue Cause that's where the sugar and pus is They wanna keep up dehydrated today and they're turning us all into druggies. I said the media, they're full of shit like hugs. I can't see you smile with a mask on. Some people are just too far gone. We need to all rise up like a hard on. Got a few tracks that I need to put bars on. Got a few tracks that need to get laced. I don't need to be tracked and traced. I come here to put the facts in your face. There's a whole lot of truth we can all embrace. Trample on their evil intentions, intentions like. Trample on their evil intentions, intentions like. Trample on their evil intentions, intentions like. Every time I look around, all I see is fear and lies, and the truth doesn't get a mention like. We're back, and it's Rise Above, and it's Friday night. Rise Above, chill away, chill away. Rise Above, stick with fear. Rise Above. Trample evil intentions is uh, more prevalent than anything else at the minute, eh? It absolutely is. I think one of the lyrics there was rise up like a hard on. Yeah, I've got tracks so that I've got to put yeah. bars on. You've got the main bars. I've got to put a spit facts in your face. I ain't got time to track and trace. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Not veggie, so good. So good. So we're very lucky. Um, if only you should bring that up. Inspector Veg is going to be in the studio. When is he going to be in the studio? Let's get these details up. I brought that up. Bumba whole screen. Friday the 10th of March. We have Inspector Veg, which is going to be the week after the huge announcement for our Agenda 2033. We'll be doing that on the 33rd, 23, Full dissection. Full dissection. I think there's a special guest in the studio that night as well. Yeah, the General's going to be here with his clipboard making a presentation about the next 10-year plan for Rise Above, so we should be very pleased about that. Right, we need to talk about the elephant in the room, which is, um, how many tickets have we sold? I think we're about 25, 26 now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe a little, uh, maybe, oh yeah, about 20, 26 tickets. So that means we've got um, no, 26 away from 99. We've got, what, 60? 60, 63. 63 tickets, that's it. <gasps> Boom, 63, three sixes. Um, yeah, we sold 33 tickets, no. So they're £99, they are available right now. Um, here is an artist impression of the Ekronox. Here is another one. Yeah, the one this is freaky, guys. man. Here is our, some of our surprise rappers that are going to be performing. This is like Bohemian Grove style. Yeah, so we want to hear from everyone. Uh, everyone here is very excited. The, uh, the, the mind is racing. The, the creative juices are flowing. And um, the tickets are already selling. So, yeah, don't miss out. Now, we showed you a few images um, um, throughout the uh, melee there from from Omer Beats. I think we need to address what's going on with some of these <laughs> images, right? Because for anyone that's noticed, the the graphical level of Rise Above has been up in the last couple of weeks, um, and I do need to address what's going on because some people aren't going to like it. And they're going to be like, with our goal. "Yeah, well, we're the, collaborating." 
Fact is, we're not just collaborating with Al Gore now. Al Gore works, in our pocket. works for us. Me and Oma Beats have been... Al Gore's our bitch. Al Gore is our bitch. Al, me and Oma Beats have actually been working very hard um, over the last week to master Al Gore's rhythm. And he doesn't just work for us now. He dances to our tune. And that's how we're able to up the levels with the Rise Above graphics, um, with the memes. This is my this is my v- vision of inside a Uyghur Muslim concentration camp in communist China. Um, just let me let you know that. This is Father Schwab feeding baby Schwab. Now, I'm not going to lie. Some of these are very disturbing. It's, just dark. it's the hands, man. Al, very Al, Al weird. Al Gore is dark. Al Gore is dark, um, but... We must master him so we don't get left The other behind. night on our WhatsApp group, I, I was at home, Lance was at home, and he was putting these pictures up on our on our Rise Above um, WhatsApp page. And I was just sending him things to put, like, to enter into the Al Gore algorithm to come out with his AI art. And it comes up, does it, like, 20, 30 seconds. So yep. he was just pinging these pictures back. And I was, we were putting in, like, medical genocide and all sorts of stuff. And this is the shit that came up. No, no, this, this collection on the screen here, which I've called the fourth gin industrial rev, right? Guess, would anyone like to guess what I typed in to get this? It was, it, obviously, I, I typed in many things to get to this final image, and I did many layers of schwabbery afterwards. But to get these general, the general gist of this, I started off with this. Coviet, you know what, medical experiment goes wrong. Horrible side effects. High, you know, high detail, graphic detail, photorealism, dramatic lighting, version three, up beta scale five, XP five, and loads of other stuff to get these images. But that's how I started, and that's what I, that's what um, you know, that's what got these. And um, and I, you know, we went to town a little so bit. So this is what Al Gore spits out, and then yeah. you just tweak them. Now, obviously, we are using Al Gore to good effect. We're using it to help us promote the next event. Um, you know, Al Gore's been working side by side with me to create some of these amazing, beautiful images to to promote the next event. So it's one of those things, you know, it's one of those everlasting conversations that we've had on the show before. Oh, God, you know, some people are beginning, to, oh, shit, you've already sold out, Lance. Aren't you supposed to be like a graphic artist? Like, well, you know, you pick up a stylus or a pen and... Fuck it, do you know how busy we are in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, one, that's one thing. I mean... The other thing is that, you know, this opens up a level of creativity um, to people that may not have had a chance to access it before. This is what Omar was saying to me the other day. Now, with this technology, if you know how to master it properly and you spend some time learning how to use it, the amount of time it can save you um, and, and the amount of work it can do for you. For instance, I'll, I'll drop another bomb. Anyone that bought one of those Ekranox tickets... The description on the ticket, it's like a whole paragraph long, really good description of the event. Al Gore wrote that too. Wow. Gosh. Yeah, it is a gosh. Honestly. Gosh, yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, we had to type prompts in to make it do it, um, to get it right. But, you know, Tom showed me, he's like, is that all right? Tell me if, and I was like, did you type that? I said, no, no, Al Gore typed that. I'm like, wow. So, yeah, it's very interesting. It's about not, this is on my- it is now. It's about. It's, it's not about hating the tech. Use the tech for what our positive purposes are. It's the negative uses of these techs that we've got to be aware of. Don't use the tech to do this. To create an AI cloned Schwab bot of yourself. Don't use it to do that. <laughs> use it. To, use it to create a satirical image. Taking don't the forget, out. Like, like humans made this tech, yeah, and then the tech is now. You know, advanced, so advanced this, so what, AI. Schwab Soros. So let's still own it, man. Let's have it. Don't, don't let them have it. Um, just to let it's anyone... It's just disturbing, <laughs> it is highly, <laughs> It is highly disturbing. Obviously, I was deliberately trying to make disturbing things with it. What's I'm not more disturbing lie. is, like, Lance is typing those words in to get those images. Oh, if you want to see some <laughs> of the commands... I mean, I'm not going to... I think this particularly is, is an amazing piece. Oh, it's just incredible, isn't it? Heroes of the Reset. Now, it took me quite a long time to get to this. I, you know, you can't just type something in and come up with it straight away. Hey, your mic has come up straight away. Who knows? But, um, yeah. Yeah, Pollyanna says use it against them. Yeah, I'm using it against them. I'm literally creating anti coviet memes in Covey art with Al Gore. Al Gore <laughs> creates, like, he's like fucking the Picasso of Covey art. Even oh, come on now. So, I'm sorry, Russ Kieran. I'm sorry you had to hear that. 
Ross Kieran <laughs> is, is working with Al Gore too. Yeah, I know, but he's 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 the original of, co-VR. Have you, have, have you seen some of the things that Ross Kieran yes, has mate, created I have, yeah. using <laughs> Al Gore? Holy that's shit! That's the other thing, right? It's people, yeah. I was I was part of a discussion last week about you know about taking away from the creative people who are there. What it does is it also gives them an additional tool to be super smashing creative compared to the well, the, yeah, like the I said, you know, creative that me and that's are getting up with, eh? Well, there's well, a big difference. Basic when you look at the images, though. But mate, there's nothing basic about my Al Gore skills. Give me a break here. Right, actually, can I? I'm going to say something nice, right? I've been watching some five star experts in in the chat rooms. Yeah. And your imagery is as good, or if not better, concepts than some of these guys. The thing is, right? For me, the concepts write themselves. It's just for me, I have to translate them to Al Gore. Like to come up with, I call this one the fourth industrial <laughs> revolution. Look at, look at <laughs> right? I call this the fourth <laughs> industrial revolution. Now, obviously, I have superimposed um, General Sausage Fingers head and Sausage Fingers onto this. And as you can see, I haven't properly blended. The, it's not finished. But the character in the background and the scene. No, I think it's perfect. It's where it is, I think it's great. It's a great depiction. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, Lee, I couldn't possibly tell you exactly what I'm using to create these because that would be a trade secret. But let, let me tell you, this is the most highly advanced algal technology available. It, co it you know, it, it costs a little bit a month to have to have this unlimited to, to pump these out because you this have is to, why we're sharing it with you guys. This is why you know it took us a long time to get to this level. You have to <laughs> you have to spend a lot of time massaging Al Gore's um, little little. You've got to dance with him for some time. Yeah, mate, you've got to learn all of his steps. You've literally got to bogle with him. You've got to do the cha cha. It's the, the Al Gore fox trot. That, that yeah. is that is the most disturbing image you've made. This so is, mate, you want to say some of the images? Weird. Look at this. No, this is the most the one. This on the left. is fucked up here. Like, look at the fingers and shit. Look at the deformity. But on the left, that, yeah. that one is actually cool. You can't see it because the title's in the way. It's called Experimental Healthcare with Health Chance of the Game. Look at, look at this one on the right. I mean, look how proud he looks. Look, look I literally, to, to type that in, I typed in something like Health Chancellor, Saint Health Chancellor Bill Gates, um, global hero behind montage of pandemic disaster <laughs> saving the world right and it, and it but that i'm not gonna lie that came up in pretty much one image the one on the right and then i obviously touched it up to make it pop um the one on the left that took some getting to to get it like that yeah. because you know al gore doesn't come up with something like that straight away if he does that's um you know that's a real it's anomaly. Fucking weird man it's, it's always pouncing on the right isn't he um, these ones, the, um, these, this is a series that you know I spent a sort of like half an evening working on these to get them to this level. The first ones were quite basic, and then you do some upscaling and some beta proto peasant upscaling. This is fucking hideous, man! Like, yeah. Look at this shit, mate. You want to see <clears throat> some of the ones? You know, I showed you my gallery. Earlier. Yeah, yeah. We've, got, we've weird... got an occulted uh, archive. Obviously, of... I'm not going to spunk all of this over you straight away. We want to save some going forward and, and and yes there will be Al Gore's Twisted Forest I reckon we should do something like that mm. we need to have an, an art installation <laughs> oh, that's not, I like that idea of that yeah but mate we've got kids there man like, well it, but there'll be a warning sign yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rise Above we have to cater for everyone like that, mate, we um proto. This was called like crypto health peasant inside Uyghur Muslim <laughs> crypto <laughs> health peasant yeah it's like <laughs> Greta Greta versus all the way down. That this one I typed in. Um, I got you to type this in. Do you remember what what did you type in to get this? I can't the, remember. The future of artificial intelligence or something like no, that. No, no. I asked you. I said put in self-portrait of art. I, I got you to get the AI to draw itself. Yeah, self-portrait. And, uh, and then I said that looks like Greta. Do you know what's interesting is put it is put itself as a f well what I look, looks like a female entity. It looks like a Greta entity. Yeah. yeah. A Grentity. A gre <laughs> <laughs> this one, this was called um, Soros Solution, like a resolution, uh, a fucking a Soros Revolution, because you can see it's like the phases of Soros. Yeah, oh, I, th I, I thought, mate, this this was for me was the best. Oh my god! General Sausage Fingers the third. Look at the one on the right, though. This is like <laughs> big fucking. Cumberland like, sausage coming out like of his a, fucking finger. Well, it's sort of like a, a cross between like a Cumberland sausage and a turnip. But he's, the other hand that's holding it looks like a trotter. Or something, I don't know, it's just... Yeah, look at the one on the left. That's like a, what is that? What they do look like is THC crystals zoomed right in. <laughs> <laughs> what the ones, do we, the ones on the right-hand side. The, yeah, the oh, what, this? <clears throat> no, 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 no in, the, in the middle, but the, 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 uh, the, like, the sausage is on the left-hand side. Of, on the right-hand side of his... Of his 
in the middle one. Oh, in the middle. Yeah, that one there. Yeah, mate. I spent over an hour just developing this bundle That's of crazy. sausages to, just to get it perfect, just the way I wanted Twisted it. Twisted sausage. Just <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> right. We could we could uh, <coughs> quaff about Al Gore's artwork all night, but um, so like I said, next week I head to Thailand. You've got to subscribe to the second channel. Is it next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this time, this, we this time next week, you'll be <coughs> watching Black Market Cinema on the other channel. And we're going to be broadcasting. Where's it gone? Here it is. Um, we're going to be broadcasting the last show of 2020, which has already got a strike on the second half. <laughs> so luckily, this strike should run out just before this one kicks in at nine o'clock next week. Um, and then there is also the Soviet Union meme show, which I believe comes on the week after. So the next two Friday nights, um, you've got to tune into Black Market Cinema. If you want to catch um, what I'm up to in Northern Thailand and Laos, you need to subscribe to Rise Above. Is that allowed on telly? It, is, is, it, is that allowed? It, it probably won't be allowed. Um, and then when we get back, we've got allegedly Dave. We've got Rajender 2033. With the general. With the general. We have Inspector Veg um, and all that good shit. Is, it, is there anything I've missed? I think we covered it all. I think we've covered it all. Should we wrap it up there, boys? Yes, do. Yeah, it's half one. Okay, guys, um, we've still got 150 people tuned in. This has been Rides Above. Thank you very much. And um, next up. next time I see you lot, we'll be in Thailand. See you guys soon. Rise Above. Rise Above. I think I need to point out how incredibly sick the new Rise Above website is looking. Ekronox tickets are going on sale within 48 hours, comrades. Early bird tickets. Look at the links we've got down here. Straight to Bad Slave. Boom.
Generate, generate.